Bring the band in.
man, I can't go back now. Nah. Watch it all go black. Yeah, seen too much, can't forget about all that. We really are bad. You don't wanna see the things that I see, man. You should know that. And it's all facts. Hello everyone and welcome back is the last day of the MEA Championship. Today we crown our four teams that are going to be moving forward into the PMGC. It is going to be an absolutely phenomenal day. Jam packed with a whole bunch of action. Of course we don't know exactly what is going to be happening but that is part of the excitement. Of course you are joined with uh, myself and Ez Proxy. We're going to be taking you through all the proceedings. Ez, big big day. Super excited to see what these teams are going to be doing. Absolutely. We've already seen so many teams stepping up just yesterday in a visiting manner so already how predictions have gone out the window and we are on the edge of our seats to see who is going to be the teams to step it up in an absolutely monstrous play today well speaking on monsters of course we get to give a big shout out going out to monster energy our official energy drink partners for the PUBG mobile pro leagues and the championships so mad love big respect going out to them and of course a big thank you as well now in the meanwhile right Speaking about monsters and all the energy, we've seen a few teams really look to crack a few cans wide, wide open. I mean, phenomenal performances coming through from a quest that we've been seeing. Brute Force stepping up a little bit yesterday, uh, you know, just in the nick of time and trying to reclaim a little bit of that ground. But again, right, such a difficult day. Teams having a very tough run. And of course, speaking about the tough runs, let's take a look at it here. It is going to be Quest Esports ending day number three right at the top of the leaderboard and surprising with the reign of El Hadre that we saw especially towards the end of the last few matches yesterday crowning our MVP for that day and I don't think that they're going to stop anytime soon we also did mention Brute Force had a much uh, quieter day we even took a look at the uh, overall comparison of Brute Force from day number three versus day number one they were so dominating coming through in day number one that it was quite a stark comparison to their matches yesterday but they managed to pick up another winner winner chicken dinner so our top three alongside Rook Esports all have those three winner winner chicken dinners and they are looking to hopefully keep it that way over towards that second page we saw surprising comebacks coming through from the likes of Sly Machine, Twisted Mind, even the World of Battle and the Clear Vision also gave us a few surprising performances. I, I would like to say the same for everyone pretty much on the same page. We had a highlighting moment and an opportunity to take a look at them once again. Yeah, I mean, there's such a, such a lot of pressure riding on the shoulders, essentially for all 16 participating teams here. As we know, uh, a few plays could make quite a bit of a difference, right? As we yet again look at the whole situation between fourth down towards about that eighth position, only again one point that is separating the teams and of course over on towards the second page from about 10th place all the way down. Again, single digit differences. So anything can change up as we are gonna be pushing through our matches, looking to see who are gonna be the teams to step up and get themselves those plays. But speaking about the opportunities, right? Quest, we've mentioned them. They came through with a back-to-back winner, winner, chicken dinner. I believe that was back on day number, well, back on day number yesterday, right? Uh, so they've just been grinding it out so exceptionally hard, but that's not been the case all the way through. No, so I mean, we, we saw the resurgence of Quest coming through on day number one, you know, trying to put themselves alongside the likes of Brute Force. Day two was much more of a quiet affair for Quest Esports, but coming back on day number three, on the day where the pressure was arguably some of the highest, uh, barring, of course, our final day, they stepped up in such an emphatic way. We can see this comparison here between Quest on day number two versus Quest at number yesterday, as uh, DK likes to say, really mm -hmm. just bringing in such, such a dominating performance. I mean, to have an average average of 6.5 eliminations per map on a stage like the MEA championships is just unheard of and in all honesty I mean those damage numbers we know where at least 5,000 of that came from just yesterday that was <laughs> thanks to of course the likes of Al Haji. so an incredible showing and hopefully we could see them once again showcase uh, a few more tricks up their sleeves maybe there's something else they've been keeping from us I mean that that's quite a tremendous performance that we've seen, right? If we if we convert those those averages into actual points, day two we did see Quest walking away with 35 points. Yesterday, day three, they doubled that, right? They got themselves just about 70 points in one single day. So an absolutely phenomenal play, a really strong performance coming through on their end. But 
I think the big question is going to be today, who will be the next team to step it up? Who's going to be the next one to play that level of gameplay? Of course, well, we could have a few potential indicators as who could be those takers. Of course, we keep talking about this, uh, you know, engagement between Quest Esports and Brute Force because it was head-to-head -head yesterday. We started off the day with Brute Force leading the pack and then Quest just came in with an absolute vengeance. So the, the two teams that are definitely going to be on our minds just because of yesterday's proceedings is, of course, the likes of Quest and, of course, Brute Force going head-to-head, -head, seeing exactly how they are planning to hopefully take that uh, top slot. I mean two very different approaches as we can see quest esports being that team that are, are a lot more uh, aggressive picking up i believe it was 101 eliminations at the end of yesterday and then of course brute force just edging forward with a bit more of those placements points so mm. a very very contrasting play style but both have been so successful for the respective teams yeah, I mean, they've both been able to just maintain an absolute absurd level of consistency. So I'm curious to see who's going to look to push through with that. But I think another team that I really want to see potentially maybe bring in a bit of a pop off, I think it's going to be the side of Xenon, right? As we know, coming into yesterday's matches, they were sat all the way up in that top four. Now today, as we saw on the leaderboards, it looks slightly different. They've now dropped all the way down to eighth place. But again, not a big gap, only 11 points. So there's still great opportunity for a team like Xenon, who has stepped into this MEA for the first time, to have the opportunity to try and get themselves into the top four slot. We've seen the team of Xenon specifically having very close encounters, getting very, very close to overly edging those winning uh, uh, placements. But it's always just that final moment, that final bit of timing, especially yesterday. We had two instances where they were literally caught with nades in their hands as they were taken out by either the likes of Rook or Nassar or who have you, just finding their location. So hopefully today they can lock it down and get a little bit more of a, a consistent performance. Because if they can keep that consistency going, we already know they have the confidence they have the skill set so it really could translate into a winning formula for them we also have to go and focus on rook and Asar, who are current uh, who end up our top four standing so those are the teams currently who are going to be looking for those pmgc slots but six more matches to go oh yes indeed six more matches to go and i mean there's there's so much that we could talk about here right we've been seeing individual players step up forming like absolute legends um, we've been seeing teams just blowing the scene up, coming out of nowhere, bringing in a very, very aggressive push. But now with regards to the individuals, right? Who were the ones that really stood out for you? I mean, we know al Haji being al Haji, right? There's, there's, there's no surprise to see al Haji, but I mean, Ado also. Mm, no, absolutely. Ado, especially in the first two days, uh, being the back-to-back -back MVP for the likes of Brute Force, really solidifying their lead and ultimately giving us that standing ground that what we saw yesterday where Quest Esports just absolutely went mental trying to get themselves catching up to the likes of Brute Force. And of course, we know al Haji was a key principle in that. I mean, averaging about three eliminations and, as you mentioned, six average... Uh, at six eliminations worth of damage per mm. map is really going to result in a very aggressive push coming through from Quest Esports. Whether or not both of these teams will be continuing their respective playstyles, as we mentioned, the aggression versus the, the focus on rotation and placement points coming through from either of them, they will be hopefully uh, locking it down with a great balance. And this is sort of the two teams that are going to be leading the pack, the two question marks on everyone's mind, who is going to be the champion of the MEA Championships at Full Split 2023. It's going to be a pretty, pretty tough one. But of course, speaking of which, let's take a look at the schedule that we are going to be working with here today. Of course, we are going to be playing exactly the same map rotations as we've been playing on day one, day two, and day three. So no surprise to see that consistency prevail. But the big kicker here is, right, we know that we've got Erangel, as you've said, being half of the matches that we play. But then on the other hand, we've got Miramar and Sanok making up the balance. So it's actually been interesting to see the kind of, uh, the kind of strategy that we see starting to develop between teams that... Uh, are really dominant when it comes to the map of your angle but of course then what's to be made of Miramar and Sana right your angle strong map but what happens on the rest What's also just a very interesting conclusion to draw between the two. So as we mentioned, the wrangle being half, exactly half 
of the matches that are, is being played here on the MEA Championships. And we know those those matches specifically have been fantastic for the likes of Brute Force and Nassar, who currently are within our top four placements as the, the second and the fourth team specifically. But then on the other side, we talk about Miramar and Sanok, and lo and behold, our first and third place team, that being Quest and Rook Esports, are the two teams that dominate the Sanok and Miramar matches respectively, which also make up half of the other matches that we are looking at. So we, we've been placing so much focus on okay who is going to be that leader on a wrangle but surely they are going to be the ones leading the charge but it is not so easily cut and dry because as we can see brute force nassar absolutely dominating it we've got a little bit of a sneak in from rook esports as well but then the focus also has to be placed on Zenon and r8 who have a very good average on this map specifically and whether or not that average is going to be good enough for them to catapult themselves still into the top four placements is yet to be seen yeah, and I think that is going to be an interesting one to look at indeed because, again, right, the opportunity is there, as we know. Three matches of your wrangle, is that going to be enough for teams to try and continue to build their, their foundation with? Because we're now in the last day, right? So the, the opportunity to, to try and still make up for a few deficits, that you, your time slowly, well, not slowly, it has essentially run out, right? It is now down to the last few matches to prove whatever it is that you can... But talking about consistency though, Rookie Esports, they've been able to maintain a very consistent performance across all three maps. We see them um, just featuring here within the top five for Irangle. On Sanok, they are very, very close to being in the top five. They missed that by just a few points. But then looking over on towards Murma, Rook, they hold within the top twos. Again, contesting with Quest, as you've said, looking to see who could be those potential teams to step up and make a run for the top of the leaderboard. So I guess today it's all going to come down to who's going to be uh, looking to bring in the hardest push, right? Is it going to be the Irangle dominating teams or is it going to be the Murma Sanok dominating teams? Because essentially at the end of the day, it's a 50-50 toss-up, right? You could go either which way. And of course, looking at the point difference on the standings is only three points separating Quest from Brute Force. And as you mentioned, I mean, with an average of 54 points and above on every single map in total, what they've been able to achieve so far, Rook has definitely been one of the most consistent teams. So if they could step it up just a notch, just turn it up one more level, maybe that's enough for them to take a hold of uh, either Brute Force's current position, whether or not they can take a hold of uh, Quest Esports' position. Once again, yet to be seen because we don't know how that head-to-head -head between our top two teams is going to go down or if uh, someone else has a plan that they're looking to hopefully take and execute today. NASA Esports as well, a, a team that we've been seeing time and time again have these textbook perfect executions. I mean, I, I love the way that they have been in, in engaging those uh, mm. those initial uh, fights and then immediately just focusing on those numbers advantage. And they're very prolific with that. The communication, their synergy has been on a different level in the last day or so. So hopefully, once again, they bring that through into today. Well, speaking of which, of course, here we take a quick look at those NASA stats. And I think today's going to be a big day because they are going to have to defend their honor for the top four, right? And it, we've seen changes come through and it all can sh just shift in one single day. But so NASA, they're going to really have to try and find which map is going to be the one for them to make all that magic happen on. Because if you look at their performance that we've seen in general on Miramar, um, you know, they are a little bit further down the board. Definitely based on the other remaining matches that we have, right? Between Irangle and then, of course, looking at Sanok. Those, th those th two games, or maps rather, would be the opportunity. I mean, NASA within the top two on Irangle, as you've mentioned. But, of course, then taking a look over onto what they've done on Sanok. Again, they are holding within the top five. So, I think there will be ample opportunity for NASA to try and just solidify their base. Because, again, right... Losing the, full, the, the the access into the top four on the very last day, that would be absolutely devastating for a team. But we've actually seen a few other different approaches being played here as well, right? As we know, they, we have two other teams that have already qualified for PMGC. That being uh, Nigma Galaxy as well as Falcons White, right? Nigma Galaxy still playing a very, uh, a very uh, you know, I would say tough game against the opposing teams, right? You can see them, you know, trying to keep the momentum flowing. Falcons White taking a completely different approach. We see them sat all the way down in 11th place. Yes, every now and again, they step up just to remind the teams as to what is going on. But, you know, there's such a different play coming through from either side. 
and it's, it's been a very weird experience especially for for fans of falcon whites to witness them in this tournament it's also there has been a lot of questions as to you know what are they doing how why are they playing this way um it could be all part of a strategy again we know that those slots mm. were also announced so we know exactly depending on if you're the first second third or fourth team taking a slot today which groups you will be actually landing in who you will actually be taking up and enigma galaxy have the opportunity knowing which slot they're in specifically who mm. they might be looking to face off against so they could really throw a wrench in the works and be a spanner for for the rest of the teams to sort of uh, get themselves their, their preferred competition if you want to take it that way but that requires an immense amount of skill at this level of a competition and for Falcons White potentially you know this is an opportunity for them to really get a handle on some of their new team synergy maybe a few couple of new strategies that they could employ to get themselves ready for the next phase. Well, who knows, right? There could be so many different factors. And of course, while we're on that, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are, the viewers back home. So be sure to let us know what you think. Uh, who could be the team to step up? What do you think of the strategy coming through between Enigma Galaxy and Falcons White? Of course, hit us up on social media. You can reach us on YouTube, Facebook, as well as TikTok. But be sure to include the hashtag, hashtag PMPL MEA champ. Seeing that, well, that's where we are, right? And uh, we want to see what your thoughts are on that. So a lot of opportunities are going to be available yet again here today. I'm going to be looking especially towards, I would say, the top eight to see who will be decided within the top four, right? As we know, I don't think Quest and Brute Force are going to have to stress all too much. They are holding on to quite a bit of a substantial lead. But now it's going to be down to the rest of the teams. As we've said, there's only one point separating a lot of these teams. And this is going to require that extra bit of focus. Because if you make one mistake, one oopsie, you only have so many opportunities to try and rectify that. And everybody here are pretty much geared for game day, right? This is the big one. It is, it is the final opportunity for these teams to get themselves into PMGC. And that, as we know, has been the goal for so many teams, especially coming from the Middle East and African regions. They are ready to showcase their prowess. They are ready to showcase what they can do on a world stage. So this, as you know, is just going to be the stepping stone to getting to them to that point. And if they are strong enough to make it happen, then they absolutely deserve it. And hopefully we will be uh, all there ready to cheer them on into the finals. But before we even get uh, too far ahead of ourselves, we have to crown the champion. And only the champion will be that team to really get uh, all of the momentum, all of that uh, share of the prize pool as well as we know, because it's not just the, the PMGC slots. No, of course, for all of their hard work, they get a little dose of uh, extra ka -ching in the pocket, as well as an extra dose for our MVP, who has yet to be decided. I mean, is it going to be Edo? Is it going to be Al Hajje? Is it going to be another player to surprise us today? I mean, 5,000 damage just yesterday dropped mm. by Al Hajje, which sets the tone in a very stark manner. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a showdown to see who will be crowned our MVP. And I cannot wait to see what, uh, you know, our performers are going to be looking to bring on through. Because essentially, at the end of the day, that's what they are. They are performers. They perform on an immense level. A level that uh, we ourselves would be struggling with quite a bit. I am 100% oh, yes. convinced of that. Oof. But as we know, it is just about that time for us to step over into our first match of the day. Now, have you got any thoughts as to who you think could potentially be taking the crown here? Be sure to let us know on social media. Hit us up on the chat. And, well, it is just about time to see where the flight path and that zone is going to be taking us. Now, is before we get there, any thoughts of what you think we could be having aside from uh, dry land? It would be very nice if we could have dry land. But um, for me, it's going to be very dependent on this initial zone. We've seen <laughs> an, an, an absolutely chaotic level of zone placement in these last couple of days. The teams really have had it uh, so incredibly tough. But moving into this one, already I'm seeing the military base island and I'm starting to shiver in my boots. Whether or not that zone will be heading anywhere close to that once again. So please... If you're in in the in the chat right now, give give Sanok uh, give Erangel your energy here. Sanok will come a little bit later. Do not give us a water zone. <laughs> I mean, uh, all we can do here is just hope and keep our fingers crossed. Maybe, maybe it is gonna come back to its senses here. I think at this opportunity, a, a zone maybe centering up towards Cool towards Razak. I think that could be quite an exciting one, potentially even over on towards the Gutka side here, as the teams like to really be presented with a bit of a, a little bit of a risky play right again not the craziest push that is going to be applied by that zone 
But let's see where it is going to be taking us so far. Everything seems normal. The players making their way down. We got Twisted Minds again going for the usual drop location. Vulture Gaming Squad also going to be looking to get themselves situated down up in towards that. So Znifcom military base. But the zone about to be revealed. Oh, gotta wait and see exactly where we'll be heading. If you uh, expected, you know, uh, components there coming through from Twisted Minds Virtual Gaming over to Ultimate Tree Base Island. Thankfully, it looks like the viewers did give uh, Erangel enough energy. So instead of the south, we will be going directly to the opposite side, all the way to the north. So unfortunately, there's still going to be water involved. Really, what this means, uh, especially for the viewers that might not be aware of why we are so uh, attrued against water, because we are very annoyed with it, uh, it cuts the available space uh, away from our teams. It really just applies that extra bit of pressure, because all of a sudden, in, in terms of the available spacing you have, that gets cut in, in some cases in a dramatically halfway percentage so it makes it so much more difficult for these teams to get comfortable and to get themselves into their best standings i think for this looking at this zone i think this is a this is an acceptable zone right again not the most ideal but it's acceptable we just have a small portion of that being water and it's pretty pretty close to you know rosok school so uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting rotation, especially now for Rook Esports, to see if they can get themselves repositioned all the way back up in towards Savoni. And I'm actually quite surprised that no one's going to be looking to risk it, right? Just taking it cool, calm, and collected. It's the first match. Let's get this one done. Let's get it over and see where we move to from here. So, a very respectable start. Absolutely. So let's take a look and see how these rotations will be going. If we'll be having anyone else joining the likes of Rook Esports towards that northern side. We've seen Xenon uh, at least once or twice before head towards Stolburn Kamishki, but it, it's been a very, uh, I would say, situational rotation before. It's not exactly a place that they are often frequent. Rami just showcasing a little bit of that ramping prowess somehow, some way, still keeping their car all four wheels on the ground. It was close. It was close. So uh, I'm quite impressed with that one. And Rook Esports as well, DK. Uh, I feel like we haven't given them enough love as it is. I mean, they are, are on a top three team at this moment in time. So as things currently stand, they have uh, found themselves at PMGC slot. But of course, there's six more matches for them to defend that title. Well, let's see how much of a defense they are going to be looking to bring on through here. Now... <sighs> Wait, uh, so I, I think that what I'm trying to figure out here is what the rotational play is going to be to come through. I mean, we've got such a concentration of teams sand towards that southern side, right? We've got Vision, Sly, NASA, we got Clear Vision, RTG, Falcons, Virtual Gaming, Twisted, all of them quite some distance away from the zone. But I want to see who's going to be the first team looking to step it up and take that rotation potentially that extra little bit further, right? Trying to get themselves situated in a, in a preemptive way. They've now had uh, several days to analyze the opposition, analyze rotations, and try to potentially predict as to who is going to be going where based on what these zones are doing. Well, no surprise, of course, to see Ruch going to the usual spot because, as we know, everyone has their preferred drop locations. But what I want to see here is how the teams are going to be looking to potentially utilize that information to their advantage, right? Get themselves positioned in such a way that, let's say NASA are trying to, you know, apply a little bit of pressure onto Slime Machine. How are they going to look to get themselves situated so that they can essentially do just that? That is uh, a question on a lot of our minds yesterday. I mean, for Slime Machine in, in particular, yesterday, really what seemed to be the the win condition for them was the terrain. I mean, having all of those ebbs and flow, all of the ridge lines where they could really, you know, duck from cover to cover to cover as they were taking their sneak sneakily way uh, into those final few moments. So potentially for them, uh, having a more uh, terrain dense environment is going to be what they need to have that win condition once again. And we could be seeing a rise of uh, that team specifically, but that's just one team's win condition. That's just one team scenario in which they find themselves to be the most proficient. Uh, what I would like to say is that for, for teams like Quest, for teams like Brute Force, they of what some of the few teams that create win conditions they don't wait for the team to to bring them you know the optimal location to bring them the optimal rotation they ensure that they are always one of the first few teams to rotate or the last few teams to rotate depending on where they feel comfortable mm. and then it doesn't matter where we end on being uh you know relegated to they just 
they dominate. They absolutely just go ham because, again, that individual prowess, that confidence, so many mm. uh, factors that play into how exactly they have brought this playstyle in. Um, the rest of the teams, well, they, they need to do something similar. They need to be the ones to force the competitors to play their, key, their to play their game style and to play mm. against them rather than you know uh, ducking down and uh, alluding to someone else's uh, strategies well let's see who's going to be alluding to what as uh, there are ample opportunities for few few potential upsets to be played here we are also looking at uh, rtg on a steady approach towards clear there we have of course galaga and groza Getting stopped in their tracks. Ooh, that one has got to sting quite a bit. But a good defense coming through here from the side of clear. I mean, a very aggressive showing. I think RTG essentially just getting caught slightly off guard. And now it's going to be down to the final two to see how they could potentially look to save themselves. Because again, a little bit of an opening towards that, uh, you know, southern edge of zone. But just up ahead. We can see so many other teams are currently holding on to their angles here. RTG... Being put on quite a bit of a back foot. And speaking about back foot, it's going to be NASA and Brute Force now looking to contest here for the Asnaya Bridge. Oh, I like that. I mean, Brute Force, I mean, no strangers to this rotation. Specifically, every single map they're going towards is Naya Poliana. Uh, and Nassar now being one of the few teams to actually challenge them. And again, this is a massive way to stop, to to set that dominance moving a matchup like this. If you can take out the number two team right now in the overall rankings, that just gives you ample opportunity to take that position away for them moving into the, the rest of the matchup. As we know currently with Nassar and Brute Force specifically, they are <laughs> not a lot of points separating their position we're looking at about 40 plus points so any opportunity they can give themselves at this moment in time to to really get as close as possible as uh taking away brute force's position will re definitely award them going into the next matches especially considering this is one of brute force's best maps yeah well it is their best map currently within this championship the one that they've been able to dominate with a two winner winner chicken dinners and nearly a hundred points so far so it's all going to come down to what the approach is going to be, how they're going to be looking to play through this one. But as you can see, the contention will continue as we wait for the zone. Ruch, they are going to be smiling all the way through as they will not have to essentially move a muscle. They can now play this exactly the way they want because the zone is playing perfectly in favor of Ruch Esports. I mean, Savoni's shooting range, they know this territory like the back of their hands. And I'm, I'm excited to see how they're going to be looking to just utilize all that knowledge and, of course, anticipate the rotations coming through. Absolutely. So, rotations, rotations, that is going to be the name of the game here. Nick the Galaxy, as we already uh, pointed out, a team that's also been quite peripheral. I mean, they, they already have their PMGC slot. They don't really have to worry all that much. They have the best car layouts, as we can see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now they need to bring this to the table. I mean, there's six more matches, six more opportunities for them to climb the overall leaderboard at the very least for, you know, a, a share of those that wonderful prize pool. And, of mm. course, just to put a thorn in the side of the other teams, maybe even get themselves mentally ready for PMGC. Yeah, I think that is going to be a, a, a big potential focus coming through for Nigma Galaxy and Falcons here today because as we know stepping into the PMGC stage the you are playing against the best in the world right that is just that is just the standard that is just what it is so it's a completely different level of gameplay <laughs> that they will have to try and compete against so I think having a, a, a bit of an opportunity here to you know Try and potentially simulate some kind of a play, some kind of a situation. I think that could be a good utilization of, uh, you know, the, the, the time that they have. While at the same time, still being an absolute menace like we've seen them be, right? So you gotta ha you got to have that balance in there as well. Speaking about menace, Neo's going to come through in the feed there as they do find the opening play up on the Woodstock Park. And now for Vision, this is uh, an interesting spray. It's opting for a 3-1 play. I think essentially Tapok was maybe trying to do a little bit of scouting here. Oh, poor position here. Vision Esports, as we know, are currently in ninth place, looking at our second best team. Oh, and Tapok, I mean, with the damage dealt there, it might uh, Vision Esports just for, from, uh, as they said, down a 3v4 scenario. It's a great rotation for them currently, of course. We know they're well within the zone, have quite a bit of spacing to work with. But we've got a few more teams that need to join the fray. One of those teams might even be Enigma Galaxy. 
So up to them whether or not they want to continue this engagement just to give some space where needed. I see the vehicle rotations have already started, so it looks like they would rather opt to just keep space, keep safe, and hopefully uh, provide some longevity moving into the rest of this matchup. Yeah, well, let's see if that is going to be the play now. Falcons also yet to uh, get themselves situated up in towards the zone as they do come through with the approach all the way from that far edge. But here we have it. The zone also about to be revealed. And, well, the Falcons not going to have to move much, much further. Again, a very similar play to what we saw happening uh, yesterday, right? Uh, with R8 very close to the same kind of position when we saw them in, in one of our Erangles yesterday up towards that crash site. But it does seem like Quest have instead decided to settle within the region as opposed to R8. After you, I really do have to just place a little bit of focus right now on Brute Force and their current momentum. Picking up another two players here from the likes, or uh, actually another three players here from the likes of Nigma Galaxy now, uh, does result in a much better outlook from Brute Force. It does look like they're feeling a lot more confident. They're going and they're starting engagements. They're, you know, sort of just laying claim to the space available to them, uh, making it really loud, a really loud statement that they are here to play, they are here to win, which is very reminiscent in what we saw from Brute Force from day one and two, respectively. So it does look like whatever was happening yesterday, they have shook that off, whether it was a mental issue or what have you, they have completely readied themselves for this final day of play. And just look at the, mm. the sheer domination they're bringing in, now turning their attention here to RTG towards that coastal line. Looks like they also will be opting for a northern reach right behind Rook Esports. Well, let's see whether or not uh, they'll be able to maintain that consistency as we do say goodbye to Reva getting shipped out. Now, a little bit further down, it is going to be Sly Machine and Virtual Gaming Squad also looking to get into a bit of an altercation. Attacker now getting the sprays up right into the side of Mosta, but not a full-on push coming through from Sly. Instead, it looks like they are just trying to gatekeep, trying to defend the, the, the edge of zone at the expense of Virtual, but so far, Virtual Gaming Squad not going to be backing down. They want to get themselves situated. They want to make that push on forward. And, well, it is a very fair trade on either side so far. I'm G now just trying to get themselves properly and decently patched up as an attacker lets the molly loose, but I'm G manages to, to dodge it. Yafos yet to pull up and bring in a bit of that extra force they need. I have to be quick about it as we know. Ooh, and a few more Mnays now moving on in finding the likes of Attacker and really just putting a stop to the likes of Sly Machine down to only two as they are desperately trying to get those uh, heals up as soon as possible. Similar situation for Amjet. Thankfully, does mind manage to find Perez at least before an immediate turnaround comes through. And here we go, Brute Force and NASA. Ooh, our first and second best teams on a wrangle finding one another. <laughs> Well, they want to establish who is the best between the two of them. And so far, things are leaning ever so slightly in favor of the Broody Fruities. Meanwhile, it's still going to be the Sly Attackers, our silent assassins, looking for a bit of an opportunity. As you can see, Amjeet now getting finished off. Fares not being able to, gra to gain the ground that they were hoping to find. But a good defense here from the side of Sly. It's all going to come down to whether or not Attacker can find these last few angles. But again, right, the utility getting popped, and that is it. Virtual go right on down the first team wow. back, and unfortunately, not a single point, but instead the blue zone going to be applying all the pressure to them. Uh, that's painful there for Slime Machine. They did very well to hold on to that engagement. But unfortunately, again, it, it was a little bit too slow for the likes of this rotation. Uh, taking that engagement so far out of zone, so far out of that, uh, you know, goal way is going to uh, and unfortunately relegate them down to a couple of losses. So it's likely they will be going down to one member here as someone is still alive, at least hopefully ready and running into that next phase. But we'll have to wait and see what they can do in that situation. Meanwhile, we turn our attention here to towards that uh, zone shooting range starting to light on up as members are trying to get a hold of the center position of the zone. R8 being one of the first teams to do so. And let's see if they can make this the start of a comeback on the overall standings. But again, looking at the zone, this is going to be one of those exceptionally challenging regions to play from. You can either take the approach coming through from the southern side, as we can see GK and Brute Force, and of course then Xenon trying to play through. But looking at the that northern side as well, there are so many advantages, a bit of a give and take on either end. I think it, it's all to come down to which teams find themselves positioned where. And for the time being, it's going to be GK and Brute Force 
fighting for possession of the edge of Zoran. We also have a slight addition there of Twisted Mind. Now patiently waiting for their Q to get involved in the action here, but Santa not going to be even waiting for any Qs to be signed or given. Instead, they will be just looking to light it up as they find the sprays. And now Evo Station, Dami and Co. really going to have to try and navigate all the pressure being applied here. Oh, we love this already. A wrangle turning out to be an absolute field way. Now, as you can see, brute force here, very, very emphatic when coming through from them. They are looking very dominating up with that five eliminations, but up against the likes of a few other teams that would love to take this wrangle for themselves. Twisted Minds, oh my goodness, flying into the action, quite literally, <laughs> nearly going to the window as well. But Gates stepping up as the Guardian, unfortunately Ooh. falling almost immediately as Twisted Minds ascend from the heavens to just deal some pain. Beautiful pacing coming through here from Twister, but that is going to be mine. Stopping Dummy in their tracks. Brute Force, again, looking to expand their reach as best they can. And they do find the follow-up play right into the side there of Crypto. But now, things are looking to start very... Oh, looking to be, rather, quite grim for the side there of Twisted. As uh, we are running into a bit of a brain buffer here. But let's see whether or not AZ will be able to get that res secured up towards Evo Station. Brute Force just laying a next level position here. I mean, they're already on six eliminations, one behind Rook Esports, but both teams are clearing up either side of the zone. We love to see this. The teams are bringing in a very dominating uh, just energy overall. And I think that's what's going to be shocking me the most is uh, we're starting off so strong, but who can actually maintain that energy moving into the rest of the matches? It will come down to what the end of this uh, wrangle is going to look like and how that mentality might potentially stagger or just build and build upon. Quest Esports now picking up a wonderful little bit of an opener over towards GK Esports. And of course, we know that's over towards that western side of the zone, which is very close to center. So as the, like, the, the rest of GK will rotate on up to the north, it now starts to apply that pressure coming through here from that southwestern side, of course. Brute Force, Twisted Minds, even Xenon, who can jump in at a moment's notice. Well, Brute Force, very unrelenting at this point, as you can see. Xenon, I, I mean, they are they are so tempted to get involved in this altercation, but they don't want to risk it just yet. They know that if they play it really smoothly, there is a great opportunity for them to get themselves much, much closer to that top four slot. So you can see the, the slight bit of a hesitation coming in. And speaking about that, again, just a beautiful look at Twisted, as you said, flying up in towards the zone. AZ Evo Station. Ah, getting pincered on the edge of Zorin. I don't really see a way for Twisted out of this play. They might be able to evade Brute Force, but that is going to put them right in the sight there of Xenon, ready to welcome them through. Ooh, Ooh. and of course, vehicle explosion is going to end it, so they won't even make it to the Xenon side. Unlucky, unlucky, but hey, this is the name of the game. Brute Force still managing to stay in this mind will be back on their feet and now they have a plethora of loot to actually take a look at and get themselves back into better standings. Resources not looking too bad, the, the energy is looking good. Brute Force might be up for another win here. Eight eliminations in the pocket now as they turn their attention towards Xenon and of course the zone. Right up ahead of them there is going to be at least a little bit of a blockade in the form of Marshall but they're up against a 1v2 and spots it out almost immediately. Oh, come on. Come on. One down, a few more to go. Now, this is not necessarily going to be putting too much of a hamper on the performance coming through here. Or damper, rather, on the performance here from Xenon. But we do say goodbye to Enigma Galaxy as Lord got taken out towards the northern side. Falcon's Rook really trying to lock down at least the northern approach. And now it's going to be Xenon, Brute Force and Quest having to settle their differences as all three teams do come through with a southern push. And again, such a difficult edge play to try and make here. Very difficult indeed. Mind at least has uh, obviously moved on in. Just try to scout out a little bit of that information. Quest still playing a very spread out approach. That 2-2 split could uh, be their deficit. However, they're placing two of their members now here to focus on towards the southern side. That, of course, being Al Hajj and Easy. As we know, Al Hajj with a fantastic showing yesterday. Whether or not they can replicate it in these sort of scenarios, I'll have to wait and see. Xenon feeling the brunt of the action as Brute Force tries to just move on in closer and closer. A very tactical approach from Brute Force. They're not sending it because they know there is a lot more information they're looking for into this next phase. 
I love this position coming through for mind. It's mind and Alhaji essentially now side by side. Almost cheek to cheek. That's going to be a little bit risky, but let's see whether or not Zenon will be able to somehow miraculously get themselves out of this very sticky situation. I mean, Senke, Lazy Lion, they're going to be trying everything they can think of to get around all the danger that is just looming over the crest here. And of course, the zone is going to be adding to that as it now just pulls even further back towards that eastern side. So, Quest, this is an opportunity to get a few of those eliminations on board, seeing that they've only been able to find themselves one. But it does seem like they are going to be prioritizing a little bit more of that zone positioning here. Very interesting. Like once again, we were talking about that contrast between Quest and Brute Force. Quest having in the last few days being so much more regressive, whereas Brute Force had prioritized those rotations and placements. And now it is like a stock, you know, 180 from both of these teams. Brute Force just going for action after action, going for eliminations wherever it may lead them. Now, unfortunately, though, they find two members, potentially even three. There we go. Down to the floor as Xenon is starting to turn up the heat, looking to take them out and send away this thorn in their side that has continuously just been applying the pressure but quest esports might be coming Ooh. in for a save oh this could be the opportunity and i think brute force are going to be thanking their lucky stars as xenon is dealt with and not the kind of play that xenon was hoping for but you gotta say though xenon bringing in an absolute beautiful response i mean the best way to fight aggression is with even more aggression of your own and they were holding up pretty good pacing if it wasn't there from the side of quest Things might have gone quite downhill now for Brute Force, but a great opportunity as you can see Neo's trying to get the res back up into Edo. And this is exactly the kind of situation that Brute Force now needs to try and bounce back. But Neo's going to watch it. Oh, try to do push-ups, but it's not going to pay off instead. They will get traded down, and this is now an absolute disruption for the side of Brute Force. Rook Eastwood still holding on to a very strong position up towards the north. But again, same situation happening to them. They get reduced to dust, and off they go. And this is now all of these amazing members that we were talking about as the leaders of a wrangle. Even NASA now feeling the brunt of all of the pain the surrounding teams are dishing out. They do not want to let our wrangle leaders have a moment's notice, a moment's opportunity to take this game away from them. This really does bode very well for the likes of Quest Esports. Right now, they have the entire southern portion of the zone to their own. Up towards the north, we can see all of the remaining teams currently taking one another out. So for Quest, it's an opportunity to lay low and just get a free couple of pickums. We can take a look at that once again. The step up from Al Haji, it looked for a moment to be the saving grace of Brute Force, but all that they were looking at was to steal those final few eliminations for their own. I mean, Quest, as we've uh, been discussing before, they've been able to assert their dominance on both Murmar and Sanok. Irangle, the next map, the only map left for Quest to assert themselves. And based on the way that they are positioned here, the way that they are playing this game, this could be another map in which they decide to just show the lobby what they've got. But it's still going to require quite a bit of work. As you can see, a very wide spread now coming through from Quest. 3-1 as Alhaji looks to gather a little bit of information now bringing it all back to the rest of the team and I think from here looking at Quest they could definitely mount quite a bit of an assault down to the rest of the lobby. I mean absolutely just looking at the angle that they have to work with unfortunately that zone is going to favor the northern side so they will now have to make that rotation down from the mountain top they'll have to give up their wonderful elevation here and get up close and personal to the rest of our teams. Opting potentially to go towards Falcons as a full team would definitely make it a lot more of an easier approach compared towards the, that eastern side, which we know is very stacked with teams currently in the compounds, holding cover, lying in wait to defend their positions. So right now for Quest, it's about information gathering. That's why we could see Easy just moving on to that western side, just trying to get a look at and understanding here of the surrounding areas, even trying to send a few utilities to bait out some positions here as uh, it's very tough for them at this moment in time to try and delegate which pathing would be the, the safest approach. But this is just such an insane play coming through as we see the zone again now pulling slightly over towards Falcons. And you said um, from Quest it would be a good approach to just mount a full-on push towards the side of Falcons if they are going to be looking to contest for any kind of possession there. But speaking of which, in the meanwhile, Quest is going to be looking to get themselves positioned right on the edge here of shooting range. 
But this is where Muhammad could definitely look to play quite a bit of an upset. We got Arthur Muhammad keeping a nice steady position here for the World of Battle. But we are yet to see those eliminations come through for them. I mean, both players not exactly having ooh, the, um, ooh. the opportunity they need to get those sprays. Meanwhile, B6 trying to play quite a bit of an angle onto Quest. Look, I, I, I'm not too opposed to the play that Quest is doing here. They sent the first two in as the scouting parties, getting the information. And somehow, some way, they managed to, to avoid that initial crossfire there with P6. Now turning attention, taking down P6, turning their attention towards the world of battle. They are just systematically just uprooting everyone within this position and taking hold and making claim that this is the Quest to Esports territory here. So now a little bit of danger spelling for NASA as well. But there will be a little bit of a time here as Quest Esports need to regain HP. NASA, if there was ever an opportunity, it would be right now just to bring the action back to Quest. Yeah, 100%. And I think the difficulty here for Quest was trying to take too many fights on too many different angles. A very bold play indeed to try and make here. But as you can see, Teek also trying to get themselves quickly repositioned. But NASA not going to have any of that opportunity pass them by. As the spray will continue to find its way on in. Teek now also looking to step on up. Teek not caring who they hit as long as they hit something. And with that, it's going to be far he done dropped on down. Falcons and NASA now contesting for the winner with a chicken. Then a spec v Teek to see who will be the one to lock it in. Teak is a nice little bit of hard cover all the way out on the edge, but if we look at the Zoran Nasser, they have the advantage, but I don't think it's even going to come down to possession. Falcons, they're going to try and just apply themselves to this last stretch. The last few resources now being utilized. They need whatever advantage they have to get down into this one. And another point we need to note, DK, for spec, they have no meds. They have no ability to get the HP really back up into it other than a few bandages that we can see that they're trying to apply here. So in terms of resources, in terms of utility, Teak is up just by one. This is going to have to come down to a true shot raining in from Spec to finally get that last hit in and potentially steal away this winner winner chicken dinner. Oh, Teak now going through with a, a very big, <laughs> a big strand here. Almost a, a 200 IQ angle. But the advantage still leading towards Teak, as you've said, right? Spec doesn't have a single drop of meds. So whatever damage they take, it's just going to start to compound. They will not be on any opportunity for them to try and rectify that and a quick reposition on the side of Teak could be exactly what they need now to get the angles to play down onto Spec. Again, waiting for Spec to pop their head out so you can see exactly where they need to push. You can kind of see Teak trying to weigh up the options here. Are they going to try and maybe make a push for the tree? Are they going to stay behind this rock? Well, we'll find out very, very soon. As we know, the blue zone is going to be closing in and that will take us to the next stage. And again, coming through with that is going to be even more pressure as we've now hit stage number nine. The blue is going to close on through. NASA, they have a slight bit of an advantage and that could potentially be what puts Teak in such a tough, a tough position here. Having to move on down. We know the zone is applying the pressure. Time is of the essence, and as it starts to restrict, it starts to get all of these players up and at it. But here it is, the final push out in the open. Teak goes down. They need to get that final hit onto Spec if oh, they want to make oh, it happen, oh, and they do. Oh, oh, oh. All the way down the line they go, and they have found the connection they needed. Teak, absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal work. But you got to commend NASA. Their Spec working so exceptionally hard to just lock it down. But Teak... Just taking it to another level. So a big congratulations going out to Falcons. And again, I think a very well-deserved winner winner chicken dinner. But what a challenging start to the day here. I mean, we had Brute Force step it up. We had Quest step it up. We had Xenon stepping it up. We had everybody stepping up, making it so dang contentious. And then at the end of the day, we see a team get themselves the winner winner chicken dinner. A team that, uh, you know, has has been just hanging back a little bit and then today they're like you know what let's just do it let's Job just done. get the job done <laughs> absolutely i mean in those final moments we saw that push coming through from quest esports as i said i would have loved it if they rather went and opted for a push against uh, uh falcons and the likes but it would have potentially just resulted them into that same uh, situation as what we saw coming through from P6. Uh, not everyone can make that situation into a clutch, mind you. Again, thankfully, they had the resources. They had the ability to actually hit those final few shots. You can see that longest elimination reigning true for very good reasons. But a very fantastic start to a wrangle. 
we're starting to see a really good story building here for the teams. Like we said, Brute Force, Quest, it's been, you know, the 1v1, but we have to take a look at that match ranking, of course, just to remind ourselves what a close, close, close match this was. Let me just look at that. Our top five. Ooh, domination. I mean, it's pretty crazy, right? So, and, and just to think, if, if, if you thought day one was crazy, day two was even tougher, right? Day three, even more so. Day four, proving to be quite uh, a step up in the pacing here, but the team's not going to be shying away from any eventuality here. Unfortunately, as we saw for Ligma Galaxy, not exactly having the opportunity to garner a few additional points. But again, so, so much aggression. I mean, you got to commend Slime Machine for what they were trying to do here as well, right? Holding on for as long as they possibly can. It paid off, but then it went a little bit downhill once they were able to escape that initial blue zone damage. It was a very, very weird start to the matchup. But again, just to go back, we had thought that this was the, the rise once again of Brute Force. Quest Esports moving in at the last possible second, taking out both the likes of Zenon and Brute Force. Just so, so, so statistic, uh, tactically. But when we look at this final moment, again, it, it was a 50-50 decision. If Quest had decided to go towards that western side, would it really have opted into being a better situation for them? Turning around, finding P6, uh, Teak just in this final few moments, still managing to find those uh, few angles needed. NASA even just applying the, 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 the defense here. It was... It, it could have tipped over at any point in time to any of those surrounding teams and been a completely different end of story. It definitely could have been. And, uh, you know, I also just want to commend Zenon for their efforts in this last match. As we mentioned before, uh, they started in eighth place, now trying to slowly gain that ground again, get themselves much, much closer to try and contest for the fourth position. So it's all going to boil down to what the remaining five matches will hold for our teams here. And of course, on that, we are going to be taking a very quick break. So be sure to stay tuned and we'll be right back after. بالبدايه ممكن اقول لك الف 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 مبروك على حصولكم على لقب ابطال في ام بي ال افريقيا وغير هيك حابين ناخذ رايك كيف شعوركم بعد ما حصلتوا اللقب وتاهلتوا للبي ام جي سي؟ اكيد هو الشعور كان واو صراحه يعني خاصه بعد ما تحكينا من موضوع البي ام جي سي ففرحه البطل بي ام بي ال فكانت مو طبيعيه سوينا حفله اصلا حتى في الجروب هلا انتم اتصدرتوا ما حتى المجموعات او خلينا نقول الليك ستيج للاسبوع الاول والاسبوع الثاني لكن حسيناكم عانيتوا بالاسبوع الثالث فهل بامكانك تحكي لنا شو صار بالضبط مع الفريق؟ آه هو بالاسبوع الثالث يمكن يعني آه اداء التيمات يعني تطور اكثر صاروا يعرفون لعبنا فحاولنا نغير ف ونجرب كذا شغله للفاينل يعني وبخصوص الأمية المرة الماضية شفتاكم بديتوا بداية خطيرة جدا باك تو باك وينر وينر تشيكن دينر لكن في باقي المباريات في باقي البطولة ما قدرتوا توصلوا للتوب فايف بنهاية البطولة فهل تقدر تحكي لنا شو صار مع الفريق برضه بالبطولة بالنسبة للأمية السابقة فغيرنا النظام كل لعب فحاولنا نواكب يعني مع أنظمة جديدة حاولنا نجرب بس بعدين ما نفعش معنا يعني رجعنا الستايل القديم طيب فورتي هلا بما انكم تاهلتوا للبي ام جي سي، شو حيكون هدفكم للبي ام بي ال الاميه؟ توب uh, هل فكركم عندكم الامكانيه والقدره للمنافسه على المركز الاول في البطوله العالميه؟ uh, هو احنا بالبي ام جي سي حاطين يعني اهداف معينه فاولهم التاهل للفاينل اكيد وان شاء الله بالفاينل نقدم اداء لسه توب ثلاثه لسه هل في اي شيء حابب تحكي لجمهور الفالكونز والجمهور العربي؟ اكيد بالنسبه لجمهور الفالكون كان معنا في البي ام دبليو اي في الام اي في البي ام بي ال في كل مكان كان موجود معنا فدعمهم قوي وان شاء الله يواصلوا وبالنسبه للجمهور العربي شوفونا بالام اي يوم 11 14 
What's up guys, welcome back, of course, to the first match already done and dusted, we are gonna get ready and approaching our second match, but, gotta say though, is Falcons, they just played such a beautiful game in this first match. Absolutely, we can take a little bit of a closer look at exactly how that went down. I mean, a great jump there from Teeks in those last few moments to actually clutch that one out, picking up those three eliminations. But even moving on into this final moment, we can see P6, Puncher, and Axa just applying the damage and, and taking a lot of damage in the process as well, uh, especially from the likes of uh, P6. But a beautiful, beautiful showing. They really were supporting their teammates once again, moving into these final few moments. And Teek just uh, taking it on the mantle and saying they'll step up for the likes of Falcons White. Oh, beautiful, beautiful play coming through on their end. And I mean, this is no surprise really to see Falcons perform this way, right? We've seen this kind of performance come through in the PMPL, especially going through the finals as well. But we are, we've not yet had a lot of that opportunity being present within this championship. So it's good to see the Falcons again, just reminding everybody is like, you know, we're here. Watch out. We can still play a little bit of an upset. Absolutely. So let's also just take a look once again at how Brute Force and Quest actually managed to pick up some great points into that last matchup. We drew that uh, comparison between Brute Force and Quest as in terms of, you know, the, the play style in which they have been taking in the last few days, Brute Force has been that team that was focusing a little bit more on rotations. They had a bit of a, a higher balance towards that, whereas Quest was just the, the aggressive, aggressive team. And at the beginning of that wrangle, we thought that they had done, you know, suddenly a, a 180 <laughs> moving into those final few moments but Quest just uh, drew just such a beautiful, beautiful conclusion for their own. Just swooping in, picking up the likes of Xenon, picking up the likes of Brute Force, continuing down and really applying the pressure towards Falcons, Nassar, and even a, a little bit of action towards Vision has just solidified them as the, that team that can be thrown in any scenario. This is what we were talking about. Can be thrown in any scenario and they just, they go crazy in all honesty. They are <laughs> so, so good at literally just doing 360s when needed to and hitting those amazing shots. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be really tough to argue that, but, you know, Quest, well, we are going to be stepping into Murmur, a match on which we've seen some phenomenal results come through from them. But we also got to say Rook Esports, right? They've also been able to secure themselves two winner winner chicken dinners when it comes to this map. So I'm excited to see who's going to be the one to step it up. But strangely enough, the team that we see with the highest total placement points being accrued on Murmur in the matches that we've had, it's Twisted Minds. They are sitting on 23 placement points that they've been able to secure here. It is. And I mean, they situated all the way down in fifth with regards to the overall points that they've been able to lock in That's here. Strange. So it's, it's such an odd place to be. But, you know, we are going to be looking forward to it. I think another team that we are also expecting a bit of a, a, a step up from could be uh, RTG, especially on Murmur, right? They've been performing quite well. They've come through with about 30 eliminations but they are yet to find a winner winner chicken dinner on Murmur. So I'm curious to see whether or not this could potentially be the match in which we see that happen. With a 33% uh, percent chance of winning a Miramar matchup, Rook Esports are going to be that team to beat moving into these last few matches. Again, this is all based on previous statistics. As we've already seen mm. so far, moving into just the first map, the teams have decided to make us throw our statistics out of the window. So whether or not any of that will reign true will be up to the start of this Miramar matchup. Rook definitely has a target on their back to prove that they are the kings of Miramar. Well, let's see, let's see, let's see. Are they going to be the kings of Murmur yet again? Or will they maintain that title, rather? I think that is going to be the more appropriate question. But I'm now just taking a look at the, 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 the points here for RTG, right? As I said, they could do with a winner, winner, chicken, dinner. Now, if you add a winner, chicken, dinner to the board here for RTG, that could be enough to close the gap considerably with regards to the top four. As we can see, they are trailing by only 20 points. So... It is still going to be a heavily contestable position to play here, even all the way down to Vision, who are just sitting with 30 points deficit. So there's quite a bit of a gap, right? Yes, not exactly the gap that I think the teams would like to have, but it is still changeable. They still have the opportunity to play those required games and get themselves either on the edge of the top four or just within it. Imagine, imagine if they could make that happen here on the last possible day. So we take a look at it. All eyes are on Al Haja as well to see what they're going to be bringing to the table already. Picking up 14 headshots. My goodness gracious. Just calm down there. 44 knockouts as well. I, who who can possibly actually manage to beat Al Haja today? That is my question.
Uh, Al Hadji. <laughs> if we get a twin of Al, if we can just clone Al Hadji, put him in another team, then we've got some competition. That's that's what it's looking like. Or just or just give Al Hadji two devices to play off of one one with the left hand, one with the right hand. One v one. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. But of course, that zone heading towards that western side. So a little bit of a different shakeup for once. <laughs> we have finally a bit of a different zone to take a look at. A great opportunity as well towards El Pozo and Monte Nuevo. Uh, and a, a place that we haven't really been able to put a lot of focus on because we've just been heading over towards Puerto Pareso time and time again. So I would love to see if teams are going to be uh, making use of this newfound terrain and hopefully showcasing a, a winning formula here. Well, let's see. Ooh. R8 now just making their way up on towards the San Martin Hills. And again, a very interesting spread coming through here. I mean, R8 taking quite a bit of a, a quite a bit of a, a trip to get themselves looted up. I mean, it's pretty odd to see SK Ton not having anything on their end, but well, it is gonna be clear vision just pulling up right alongside them, looking to bring in a bit of an upset, and this could be exactly that play now. But here we have it. Oh, come on. Clear Vision. R8 not going to be making too much noise, but it is instead Ragnarok coming with a beautiful quick trade. All right. So let's apply a little bit of that pressure over towards Clear Vision here. Very interesting uh, position once again that we're seeing just with these rotations towards that northern side. So San Martin feeling a little bit of the pressure once again, having a new set of visitors to worry about. Swisted Mines moving on in from the northern side as well. For now, I, I do like that we are just seeing Clear Vision uh, rather just opting for a bit of a, a rotation back. They've got one shot in the back. They want to get out of here as soon as possible. And oh, Ragnarok will just narrowly miss that opportunity to get a follow-up. So we should be seeing Clear Vision hopefully just to get themselves back up on their feet before moving on in. Having the zone gives them so much more time to relax, to get some loot up before moving through. Quest Esports, of course, over towards Al Azahar. So a bit of a, a far, further rotation for them. Not as far, of course, as uh, the likes of Rook Esports. As we know, DK, they are all the way up towards that north. Yeah, but Rook, they, they enjoy the blue juice. Right, so... They, they're not going to be feeling all too phased. Another team that also enjoys a little bit of blue juice is, of course, the Falcons. But they are already positioned up in towards Valle del Mar. So there's not going to be any worry on their end. The Fruity Fruities here, in the meanwhile, they can sit back and enjoy El Pozo for everything that it could be presenting to them. But I'm, I'm curious to see if we're going to have anyone potentially looking to contest all the way over on towards the side. Right, all the way up on towards Pozo. I mean, it, it is going to be ha it is going to have to be, rather, a very deliberate play to rotate in the direction there of El Pozo. Because, I mean, the rest of the lobby, we don't necessarily see them moving towards that direction. But this is what we have, at least for the time being. I don't see that really being the situation or being the case. In the meanwhile, Quest... They are going to be going about their usual business. El Azhar quickly just topping off the fuel tanks as one does. It is the desert. You never know where you're going to find your next bit of, of fuel. So you're going to have to play it quite sparingly. But now, Quest, they start their trip. They start their journey. Look, it's a push on forward. And already we do see Al Haji pulling in pretty close towards uh, Hacienda del Patron. Okay, so a bit of an interesting scouting position coming through here just to get a bit more information towards Twisted Mines. We'll have to wait and see what uh, information they'll be getting, garnering from that. Al Haji has looked so so very confident in these last couple of matches. So if they are feeling it, if they are in form, it uh, it could potentially spell some disaster for our surrounding teams. But we will wait and see. Of course, we know there are plenty, plenty more uh, amazing, amazing individuals here within this stage that can bring just uh, as as dominating of a performance. So. Let's wait and see who that next individual will be to hopefully give us a little bit more of competition for that MVP slot at the end of today. Slime Machine back on the likes of Mirma, just rotating on out from Los Leones, trying to get themselves uh, better situated within the zone. Thai, they have a, a, a weird roller coaster of, a, mm. of an experience and trend over towards Mirma. Some, some matches they are just so so scary they, they again we, we keep talking about them as the silent assassins or the ninjas they have this power to just seriously make their presence uh disappear and then just come back when they feel like taking some eliminations so whether or not uh they'll be doing exactly that on Murma, especially heading towards the, the more western regions of that terrain we know chimacera can be quite uh, quite a crazy set of uh, locations to deal with so if we continue going that direction Maybe 
this is what they've been what a slime machine has been waiting for. Well, we'll see whether or not they are going to be finding themselves any any bit of happiness <laughs> on towards that western side. Speaking of the west, there's one team you got to watch out for, especially when it gets to where this region is currently holding. And of course, the, that team goes by the name of Xenon. They're currently situated all the way up in towards Monte Nuevo. Doesn't seem like they have been feeling any need to start rotating up just yet. But speaking about rotations, we are going to be seeing Vision, GK, and the World of Battle now just finding themselves in a bit of a play. Vision quite far off, but GK looking to get a little bit more aggressive. I don't think necessarily... Uh, Purposefully, right? They were just starting to rotate out of Picardo, and now it's going to be the World of Battle just popping off a few hits. So GK are going to have to try and uh, change their initial ro approach as they won't necessarily be able to get to their rotation location just yet. Well, still plenty of options, though, still within the zone. So we'll see. Maybe they bring through a, a bit of a surprising performance. Like I said, for me, I, I wanted to know, you know, if we have a few teams that are going to sw switch things up a little bit, especially coming through on this last day, really throw their competition for a loop. And even if they're forced into doing so, if they can uh, thrive in those positions, then why not? Maybe they can bring a whole different level of performance. GK as well, another team we are hoping to step on up to the plate. Now staring down the barrel over towards the world of battle. Well, a very patient play then. GK not going to be looking to, uh, you know, let an opportunity slip from their fingers. But they might not have much of a choice, seeing that we've got Virtual Gaming, Xenon, as well as Vision and NASA all now looking to add their contribution a little bit of carnage up in towards that center zone. Speaking of which, we do have a shift. Oh, see now this this zone shift. Mm. This is the one that I was worried about because mm. for Xenon, this is their shift, right? They know exactly how to play that shift when it does exactly what it did here. Uh, but of course, well, we've got the Falcons in there as well, so they're gonna have a little bit of competition to see who's gonna be the one to lock it down. In the meanwhile, we are going to be looking all the way back to that far northeastern side of Zorin. Twist, twisted. Both teams still trying to settle a little bit of a dispute, but at the same time, they need to get their butts back into Zorin. This rotation, like you said, I mean, uh, Xenon and Falcons we've seen in previous uh, MEA championships, uh, they had an unfortunate amount of these shifts. I mean, time in and time out, map after map, we were just going to Chumacera. DK, it's it's like PTSD all over again. Thank you very much for that reminder. Uh, that does mean, though, that they have a little bit more uh, comfortability towards those portions of uh, Murmur. But specifically for Falcons, uh, as a team that literally just tunnel visioned themselves into that position, has been dropping there still consistently in this Murmur, I'd be very interested to see what uh, a, an altercation like Xenon versus Falcons is going to look like on that Western Reach. But the interesting thing that we are seeing coming through with regards to Falcons is they've now seen what Xenon do in a zone like this, and we can see them preemptively looking to get themselves situated in anticipation of that Xenon play. But in the meanwhile, uh, we're going to have to wait a little bit for that as we do have Vision and Enigma getting into a little bit of an altercation or on towards this eastern side here. But again, right, a very difficult region to try and play through. Lots of hills and valleys and flying cars all over the place. But it's going to be the world of battle oh. to potentially welcome Vision down the hill. As, uh, well, again, they're not in the clearest position in this room. Yeah, about to feel a little bit of that heat as Raouf continues to just strafe atop the hill. I mean, if it gets you down the hill, even if you're rolling, it kind of works, right? But this crew just looking at any and every potential elimination, unfortunately, putting themselves in a crossfire here from the world of battle will result in them being sent back into the lobby. I mean, for the likes of Vision now, at least finding the one knock on towards Arthur might give them an edge into this whole situation, but they will be doing so with a duo having to go up against potentially still the likes of the entirety of the world of battle. So this will be quite a difficult uh, fight for them to take, but maybe now or never, especially with Nigma Galaxy rolling on in to look for a third party opportunity. Well, let's see if that third-party opportunity will present itself. In the meanwhile, I'm going to be focusing my, my eyes towards that western side because, as we've seen in a zone like this, whoever controls the west, they are just capable of doing tremendous, tremendous things here. So it is going to be a little bit of a tough play for our eastern teams. But fortunately, 
is not going to persist to the west. It is instead going to be pulling a little bit further back on towards La Driera. But here we go, right? Uh, GK feeling the pressure, feeling the heat. RTG and Twisted out in the blue. But they might have a bit of an unfortunate visit come through from Quest, who we see also rotating up be right behind them. So whichever way they look to play this, they're going to have to try and wrap it up. And Twist definitely going to have to be the team to pick up those much-needed points if they are going to be looking to climb those rankings. But RTG, phenomenal opportunity here to add even more to the tally. As we've mentioned, they need only 20 points to catch up. And so far, adding the additional points, this could be taking them one step closer. Oh my goodness, what even is happening over towards this Miramar matchup? RTG looking like they have a completely different side to themselves. Hopefully, we should be seeing a much better approach. Already four eliminations up and they still have all four of their members, so a good rotation it might just be what they need. Slime Machine, on the other hand, as we were wondering whether or not Chumacero was exactly what they were looking for, looks like they've run into a bit of trouble. Already one member down, staring down the barrel here with Enigma Galaxy as a target right above them. Ooh, 13 now going in for a bit of a res, but Freak with a perfect angle to the nade might get a double here. Ooh, Let's see. Close. Where's that nade? Mm. I mean, that's the difficulty of this terrain, right? Yeah. Um, the nade might fly straight, but when it connects, it's all downhill. And ooh, this oh, is oh, a beautiful oh, oh. opportunity for Lord. They do find the player up onto 13. Fashe is going to have nowhere left to hide. Maybe hiding in the lobby. I think that could be a good spot. As you can see, Fashe now suffering the, the, the casualty thanks to a little bit of that gravity doing its thing. But now, will we see Nigma follow through and get the rest of Sly? I mean, strategically it would make sense, but positionally speaking, I mean, I think Nigma would have a much better time getting themselves rather situated in zone and then contesting from there. Well, at the moment, they are running a 1-3 split. So they've got the Rauf that has um, at least solidified a rotation for them into the zone as it stands. Um, and ironically, we, we do have the last member of Slime Machine heading right to where uh, Rauf is currently holding on. So this would be a very unfortunate rotation. But we'll see. That that call is going to be made. We can see Enigma Galaxy back into the cars. Rauf can hear that they're pushing towards his position. All, uh, I mean, just looking at this coincidence, oh. it is ridiculous. And I mean, as we were talking about, the Rauf should have been the scout just getting the position, the rotation, but here they will be the final potential nail in the coffin of Slime Machine. Well, I mean, I'm not quite sure if that is the kind of coffin that you want to be in, right? Because it could still be quite stealthy. Um, I think it's going to be a difficult one to get your hands on, but in the meanwhile, I mean, Nigma, they're not going to relent just yet. They are going to be looking to find any place, but this could also potentially lead them right onto the doorstep here of Falcon, so we can see controlling the plateau, and this is a beautiful standing point, right? A beautiful angle to hold, and they can bring in quite a bit of a response all the way from up there, but... In the meanwhile, also, we got to take a look at Quest, who've now just managed to find their way up into Woodzorn, but still have a long, long way to go. A very, very long way to go. So it's not necessarily going to all to plan for everyone right now, but we'll wait and see what uh, these final few moments could bring on Miramar. Potentially, once again, another turnaround. We saw Quest do exactly this over towards Wrangler. Moving into those final few moments, only one elimination up, and then suddenly they just dropped 11 because... You know, they just make it look so easy at this point in time. But we'll see. <laughs> Quest Esports sticking a nice little bit of a rotation into zone, being greeted there by the likes of RTG, who, as we know, has been a lot more aggressive over towards Miramar. Mm. Hopefully, they can actually convert that into a good placement as well. NASA, Quest, this is a bit of an altercation that we weren't really looking for. I mean, top... Hello. <laughs> okay, that's a nice ramp. <laughs> One way to stop yourself, DK, just to use a building. Uh, this is not exactly an altercation that we were looking forward to, but uh, it could prove to be very interesting. This is, you know, mm. second versus uh, th fourth place, I think, versus first place as we started off the day. So let's see what it brings. Yeah, it is still first versus fourth, but I think the extra bit of pressure that is going to come through here is the addition of RTG. I mean, they're not on their initial doorstep, but they are still close enough to be quite a bit of a pest. And speaking about which, though, we are going to be hopping back on towards the edge of Zorin. It's going to be Clear Vision and GK Ragnar with beautiful work onto Van Kid. <laughs> I mean, that consistency is just there. Not letting any of those hits go to waste. 
We're not quite sure if Focus is going to have any better luck than their teammates. As you can see, the vehicle not starting to smoke up. Ragnar dealing the blows yet again. And this could be all downhill for Clear Vision. Drike, I love the spacing, the change of coming through from them. As you can see, Vito now, yep, having to accompany the rest of the team as they will make their way quite hastily back into the lobby. Ooh, unfortunate situations, but we'll see. The world of battle now potentially up on the chopping block. They have uh, literally survived onslaught after onslaught from teams taking rotations into their locations, staying alive, making sure they survive up to this point. But now, is RTG going to be the final hurdle that they can't conquer, or will this be the start? Arthur dropping to the floor, trying to get a bit of an opportunity here with the rest of their team. A 2-1 split for the world of battle. They have an opportunity to corner and sandwich the likes of RTG. However, they are looking a very, very worried about the surroundings. Blue Zone moving in as well. Their time is running out. Well, I can tell you, RTG, they are gonna they are gonna contest this kicking and screaming, right? They don't want to go back. They, they refuse to go back, so they're going to be trying to defend as best they can. But the world of battle, they don't see uh, any other way out of this. The blue zone is going to be nipping at their heels, so Arthur needs to find a way on forward. Oh, but up comes the responses. Rio looking to see what they can find here. Now, this is where it still could all turn on its head. As you can see, the expanses from RTG. I mean, Galaga reading the situation beautifully, looking to get a bit of a flank situated. And now, the world of battle in a very tough position, down to only Krona. Oh, very, very tough position. Again, it might have been with a little bit of that hesitation, worrying about rotations from other teams. And that delayed them pushing into a potential uh, a great crossfire that could have seen a very different result. But... It's all right. RTG, as we know, they have been on a very different uh, aggressive level this matchup. So maybe it was all just to go with fate. But we'll see GK Esports now taking that rotation from that northern side as well, just behind the likes of Virtual Gaming. Hopefully they will be able to get themselves into safety and have a good fair fight. But it already is going to start you out to oh. the outskirts. Virtual Gaming step on in, finding one of GK as they are looking for a conversion to the rest. The danger now lies in the position of brute force moving towards the the noise, right? Again, they are like moths to the flame. They just get drawn to the action. As you can see already, Neo is now focusing a little bit of that effort down on towards Yafoz. And this is the opportunity for Virtual Gaming to maybe turn this into a little bit of a bait and switch. As Amjid is up top. Got to watch those angles though. G-Game. You can see them also now, now rather coming to the realization is like, maybe, maybe, just maybe. We need to get ourselves a little bit closer towards zone because, uh, you know, being this far out and with ha with the blue zone approaching, there's not going to be an easy play to be had here. Well, the Ooh. battle also going to be meeting their end as they will get backed up alongside Volt there from Vision. And now it's down to Saif, but of course the big bad blue zone will continue to do its thing onto RTG. RTG taking a lot more time than I would have liked to get those final few eliminations. So even though they picked up nine eliminations, now they rotate up into the zone as potentially a team to drop here in 12th. It's go it would be heartbreaking if that were to be the case, but maybe they are just going to be aiming for a lot more aggression into today's matches. Mosta stepping it on up here from that northern reach up against either Brute Force or GK or both at this rate in time as they find themselves in a the sandwich. Oh, nice. Good play here from Mosta. Sending Santa back to the North Pole. And there goes J Gaith as well. GK out in 11th. At least walk away with those four eliminations. But this is where the hard work now really starts to come through towards this northern edge, right? Virtual Gaming Squad, Brute Force, and of course, a side order of Quest. This is going to be a pretty, pretty tough one to stomach. But speaking of which, though, we've got NASA and Saif also holding right alongside Quest. Let's see how this is going to pan on out. Chris Eastfields has been a little bit quiet up until this moment in time, looking for those eliminations. Virtual Gaming, not with an easy rotation. Now up against a Brute Force, just trying to get a bit of hard cover with those vehicles because they are out and exposed. Um, in a moment's notice, that nade could make the connection and we could be saying goodbye mm. to Virtual Gaming. Ooh. Will it make it? Ooh, ooh. ooh! Enough damage to get that re-knock, but Mosta, ooh, somehow, some way, still alive. Mm. I mean, a very good attempt, though, coming through there from Peapod. In the meanwhile, it is going to be NASA and Quest fighting for possession of the Southwest. Oh, you can see Fahidan just uh, having a little bit of a barbecue there, enjoying the flames. 
people getting back down to business. But I'm, I'm curious to see how Kante and Fahidana are going to look to push through this beautiful defense. But yes, a brief spray coming through from NASA. They know there's someone nearby. Let's let's just start spraying and then run up the staircase. And now it's going to be down to easy and it's going to be everything but. But Virtual Gaming Squad though, Mosta with a beautiful oh. answer back onto Edo. I just don't understand how they're still alive. <laughs> I mean, we saw Brute Force actually descending from that hilltop to get the confirmations and somehow... One little smoke still keeping virtual gaming in this one. Once again, I'm Jade <laughs> going to be revived back up on their feet. Hopefully this time they have an opportunity to get meds popped off. It looks like they are in a much better standing. However, they are still facing off against the, the, the potential full force here of a brute force towards this reach. Rotation into the zone is not going to be easy by any measure. Within a, a, a moment's notice, we could also be seeing Xenon and NASA jump into this and there we go master oh after all that survivability they go down once again for real yeah but brute force not gonna have not gonna have any of this happen to them <laughs> right they won't let any repeat offenders try to sneak through a little bit of a surprise but now brute force can focus down onto the side there of the uh, xenon potentially maybe even find themselves a little bit that virtual gaming squad action meanwhile it's gonna be the falcons and nigma now having a little bit of a disagreement over a compound but whoever gains power here is going to be smiling. As we know, uh, the Falcons, they are opting for a 3-1 split. We do have uh, P6 all the way back in a little bit of safety in the zone. But now, let's see whether or not Coops and the rest of the team here from Enigma can actually come through with a strong response. As it's now only Coops left to contest against the rest. And up comes NASA. This could be exactly what Coops now needs. Well, it is going to be a 1v4 situation here. Falcons just behind them as well. Teak and Puncher looking to get involved. Uh, Coops, I mean, run around as far as you can. There is no place to hide. We will say goodbye. And immediately there is an opportunity for Falcons to continue this altercation. But even for Falcons, they're like, no, this is too much heat. We'll be backing <laughs> on off rather opting for that southern reach. Well, speaking about the reach, up comes Brute Force as they look to push in. I'm G, beautiful positioning, Ooh. but mind. Well, it says, don't mind me as they push on in and it wraps it up, alleviating even more of the pressure. But Brute Force, not exactly out of the woods. They still have to get themselves patched up and back into safety. Now it's going to be NASA looking to try their hand and a little bit of the aggression. Here we go, start to the beautiful strafe. Neos feeling that pressure, starting to build. Up comes Xenox. Looking for their own opportunity, trying to play a little bit of a vehicle upset, but fortunately for Brute Force, there is a rock in the way. Big Obstacles is going to be saving the day, at least for now. But NASA, they are determined, they want to get the spray, going to be fishing through the smoke for every hit marker, and they will succeed as they take down the Brody Fruities, and off they go. Full eliminations out in sixth place. Wow, okay, I mean, this is... This is really proving to be a very competitive final day. Brute Force out for the count. Quest out for the count. The only team really still in the conversation from our initial top four of the day is NASA. And then as we know, moving in now from that eastern reach, they still have to rotate into the safety of the zone. Falcons up here towards the top. Holding strong, looking for a potential here. Yeah, great reach across for them as well. A, a very similar position, ironically, to where we saw Quest on that previous wrangle. But this time, it is in favor of Falcons with the zone. Yeah, I mean, R8, they might have the numbers, but they are going to have a pretty, pretty tough run. And I mean, historically speaking, Miramar has not exactly been their best map within this championship. So I don't quite know whether or not R8 are going to be able to really claw their way back even though they have all four players up i mean we're also waiting to see even more eliminations come their way but in the meanwhile there's gonna be nasa and falcons fighting yet again falcons beautiful hard cover as they do find the play on towards starch nasa now down to a two-piece we can see the rest of the team trying to try trying to rather close it up the xenox j7 and spec well that adds up to three Either which way. Let's see if they can bounce back and maybe mount some kind of a defense against the Falcons. Oh, moving on in. NASA winning this. Whew, winning this would be pretty impressive, but P6 has to avoid a few of those nades. Meanwhile, they have found that initial knock. J7 now on the ground. A potential follow-up here with that nade. Oh, perfect bounce. Just, just missing targets. 
As we see, R8 taking this wonderful opportunity now, DK, actually, to close the gap, moving in just behind Falcons. Again, as a full group, they could completely shut down Ooh. the approach here from Falcons. Yeah, they 100% could. It is going to be, be <laughs> requiring quite a bit of, uh, dare I say, teamwork, right, to come through here. Unintentional teamwork between NASA and R8 if they want to get that jump in, but... I mean, I like that approach coming through from Xenon as well, right? They just chill in back up towards the northern side of Zara. They're like, you know what? It's fine. You guys fight. Uh, we'll just sit here, wait for you to finish up, and then pick up whoever else is left. So they could still be quite a bit of an opportunity here for Xenon to sneak in a bit of a, a winner, winner chicken dinner. Of course, they are one of the teams yet to do exactly that. Falcons, no surprise. They are going to be looking to be an absolute menace here. But such difficult play. And I mean, Falcons, they're not letting anything happen to them. They somehow manage to defend a double team assault coming onto their position. Wow, wow, wow. Holding on just by uh, a moment's no no uh, notice here. Falcons still will continue their reign of terror. NASA, in the meantime, have used that opportunity to back on off now with a two piece up. Zenon, as you mentioned, sitting pretty over towards that northern side with a three-piece, but Spec now going to be caught on out in the open. A beautiful spray through the smoke, and Xenox now the last two members up and Adam trying to defend NASA and their fantastic progress so far. Nine eliminations up, they would not want it to end here, but it might not be up to them. Xenox, uh, where do you go? Do you go, to, do you go to Xenox? Do you go to Falcons? Do you go to R8? There's no position safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you gotta you gotta take your pick, right? And uh, just hope that you made the right decision. In the meanwhile, the Falcons also now looking to play their hand at a little bit of a repositioning here. And I mean, this could be a great bit of leverage coming through now onto the side of R8. All right, they have the numbers, but they don't have any kind of a position to make much of a stand from. So let's see how this one is gonna unravel. Zenon, or Zenox rather, are gonna be being a nice chill position there as well, playing a little bit of hide and seek. Ooh, but they've been found. So it's now just a game of seek, right? The Heidi part has left. Now, also, Xenon. Oh, getting absolutely battered as Ragnarok reaches across the way. Carry Boy trying to fend off the Porsche, but it is not going to be an easy one to accomplish. Not at all. Very difficult position. Puncher King swinging left, right, and center, finding Xenox. Finally, at least opening up a little bit of spacing. Meanwhile, R8 have cleaned up Xenon. So we take a look at the R8 versus Falcons showdown here for the winner winner chicken dinner. It is going to be a 3v3 as the one knock comes through here from the side of R8. And Falcons up with three. Uh, sorry, R8 there up with three. A potential more. But Falcons already so aggressive. Hopefully, there's something ma miraculous in that care package to get them across the line. Well, I mean, if Falcons get this, this is going to be a back-to-back winner-winner chicken dinner as they now start to even the board here. They've already found Ragnarok. Down they go. It's up to the rest of the crew. As you can see, SK Tan Ida trying to just strafe their way on through. Kra also trying to hold up on the back end, but up comes a beautiful flank then from Puncher, who is going to be looking to milk the heck out of this situation. But will we see R8 being able to defend Ida is destroying everything they can find on the edge, but they will get spotted and traded on up just about. Nothing guaranteed just yet, but what a turnaround. I mean, Falcons now down to one. It is a 1v3 contention, and oh! Ooh. R8 stopping Falcons from getting a back-to-back -back winner with a chicken dinner. Look, they could feel the energy in the air. They were like, listen, Falcons, we know what you can do. We know, you know, you're already in that good position, but no. Not today, not today. R8 stepping up in a fantastic fashion there. In the last few moments of that Murmur matchup to be able to still steal away that winner winner chicken dinner, but they had to fight tooth and nail to make that one happen. I mean, such an exciting gameplay indeed. And mad respect going out to R8, as we said before, right? Uh, this Murmur, well, Murmur's in this championship, not necessarily being their best game so far, but as we know, they've proven themselves coming through from, uh, you know, PNPL Arabia. So it's good to see them regaining a little bit of that confidence and just flexing their capabilities here. And of course, looking at this, we do also then have a uh, good old Rosa from RTG being the player with the most eliminations. Wow, all right. A bit of a surprising performance here across the board. Not a single team really having a, a dominating performance on the overall match report in terms of our individuals, but it was a very good showing nonetheless. And a, a very interesting 
story that was starting to build. Again, as we said, Quest Esports Brute Force, they were out for the count. And we said goodbye to NASA very early on as well. Everyone other than our top four teams just seem to be uh, trying to finish off those winner winner chicken dinners as much as they can. Mm. Uh, that could be a bit of an approach that the teams could be looking to take here. But as we can see, of course, consistency is going to be key as we do have NASA walking away with nine eliminations alongside RTG and Falcons White. It seems like that was the approach of the day, right? Like, you know what, Momar, let's go for nine. Everybody confirm, agree, yes, 100%. Boom, here we have it. And well, they just were able to accomplish their goal. But unfortunately for two teams, right, they are going to be sent back with a few bubbles, as it, is, as it will be the players here from Clear Vision and Rook Esports. Fortunately for them, the donut shop has enough to, uh, you know, just help alleviate a little bit of that, a little bit of that play, a little bit of that pressure. Well, a three-way tie in terms of eliminations, nine apiece each. Uh, yeah, it was going to be a very heavy-handed Murmur matchup. We saw a lot more aggression coming through from the teams. Uh, there were one, a few, uh, you know, instances where we would see a little bit more hesitation, just because the the speed at which we were running in this Murmur matchup was unprecedented. I mean, we were just gunning for the finish quicker than uh, way most of the teams would have liked. Even looking at into this, I mean, just 13 teams already at this point, and then we still just start dropping like flies. Very aggressive Murma, but it, it, it is what we tend to expect coming through in the finals. Everyone just, you know, all cards on the table. They are going to be looking for the win. They are going to be looking for as many points as they possibly can. Yeah, and rightly so. That is the name of the game. It is the final day, the last opportunity for teams to make as much of an impact as they possibly can. And I mean, moving into the zone, it was exceptionally challenging. I mean, there was no one particular good position to take. Essentially, an uphill battle. And as we got into that last stretch, it became a little bit of a downhill play. But mad respect, still going out to the side there of R8, just overpowering the side of P6. And well, with that, they got themselves that well-deserved winner, winner chicken dinner. We now, right? We've now been taking a look at our first two matches. That also then means one thing. Game, game number three is going to be up next. So on that, we are going to be taking a quick break while we pray for Erangel. And uh, I try to fix my buffer. But uh, yeah, see you guys back in a short few moments. It's time to upgrade your PUBG mobile outfits. Join free daily cups for solo, duo, or squads. Win face it points. Exchange for PUBG Mobile UC. To customize your account, join face it today and earn rewards. Try for free at faceit.com forward slash PUBG Mobile.
Hello guys and welcome back. We're getting ready to move into match number next. Of course, we are going to be heading right back into Erangel yet again to see if we can have a little bit of a back-to-back a -back play. I mean, looking at what we had happen just here, Falcons getting so close to getting yet another winner-winner chicken in a back-to-back -back play. But R8 said no, you can only have one. That's it, right? The first match, that's fine, but you will not get it just yet. So it's all going to boil down to what the teams are going to be bringing into the next match. But before we get there, of course, we are going to be taking a look at a few stats in the meanwhile. Absolutely. So let's uh, jump on into a nice little bit of a breakdown. Again, that matchup was quite a heavy-handed Murmur. We had three-way ties uh, in terms of eliminations between uh, a wild, wild set of teams that we weren't expecting. For NASA, having to give it up to them as well just for the, the overall improvement that we've seen coming through from these matches, uh, ending up in a very, very uh, close finish to those top slots, but ultimately just those final few moments uh, being exposed and uh, unfortunately being caught between you know, rock and a hard place there it uh, did make it very difficult for them but hopefully we will see a lot more from them coming back into these next couple of matches as they were one of our teams to get nine eliminations that round it was a really good showing from them yeah, and I mean, that's that they've been playing a very consistent game across the first two matches they already set on 24 points for the day 10 of which has come through from placement and the 14 eliminations they've been able to secure so far so yeah NASA looking really really good no, it's a very, a very impressive uh, showing so far. But of course, another team that uh, really caught us off guard there was Falcons. I mean, managing to defend their current position there towards that high ground area. We thought for a second there, no, surely R8 was going to come through and steal it from them. Well, they did, but not in the fashion that we were expecting. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, once again, uh, a, a near, near perfect back-to-back -back finish coming through from Falcons. If it was not for the likes of R8, we would have seen a very, very different situation. So we have to give it up to them. They've definitely stepped it up and we asked the question at the beginning of the day where is falcons they they haven't been playing to the 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 usual pacing that we are all so accustomed to especially when it comes to these players i mean they all uh, they all speak for themselves you see these names you know what you're up against they have an incredible amount of uh, experience uh, split between them so it's great to see that they're starting to show it off a little bit yeah, and I mean, that play just put them uh, essentially on par with Xenon with regards to the overall standings. And, you know, Xenon now finding themselves in even more of a challenging position uh... because things are becoming more and more challenging. They now need about 22 points to try and close the gap. So there's quite a bit of a barrier that has been, you know, established. The, the yeah, it's, it's like an exclusive club to get into the top four. It is going to take quite a bit of hard work. But as we know, the team's just on the outskirts, having quite a bit of capability. And we want to see whether or not they are going to be looking to flex that moving into this Erangel. Absolutely. So our second last wrangle for the NEA Championships just around the corner. And again, it, it goes to, well, we have these amazing stats that tell us, uh, you know, Brute Force and NASA should be doing fantastically moving on into this matchup. Yet, it's not at all what we've been seeing today. Brute Force into that first wrangle definitely had a great amount of eliminations, but they didn't get far in terms of placements due to getting caught on out in a crossfire there between Brute Force and Xenon. So it was a very incredible difficult uh, situation for them. And it goes against completely what we were expecting. So moving into this wrangle, uh, DK, I, I, I know this is a difficult question to ask, but who, if you were just to take a wild pick for you into this wrangle matchup, who's going to be your focus? Ooh, all right. So, Erangel number two for the day. I'm going to go with Xenon. I'm going to go with Xenon or potentially Quest. One of those two teams, I think either of them could be looking to bring a bit of an upset here. But, well, speaking about upsets, let's take a look at our overall rankings. Quest, Brute Force, no change with regards to their positioning on the rankings here. But we do see NASA now just trading places with the side there of Rook Esports, right? NASA now up in the top three with their two winner winner chicken dinners. But you can see there is quite a bit of a gap between second and third place, as well as between fourth and fifth. Absolutely. It's no surprise that we are seeing Nassau stepping up into a different uh, field day here. Rook Esports, even though they've been so consistent, especially just yesterday, having a bit of a tougher time, only picking up 10 points so far in today's matches. Yes, we've only had two matches, so don't take that with a pinch of salt. But uh, Nassau and Falcons just have been so, so, so good. We can see Falcons moving up over towards that e uh, eighth position, right up ahead of Xenon, as you mentioned earlier on. So for Xenon, uh, considering that just yesterday they were in the top four, it really has has been a very difficult set of matches for them uh, since starting day number three and hopefully 
moving into you know nearly the halfway marker as you said the second last uh, in wrangle of the day this could be the wake-up call for them you know looking at doing the math looking at where they're currently finding themselves watching that uh, potential pmgc slot running away from them i i really do want them to step it up we've seen so many times how close they have been and it's just the final few matches where they need to lock it down and ensure they're doing everything that they possibly can it's gonna take pretty pretty uh pretty pretty high levels of focus to be able to maintain that for the remainder of the day i mean they've already played so many other matches not including this championship they've also played you know their respective pmpls which has already taken quite a bit out of them but well we're almost there almost done so it's just gonna take that extra last few pushes to come through but i'm not just taking a look at the whole situation that we have between fifth and ninth place right there's mm -hmm. three points difference three points for five slots oh. that is oh, insane goodness. right whatever happens in this last in this next match is going to be changing up the entirety of that and i mean so there's still a lot of hope for a team like xenon like falcons like uh, nigma rtg virtual gaming squad to get themselves into even more of a contentious spot or just try and essentially create a bit of a gap a, a bit of a buffer mm -hmm. so that they can then just mount an absolute aggressive assault moving into the final stretch of the day but again moving into wrangle it's gonna be a tough one because we've seen so many teams as we've already discussed right stepping up coming through with these surprises out of the blue almost just uh you know yeah. being like oh wait i'm still here as well you know you might not have seen much from me from for the entirety of this championship on this respective map but <laughs> let's just quickly remind you as to what it is that we are capable of um so I, i'm really going to be looking to see who's going to be the one to step it up now because as we know right this is one hella contentious position to be in there's so so much that can change here and again there is no clear indication as to who will be our top four teams no, that's what we love to see and this is what we asked for on day number one. We didn't want to have a, a clear winner. We didn't want to have a dominating presence from only one single team actually moving us into the final moments because, again, it's four slots available for PMGC. We need to have that expectation that the region as a whole, Middle East and Africa regions as a whole, have stepped up their plate uh, considerably, that they've stepped up their, their, their efforts and that they've done whatever they can to get to a whole different level. If you have four opportunities, four teams that can get themselves into the global stage they need to be ready in every sense of the word so fighting it out to the last very uh, last possible second is uh, exactly what we would expect exactly what uh, i love to see because it showcases a very healthy competitive level and hopefully that means that the four teams will be sending to the global uh, championship are at a whole different level than what we've seen in previous years maybe even bringing through a very different set of results yeah, well, who knows? All right, there's only going to be one way to find it. And of course, for those of you that are wondering why we are still here talking, it's only because we had a rehost, right? So we'll get back into the action very, very soon. You know, we just got to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect, right? If there's a, a little bit of dust, a little bit too much dust that is blowing across the screen, we can't, we can't have that, right? We need to make sure the conditions are perfect for these teams to show us exactly what they can bring on through. But again, quite excited to see what this uh, second to last wrangle of the entire championship is going to be bringing through. I mean, mm -hmm. it's pretty scary to think that essentially the, the 2023 season has now all boiled down to what is going to be happening in these next few games, right? This is essentially the conclusion of uh, the 2023 season at least for the mea uh, region right and speaking of which of course as you can see it is almost about time so is what do we what do you want to see with regards to flight path if you had uh, if you could choose anything mm. Mm, 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 mm. you know what the western side the west side of it wrangled we i don't care how we get there but Let's just try and mostly focus on the western portion of Murma. We we don't give a lot of love over towards those western regions. We've had so many south and north and south and north and even eastern zones that uh, it would just be nice to see a different part of Erangel for once. <laughs> well, let's see if that is going to be the case. I mean, I'll keep, I'll keep. Uh, I don't know how, how committed I want to be to this. Am I going to keep my fingers crossed, my toes crossed? I'll I'll keep one <laughs> hand crossed. Just, I'll just, the just keep one hand crossed. DK, so I know, be very I know. That's, that's why, that's why I'm trying to decide. Like, I even, I even made sure that I put my feet flat on the, on the, on the ground. Right? There's nothing mm -hmm. other than just my left hand 
keeping finger, you know, fingers crossed. So let's see whether or not that is going to be the case here as we do take a beautiful scenic view at the amazing Erangel. I mean, again, it's just like sometimes you forget that this is just a mobile game. Only a mobile game, right? It, and it is that so there's just going to be so much violence here in yes. a moment's notice. I mean, if this the tree, violence. if that tree, that tree could tell, you, you know, if that tree could speak, just imagine the stories <laughs> it could tell. It looks like such a great uh, vacation spot, you know, like, yeah. this other th okay, not this place, this is a, a very bad example of a vacation spot. But before we got here, <laughs> it looked like such a, a wonderful place to go and uh, take a bit of a relax uh, relaxing time, maybe get some uh, nuclear infection along the way, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't really want to be here. <laughs> I mean, you've got free vehicles. Uh -huh. Like, you don't have to go to a rental company. You can just walk up to a vehicle, hop in it, you know, and what worries do you have? Nothing. You can go have fun in the container yard, uh, you know, play a little bit of tic-tac-toe, look at someone <laughs> running there alongside the building for some reason. <laughs> I don't know if that was intended, but they do have a teammate at least, so that is a good thing to see. Of course, we know those are not the players. Maybe that's the cleanup crew, right? Uh. That's how the map gets so clean after every match. We've got a cleanup crew that goes in and cleans up. My oh, goodness, can you imagine the amount of effort it would take to clean up a wrangle <laughs> after every match? Oh my good, no. <laughs> uh, that's a job I don't want. Uh, I'll, I'll put it now. But hey, at least on the very, very slight uh, chance, we did at least start on the western side. Not necessarily going to end there, but uh, we get to see a nice little bit of an overview there of Quarry, Primorsk, and ultimately we're going to be ending up towards the reaches of Kamishki and Stolbe. Finally, our second uh, last a wrangle has approached the field. And this is now where many questions start to unfold. We can see the rankings there on the top left-hand side. And it's looking really good for the likes of Quest Esports, currently leading the pack. But again, not by a margin. I mean, there is still a massive opportunity for anyone to really step up the plate. al Haje, as we've also mentioned, we want to have another answer as to who could potentially be the player that would take that MVP, that would dare take that MVP away from the likes of al Haje. Well, who knows? Who knows? I mean, Ado, let's be honest, Ado, Ado's been playing really, really well. So, you know, there's you, you can't really fault anything on Ado's side. I mean, they've been able to pack quite a bit of damage in there. al is just it's just a, a, a whole separate species. Uh, but I think if, if there is going to be someone that could stand a bit of a fighting chance, it should be Ado to maybe contest for that, at least based on what we've been seeing so far. Speaking about which, of course, we are going to be hopping all the way up in towards the northeast. So uh. not exactly west. I mean, uh -huh. it is west if you turn the map on its, uh, you know, upside down. I uh. guess then it's still maybe over on towards the western side. But the teams are going to be happy about this, right? Because again, they don't have to make up any, you know, extreme rotations to get themselves decently and properly situated. They can go through the looting phase and then, you know, start to make their the calls mm -hmm. from there. Oh, well, we, there's still like one or two places within this zone. That would be nice to visit for the first time here within the MEA champ. Uh, already seeing a bit of a change coming through from Twisted as well, heading more towards the east. I'll, I'll tell you who, though, is extremely happy with this zone, and that would be uh, Brute Force. I mean, moving into this matchup, Yasnaya Poliana uh, so close to being Smap Bam center of, of the zone. They are going to have a field there in their, their optimal uh, position here. Just getting their loot up and then hoping and waiting and ready for the rest of the surrounding teams to make their rotations in before they get a potential couple of eliminations. As for some of the other teams, uh, <laughs> the Falcons feel the same way that I do. <laughs> I just want to go to the West End side, but here we are once again for like the 50th time this week going to the East. Easy. We'll be saying goodbye as well as a quick rundown through comes through from Enigma Galaxy. But ultimately, we're still going to the east. Why? I mean, <laughs> the east the east at least um, can contain a beast. I don't know, I'm just trying to rhyme. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. we, we got to take what we dealt. And it is just the, just, just the whole case here. Speaking of which, though, speaking of uh, things being dealt, we did see Enigma. Uh, doing a little bit of a thing here as they oh, are going to be oh. rushing forward looking to just play the upsets as best they can and a very quick bit of uh, aggression being found right there. I mean, was that al -Hajj? No, al -Hajj at least managing to escape from uh, where I could see there. But no, a very, very was... surprising play. 
Was it? It was Al Hajj. Yeah, it was Al Hajj. Oh. Before it was easy. And then they immediately went to Al Hajj. So it just looks like Nemo no. Galaxy is hunting down the entirety of Quest Esports one by one by one. <sighs> Man. Well, no I guess for you today. <laughs> I guess I guess that's probably the way that you get Ado to contest Al Hajj for MVP as you go out and you take out Al Hajj. Mm. It's probably the only way at this rate, really. Um So yeah, I don't know what uh, Nigma decided. I don't know if someone paid Nigma off and they were like, please. You have one job. Find Al Hajj. One of the quest players. Just just find him and take him out. Otherwise, at this rate, no one is going to have a chance. So, <laughs> hey, it just means we might have a little bit of competition for that MVP at the end of the day, which uh, is always a great bit of fun. Uh, unfortunate, though, for Quest that they will be starting off so soon with only two members. I think they also themselves were caught off uh, guard there for, for quite a bit of time. But hey, over to the east. I'm just going to keep blaming the east zone as to why all of this is happening. But hey, over towards the Ministry Base Island, uh, uh, Virtual Gaming actually now finding themselves, uh, of course, being very alone. As we mentioned, Twisted Minds instead opting for an eastern approach. They are currently split now between Kameshki, uh, a little bit further down we've got Crypto, and then all the way towards, uh, unfortunately, just the outskirts of prison uh, into Impala. We have the likes of uh, the rest of Twisted Minds. So a very... A very strange uh, approach compared to the previous days that we've seen from them. What do you think is the strategy that they're going for here? Just holding on to, to the outskirt regions, getting as much loot as possible as they possibly can? I mean, that could be that could be one approach to try and take here. But again, I, I, I would say it, it's all dependent on what their, what their objective is. Right? And the unfortunate part is, is we don't know what the objective is. And that's always where... The difficulty comes in. All we can do is, uh, you know, come through with a potential guesstimation, um, our best analysis as to what we think the team should be doing right here. So it's 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 tough. It is tough to say. But maybe, who knows? Maybe a little bit of that edge play could be a good strategy to take forward here. So you are taking forward. You can see Xenon also now looking to uh, make up quite a bit of ground. And I think this is a good rotation. They're not going to be waiting for the blue zone to close in entirely. Instead, they are going to be looking to be a little bit more preemptive and get themselves situated while there are still quite a few available opportunities and positions and compounds to take occupation of. Interesting rotation now moving in. Uh, from the western side, also very curious to see where they'd actually end up uh, dropping. Also, for GK Esports, uh, focusing there towards uh, Rozok might prove some sort of dividends. We've got the World of Battle just trying to get exact center here between Yasna and Rozak holding onto that position. SK Tan finding a bit of an opportunity here. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Final hit comes in. And this Grim, unfortunately, will be dropping off. Mm. Ooh, this is not the kind of a... Uh, not the kind of angle just yet, but there we go. Kra! Oh, getting met with a little bit of a tra 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 coming through here from Tapok gotta love it but let's see how they are gonna be looking to navigate the the treacherous grounds they find themselves on vision with a good re response here unfortunately the park not gonna be able to follow through and avenge their teammates but up comes the rest of r8 so they are ample opportunities he has r8 now looks to make a very hasty retreat and vision gonna be looking to just fend them off look at that the box like yes 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 get out of here Oh, oh. What, what? Whoa! Wow. Hold on. How did they get that right? <laughs> do we have do we have like a record-breaking stat for the highest jump ever made in a vehicle within this matchup? Because I think that, they just broke the record. That's gotta be it. I mean, ha if they were able to land it on on a cool spot, that would be oh. bonus points. Um, but yeah, amazing, amazing jump. Oh, that is cool parking. There we go. I'll give them a uh, seven out of ten for that. It's efficient, not exactly. Right? It's it takes not exactly the least amount of space. Yeah, it's not on top. It's right alongside. So, yeah. I mean, if they'd be able to land it inside, like where Focus is going now, <laughs> I think that would have been a beautiful shot. Let's see the landing. Did they nail it? No. Oh, no. No. So... They they did hit the edge of the edge of the building though. Yeah. Look, it it was. It... <laughs> I, for me, it's more the case that they did it together. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we had both of them just 
trying to reach the heavens with their vehicles. Oh, we love a little bit of uh, comedy moving into this one. Going to be centering up a little bit more towards the likes of the World of Battle and just providing a bit of an opportunity to take a look at the school and surrounding areas once again. So these classes will be uh, getting created very soon as well. Twisted coming through from Stolba. They've managed to at least regroup coming through from Lefoka. So it will be a much better approach for them as well. Hopefully with a lot of loot in the process and Rook all the way from Severny. So a very interesting split. It is a very interesting split indeed. Sorry, I'm just not quite over the whole clear vision thing. <laughs> um, I, I, I actually figured out what it was, right? So teamwork makes a dream work and it uh, you know, goes hand in hand with what you see in Peter Pan because if you believe, then you can fly. And that's what, exactly what we saw come through from them. But now it is going to be the world of battle looking to potentially crash, uh, crash a few plays. You can see Vankid pulling up quite hastily, but they are going to have to hold true as the Ooh. World of Battle look to rush on forward. It is going to be Hazem and Muhammad now getting dealt quite a bit of a difficult hand here, but Krono not going to be backing off. And Muhammad now still up on the roof, could still cause quite a bit of an issue here now for Clear Vision, as they have been brought to down to only a two-piece. Mohammed just narrowly escaping a couple of those shots raining on in. Krona still feeling the, the heat and no one really in a position to get that res popped on off. And unfortunately, ooh, clear vision. It looks like trying to reach the heavens has given them the momentum they needed to move on in for the finish. Now just the reses that need to be popped on in before the likes of Arthur could make an approach. Of course, we know they would love to get that res, but just looking at the space available, it's not going to be possible. Even Brute Force from Prepod now moving to get a bit more information, potentially just putting the nail in the coffin here of Clear Vision. Well, this could be a golden opportunity for Brute Force. Let's see if they can get those angles secured. We do say goodbye to Van Kid as NASA is going to be closing up from that southern side, just reaching across the way. But I like this from Brute Force, right? Prepod. Just uh, trying to bring in their own contribution to just keep clear vision, essentially pins it down, not allowing them to move further. And in doing so, Brute Force have a little bit more of breathing room, right? They can now sit and assess the whole situation and decide how they want to play this out. Oh, we'll wait and see. The World of Battle is going to be keeping a keen eye on that uh, surrounding area. Arthur in a very tough position here. As we know, for the World of Battle, moving in from that second page, they would have wanted today to be the to be everything to be an opportunity for them to climb that overall ranking as uh it's it's been tough it's been a real challenge moving into these last couple of matches throughout the day i mean going into this matchup they unfortunately are at the bottom of the overall standings and now arthur is a solo i don't know what so they can uh, pull out of the hats but hopefully it will be miraculous meanwhile we take a look at this. Actually going to be giving a little bit of love to the outskirts of uh, Rozok and Yasnaya Poliana. So, I mean, that's a little different. You know, we <laughs> sometimes come here. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. I'm just I'm so tired of the East, man. <laughs> We've seen it so much this week. <laughs> it is what it is. You just got to have to deal with it, right? Uh, soak it up, buttercup. But let's see where this is going to blow towards as Sly Machine come with their approach. Trying to push on forward. We do have RTG just up ahead of them. So our silent assassins could maybe look to find a bit of an angle. But again, not not the easiest position to play off of because essentially all they have here is hill cover. They do have a beautiful ridge along that road and a slight little bit of a compound, which is just barely within the zone. So it is going to be a somewhat difficult position to play. But to add difficulty to it now is going to be the position of NASA. So Sly Machine not having any luck. This is a very, very, very tough angle here now. Sly Machine, as we know, Murmur has been there, the stomping grounds. But moving into this matchup, it could be a very tough challenge. At least with a little bit of hard cover, NASA will have a bit of a tougher time to get a few of those hits in and get those confirmations on out. Rotation, though, has to be on the foreground here. As we know, Sly Machine just on the outskirts, having to move in so much closer to get themselves into a safe position. At least for now. It's the only the only real issues up ahead of them could be the likes of Virtual Gaming, who are taking a bit of a slow rotation. However, for Sly, I'm not too sure what pathing really is going to be the safest. It seems so open, yet so dangerous at the same time. <laughs> 
Well, you gotta risk it if you want the biscuit, right? That is what it is gonna be at the end of the day. And now, a, a very interesting change with regards to the pacing of the teams. I mean, we normally see quite a bit of that edge play being quite prevalent. But this time around, the teams, well, they try to tend away from the zone rather than instead going, going for position a little bit more towards that centered region. And Falcons being no strangers to that as they are just making their way through the edge Instead, opting for very widespread, let's be honest about it. But uh, I want to see how they are going to be looking to utilize that spread. Because uh, I don't quite know what to make of it. Oh, it's going to be an interesting position here now as we take a look at it. Virtual Gaming. Now, from this position over towards school, a nice rotation for them. Obviously, uh, it would look to, to be the case, but they are up against the likes of Quest. At least, as we know, Nick Galaxy went and they had a target on Quest's back and made sure that they were relegated down only to a duo. So, there is a potential here that they could win this one out. They could secure these compounds. And then looking at that zone rotation, it would put them in a fantastic position within this next phase. Well, let's see whether or not they can get that fantastic position secured. There's something odd going on. Uh, we'll, we'll see <laughs> how these teams are going to be looking to work their way through. But you gave me a squad, they are going to be looking to find an apartment here as they do pull on up. Quest already well situated, but also uh, prepping themselves for a bit of a disengage. You can see Kante and Fahidan, the last two hopefuls. Trying to find a little bit of a safe haven and MG now just being an absolute nuisance. Oh, fire done! Getting dropped right as they enter the door. Beautiful spray. I mean, the accuracy on that, so, so phenomenal. But let's see whether or not there's going to be any hope now for Quest, as uh, this is not exactly the kind of approach that they want to try and play off of. Nigma Galaxy is going to be creeping up on towards Virtual. Meanwhile, RTG and Twisted still going to be finding themselves exactly where we left them. No, oh, exactly indeed. It's all too scary to get moving. So, not going to blame them one bit. Twisted Minds with that easterly approach now. Moving in, finding two eliminations. I do like this kind of energy coming through from Twisted Minds. Let's wait. Let's see if there's a bit more. Falcons, as we know, have had a rise in power coming through into today's matches. They were st they unfortunately had that back-to-back uh, -back winner winner chicken dinner stolen away from them. So it looks like they are back angry with a vengeance, DK. This one has to be theirs. They want to make it happen. Well, they are definitely going to try and accomplish that goal as they do find themselves a little bit of Saif. Now it's going to be Tapok. Ooh, trying to play a little bit of a trigonometry, sending everything all over the place. But instead, it is going to be Buncher to deny any of that to come anywhere. As Vision has now been reduced down to Vault, holding just on the edge. If this is the, the, the resurgence now coming through from Falcons, this could potentially be an absolutely phenomenal play. In the meanwhile, a little bit of an emboldened twist are going to be looking to try their hand alongside the Broody Fruities, but it is going to be a very risky play for either team. Well, we still take a look at this brute force. Nice little bit of an opportunity. Ooh, putting the nail in the coffin of Twisted Minds potentially here. Dami going down almost immediately. Great, great uh, spray down there coming through, but... We still have to find those final few numbers pre-pod now. I'll just regrouping with the rest of the team. I like this angle that Brute Force have towards Twisted Minds. It does not bode very well for the likes of Twisted So Could get a flank around, potentially spotting out the likes of Neos and pre-pod. Then they might still have an answer to this aggression. Well, let's see if uh, any answers will be submitted. Now is the opportunity to try and do exactly that. But, uh, yeah, this is a very, very tough spot, right? Brute Force got to figure out how and which way they're going to look to play this. I mean, because they could turn their focus down on towards RTG and Twisted. But again, they also have the opportunity over on towards NASA and Clear Vision. So, a very, very tough decision that they have to make. But in the meanwhile, it does seem like they are going to be committing at least now initially onto the side of Twisted. Meanwhile, Clear are going to be knocking on the door. Try to get a bit of an angle on towards Spec and Spec now starting to take even more and more damage. But this is not easy by any measure as one shot gets a bit of self-nade damage. 
I don't know how they didn't go down there, but ultimately Starch now rolling on in has hurt the damage, has hurt the potential. Immediately shooting, shooting down Puku and one shot as well. Unfortunately, it was not enough and now Starch might have done enough. Clear vision. Unfortunately, after trying to reach the heavens, DK, we could be seeing them go back to the lobby here. Yeah, we definitely could. And it is going to be a tough play. But let's see how this one is going to look to pan out now. I mean, NASA, right? They want to try and do everything that they possibly can to just stay alive as long as possible in this match. Because again, right, they are defending against the advances of Rook. Rook, we haven't seen much come through on their end so far for this match. I mean, they've not had a single elimination being picked up just yet. Oh, but for Brute Force, it is going to be looking pretty, pretty tough as they will be ended with five eliminations. They were seven points behind Quest to contest for the top of the rankings. At least it doesn't seem like that is going to be the play right now. Quest also yet to step up. We've not yet seen anything from their end. It's been very, very quiet and they only have two players left. So a big, big uh, play is at hand. I mean, if NASA and Rook choose to step up, they could actually change a bit of the positioning within the top four. I mean, especially looking at that previous matchup for Quest, it uh, it wasn't quite what we would what, what they would have wanted to compared to that first matchup. And now moving into this one, they immediately got relegated down to two members. So especially for Rook Nassar, as you've mentioned, this could be a way for them to shake up that top four placements and potentially get a little bit of chaos into the PMGC. Slots and Volt getting caught on out as Rauf steps on up to lead his team in more ways than one finding a great amount of eliminations now it is enigma galaxy moving in from this western side again question in my mind whether or not they will be heading more towards that northern reach of gk or towards the side of xenon as we know for xenon it's been a very very tough couple of matches so whatever they can do to stop this approach will definitely be made oh come on Come on, let's see whether or not any approaches will indeed <laughs> get brought to an end. I mean, this is such a tough play, right? Xenon, Nigma, GK, Rook. I mean, insane. Rauf trying to survive, but Marshall denies that. As he comes through with the S12K, and up comes Lord now, looking to bring it through a bit of their own vengeance. And there's going to be an absolute showdown. A shoddy shoot-off. There's going to be Senke to get stopped. Now, Xenon... Down to carry boy, not exactly the turnaround that they were hoping for, but it is going to be the turnaround that they will have to work with. GK still going to be holding on to all four their players here, and oh, Xenon gets ended. Oh my, oh, it's not exactly where they wanted to have this go. Even for, oh my goodness, did you just see that Sly Machine just took out Quest Esports as well? Wow. Uh what is happening on this wrangle? <laughs> Slime Machine is now up with nine eliminations, as is Enigma, but they've been relegated down to one. Nassau is only up with two members still alive, and Rook is down to one. What? I a mean... top four. This is not top four. DK, and they are just not having a, sh a, a shot at the dark here. I mean, it's insane, right? Uh, I mean, even if you look at the elimination tallies there, Sly sitting on nine. Enigma also sitting on nine. But now it's going to be Sly looking to end it for Nigma, and if they succeed well they are going to be our first team in this match to hit those double digit eliminations and well they do follow through Nigma getting packed up and shipped out as they will get sent away in seventh place walking with their pride in hand but here we have it now sly prepping for even more carnage even more of an opportunity and it's going to be the opportunity now for gk to prove themselves Absolutely. This is... Wow, what a strange turn of events. But Slime, you know, if they thought that they were on a roll, unfortunately, maybe here is where it ends. GK stepping up with a full force. Already finding a beautiful nade through the window there. A little bit of a follow-up as well, just to see what else they might be able to get treated to. As you can see, not fully committing to this. Oh, but the reach in from NASA. Starch going to be finding one. And this now does pose the question here for GK. All of a sudden, the attention is split and they're not focusing on the enemy in front of them. It's, uh, it's a tough play, right? Because you're going to have to try and cover all the possible angles. And there are so many approaches 
that you have to keep your eyes on. Your head has to be on a swivel at all times. And now for GK, things are not going to be looking too great here as, uh, well, they've been dealt quite a few blows. But they're not exactly in too much deep water. They can still maybe float. Vankit, though, is not going to be able to float as they will instead get sent to the lobby. And that is the end of their run. Five eliminations in sixth place. GK trying to make up for a little bit of lost time. They still have a three-piece up. Meanwhile, Sly, they're slowly starting to disengage, heading a little bit further on towards that southern edge of zone. Yeah, very, very strange position here. Like we said, we weren't really expecting Sly Machine to step up this dramatically. I mean, I am welcoming it. The Silent Assassins are back, baby, but it is going to be a tough, tough battle. GK Esports right up ahead of them. R8 already taking a very split up approach, trying to control the northern reaches of the zone. Of course, we still have to consider what Pusher might do in the scenario, just uh, hiding under the bridge, like a, a, a little bit of a, a question mark here for everyone. We do have R8 at least dedicating one member to holding onto that position. So they have information about Pusher. They just are choosing to wait for the right time to deal with it. Meanwhile, the question really poses itself between these three teams. Sly Machine, GK, and of course NASA. Who will be able to survive in this engagement before moving to the north? I think it's going to come down to R8. Similar to what we saw happen in Murmur. I think R8 are going to look to play the upset here. Right, they've they've been they've been making moves. As you can see we got Kra situated over on towards the western side, Esketon and Ragnarok holding over on towards the east. And I mean Sly, GK and NASA, they are so focused on each other that they are not paying enough attention up towards those northern sides. So yeah, I think this is our eighth opportunity. Well let's wait and see. As we know, they first have to deal with uh Pusher coming through here from the bridge line. No surprises. I think they would have spotted them actually dropping off that bridge line. I have to wait and see. It doesn't look like Ragnarok will be focusing towards that area, but they do have a teammate there. Just uh, stationed and poised. A Sly Machine starts to try and look for any cracks in the defense here of GK Esports. They do have the numbers advantage, but the more resources they spend, the more time they waste here, the more they give NASA an opportunity to take both of these teams out. As we can see, that zone really favoring Starch and the rest. Just waiting for either Slime Machine or GK to make an approach. Well, let's see how this one is going to go for the time being. I mean, Sly, GK. You kind of get why they're being a little bit hesitant. They don't necessarily want to give up, you know, the advantage here. But, I mean, the Silent Attackers, they've been doing an absolute phenomenal bit of work. 11 eliminations, and they still have all four players up. But now it's all going to come down to positioning, positioning, positioning. As you can see, NASA trying to get a bit of a preemptive setup here. Trying to see if they can gatekeep Sly, potentially even GK. But it is such a tall order, such a tough position to play through. And I'm still convinced that R8 are going to be looking to play one heck of an upset. But now, we do see Starch getting dropped from across the way, making a little bit too much noise. Now turns to Spec, again finding themselves in a very unfortunate position. We do, however, say goodbye to Busha as Rook now also lose their players. And this is the final four teams now left to contest. And Sly, GK still essentially focused in on each other. Absolutely. Tunnel vision might be the end of them. As you can see, the reach across coming through from R8. Ragnar finding 13. And oh, Chris 7, beautiful nade to get that confirmation. GK feeling the brunt of it. Um, this is it, right? This is it. This is showtime. You can see R8. They have the numbers now. They have the positioning. Sly, NASA essentially focusing in on each other. I would not be too surprised if R8 managed to get a back-to-back -back winner, winner, chicken dinner. I mean, getting a chicken dinner right here, with the amount of eliminations they've been able to secure, they might be the new team contesting for the top four. Just based on one single performance, but it has been a very consistent performance, right? Game two, game three, things are just looking so amazing for the R8 squad. And I mean, is, this could be one heck of a comeback story. 
especially for Slime Machine. I mean, just moving into today's matches, they've only picked up six total points. And now, just off of their eliminations, they have more than doubled that. They are looking for that winner winner chicken dinner. And they are looking to put a stop into the tracks of R8, who have done so well today. Just jumping up those five slots into today's overall performances. But these shots range through Slime Machine. The damage might just be enough. Oh, come on. Steezy. Steezy is the last hope now for Sly. As you can see Ragnarok getting ready for the inevitable, trying to push on Ooh. forward, but it could all still turn. It could all still change. That Molly, though, it is absolutely on point. It is going to be forcing Steezy to the one side. It is R8 now prepping for a back-to-back winner-winner chicken dinner, and this is just about the finishing blow to seal the fate. R8! Stepping up on the very last day. Wow, what a play. I mean, back to back. They got themselves just in that first match, right? They picked up eight eliminations. Alongside the winner winner chicken dinner, or six eliminations, right? Now, stepping into this match, they take it one step further. They garner even more eliminations and yet another insane winner winner chicken dinner. We, we do have to give it up there. R8 Esports have brought in a very different approach to today's matches. I think after that, they are our top performing team of the day officially. So let's do take a look at that. The top damage dealers into that matchup. No surprise to see Sly Machine making an approach. And at one stage, we were just drawing the conclusion there and the, uh, the comparison between Sly and Enigma Galaxy as the teams that was reigning in with the most eliminations. But those final few moments proved to be all that R8 needed to just step it up once again. 10 eliminations. So... They are just getting better and better, Mac to, ba map to map, back to back wins, and it, it doesn't seem like they're going to be stopping anytime soon. Yeah, map to map, back to back, so you can say Mac to Mac. Yes, 100% yes. I agree with you. That is a very accurate statement, and <laughs> I mean, just look at this though. All right, 10 eliminations, 20 points, that's it. Beautiful play, but you have to commend the performance coming through from Slime Machine, right? As you pointed out, they, they were able to secure in this one match so many more points than they were able to bring in for the entirety of the previous matches. I mean, their place in points alone accounts for their points in game one and two. Absolutely. I just, it's an incredible showing. It, it, it's so, so good to see the likes of Slime Machine, our silent assassins, showcasing their skill sets. And this is what I was waiting for from day number one. So. It's all right that it took a couple a couple of days to get here, but at least we finally get to witness it. Whether or not, unfortunately, that's going to be enough for them to climb that overall rankings at this point in time, it is a very tough it is a very tough position to make everything happen in the last day. So, either way, they are playing for their own and they are playing for all of the bragging rights they could possibly get. <laughs> I gotta say though, all right, they're giving me a headache. A good kind of headache, and uh, on that one, I need to go look for some aspirin. So uh, while I go look for some aspirin, let's hop into a quick break. We'll be right back with match number four.
I'm sorry, but you just can't help bobbing your head to those beats. It's just one of those Every things. Every time. Right? <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's uh, it's it's a vibe. It is definitely a vibe. You know, it's also a vibe. The performance from R8 today. I mean, <laughs> like, I don't even know what to make of it, right? It is an absolute mm. insane, insane play coming through from them. But of course, another team that we've also seen step it up today has been Rook. Yeah, I mean, just drawing the comparison here, obviously R8, uh, as we know, has been ph phenomenal today. I mean, they picked up 39 points just today. And the reason we want to draw this comparison, right, is because in that last match, now officially R8 have jumped four slots up to currently being the sixth top team right now. They're sitting on 125 points, whereas Rook Esports are sitting on 144, as we know, as the fourth best team, the guardian of that PMGC slot. So if R8 are con going to continue with this insane performance, especially the fact that they can get, you know, 20, get 20 points in a single match, we could be saying goodbye to Rook as our top four team. I mean, it, it's going to be tough, right? Then it's quite, quite scary. I mean, we'll we'll probably take a look at points once we get into the match. But it is it is much, much closer than I think Ruch and NASA would want it to be. But speaking of which, of course, Sly Machine. Also, they've been playing a very interesting game. I mean, a very consistent approach as well. 25 points so far for the day. Absolutely. It's been an incredible showing. And I mean, just looking at that, we were talking a bit off camera. Uh, going into this matchup, uh, before that last in while, the wrangle, Slime Machine was sitting 12th in terms of just today's performance. They were sitting as the 12th okay-ish team, you know, only with six points up. After that last matchup, they are currently the fourth best team of today's performance, sitting up with 25. 25 total points. That is an, a, a ridiculous number just to suddenly mm. drop on down. So it, it really goes to show how well they've been doing. Nigma Galaxy as well have moved up two, uh, two slots. So they also are just hot on the heels of Rook Esports, sitting up with 126 total points. So a very close and contentious battle between, of course, Nigma Galaxy and R8 for that potential top four slots. As we know, for, for Nigma Galaxy, it's more just a, a case of sport because they already mm. have their PM. GC slot so for them it's not really like they're gunning they need to be gunning for the top four but they definitely could make it very difficult for the surrounding teams yeah i have to agree it's not like nigma are gunning for it but they just can't help themselves right it's Nobody like you know what <laughs> yeah it's just like you know what it's like oh i gotta get that hit i gotta get oh let me just do it and get the hit and you know and then that's it so yeah a, a very very satisfactory performance coming through from nigma as we know um, and as you've said already, right, they already have that slot, so they are not going to be trying to get themselves in the top four. If they happen to do it, great. If they don't, great. Either which way, they are going to be in GC, so regardless of what the outcome is, you know, it's going to be a happy day in the Nigma camp. But moving into Sanok, I think that is where things could get quite interesting, because, I mean, already today... We've seen quite a bit of a step up, right? R8 now, they've shown their capabilities when it comes to Murmur. They've shown their capabilities when it comes to Wrangle. Are they going to be looking to flex those skills moving into the map of Sanok as well? That's going to be the question. As we know, it is the last Sanok of the MEA Championship. So this is the last possible opportunity for teams like Quest, who, as we know, are trying to hold on to pole position. Brute Force, who are trying to hold on to second place to really lock it in and as well for NASA who have been on the rise compared to our top four teams they are the team closest in level right now in terms of today's performance to R8 so moving now into one of their best maps that of course being Sandhawk this could really be their opportunity to maybe kick Brute Force out of their current position it will require a very dominating match however as we know the split between uh, each other between uh, Brute Force and NASA is about 28 points as, uh, as a matter of fact so it it is doable we've got three matches mm. left so maybe we could see a bit of a change up oh i can tell you it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough play but not an impossible performance right we, as we've now been able to establish anything essentially as possible within this championship right uh, a team that has been playing a very reserved gameplay on the first three days just deciding to pop off on day number four, just blowing the performances That's out of the big. water. You just got to love how, oh. tr how tremendously insane these teams can be. I mean, that puts R8 now also on three winner-winner chicken dinner. So we've got four teams 
with three winner winner chicken dinners each. I mean, that's insane. But it's all gonna boil down to what the teams will be looking to bring through on Sanok. I mean, I was gonna look at the at you know the Sanok stats that we just um, glanced at, as well as uh, you know the other stats that we have for Sanok. But again, I I just I've just come to the realization. Like, it's good and great to have those stats, but essentially it's going to come down to what these teams want to prove once they step out into into these games. Because, I mean, sure, we can say Quest, yes, they are the strongest team when it comes to Cernok, and we'd be right in saying so because they've been able to secure 45 points. But look at what R8 has been doing, right? We know that Xenon could also decide at any point that they want to top up. Uh, they, they just want to top up their points, just pop off and go absolutely crazy. It is going to be a little bit more challenging because they need at least 28 points to get close towards that top four. So, yeah, there is going to be quite a bit of pressure still riding on the shoulders. But I think realistically, anywhere from 10th to 5th, any of those slots can still very much change just in this last match. Well, and this next one. Yes, and as you we were talking about, in terms of the stats we have available, they're all good and well. But in that last wrangle, when we were looking at our top six, top seven teams, our top four from the overall standings weren't in the conversation at all. I mean, we had Quest relegated down to two members. We had Brute Force getting taken out. We had Rook down to only one member hiding under a bridge, hoping for the best. And uh, Nassau just wasn't there either. So there, there really is no telling what we're going to be seeing jumping into a match like Sandhawk, specifically due to the third parties, due to the, the, the close encounters and the potential for so much uh, of a healthier elimination spread. We could be seeing some teams maybe even dominating and really just solidifying this to their slots on the overall standings that however that pressure is going to be on r8 it is going to be on the team sitting anyway i would say also from mm. probably fifth down to to seventh who could potentially jump up and grab a couple of slots but whether or not they'll grab pmgc slots is going to be it's going to be decided on the start of sandlock is what i'm going to say yeah i i would say that i i would uh, tend to agree with that statement but i mean so if we follow the trend that we had going from, you know, going through game three into whatever happened out on the battlefield, right? R8, they were situated all the way back in, uh, in, in 10th place leading into game number three. And now there's been a drastic change with their positioning. And we will, of course, get a look at that once we see exactly what the flight path is. We can see it there. R8. They've now climbed four slots all the way up into sixth position. They are one point behind Nigma Galaxy. My, my goodness. It is just... It is so close and contentious. It gives everyone a bit of a shake in their boots because now all of a sudden you start to, to ask the question, well, what's going to happen? How, how are these matches going to look? We only have three more opportunities, each on a different map, entirely that has its own stats its own uh, expectations that it will be very difficult for anyone to try and predict but hey if you think you are if you're watching and you're in the viewers uh in the chat just letting us know you know what you you've been seeing so far if you think you can try and predict who is going to be taking the top four pmgc slots let us know in chat who your favorite teams are and who you think pretty much have this in the bag yeah, I mean, give your give your craziest uh, prediction because who knows, you might even be right. So, yeah, excited to see those uh, those uh, predictions come through in the chat. In the meanwhile, we are going to be looking at a little bit of a heat being applied there to the side of Clear Vision as they will be starting the match off with uh, well, potentially one less player, but it's all going to come down to whether or not those follow throughs will find their way in. Same thing happening here with Quest. As you can see, Easy already getting dealt with. So now it all turns to al Haji, Fahidan, and Kante to show us what they can bring. But, I mean, is so far, we've been seeing a, a very consistent play coming through between day one and three, right? Day one, two, three, the consistency building, 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 building. Now mm. come day four, it's a completely different story. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, ooh, it is going to be a very fun time to try and even figure out how, impos how, how impossible this has been for these teams and yet how they are making it just look so easy. Like, yeah, let's just, let's just drop 20 points in a single match. We can, yeah, we can pick up 13 eliminations uh, in the MEA champs. Uh, why not? You know, what's, uh, what's stopping us <laughs> breaking records left, right, and center? So, 
incredible to see now how this might shake up on the overall standings, but it's, it's it really is has to start here. We were talking a little bit off camera. I, it feels like we can only really start to get a safe bet at the end of Miramar, which is, I mean, one map left, you know, like, uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a cheating, a cheating statement to be made, but it really has just get, gotten to that level, which is fantastic to see. I mean, we've been asking for this since the first MEA championship that we ever witnessed, you know, where we had just one team rolling on through every single player, left, right and center, day in, day out. Now... There is no telling who's going to be that dominating team. And then even if we have a dominating team, they will be joined by three others. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, well, so uh, if we wait till the end of Miramar, that is obviously then going to be the end of the day. Um, but I think a little bit sooner we could be able to see a little bit of something. Oh, sorry, I just got to interrupt myself. The Blubber Duck. Finally, the best Yay. boat in the game. Yes, the Blubber Duck. So if you don't know why I call it the Blubber Duck, just look at it. It's a Blubber Duck. It looks amazing. Uh, anyway, back to what I was talking about. I completely forgot, but it's fine because let's just enjoy this scene. It is looking so nice. Oh, thank you for that one, Brute Force. Um, but yes, I, th there's, there's so much that could be, that could still erupt, right? And it's all going to come down to at least match number five. I think by the end of match number five on Irangel, they will have a pretty good indication as who could have a, a very high probability of being secured within the top four. I don't mm. think we are going to be able to make that uh, make that decision anytime before that. I mean, this match will definitely help in establishing that, but I don't think we have any clue just yet. No, 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 we don't. Uh, we were talking a little bit uh, off camera as well. We've seen some wild predictions in chat. Some viewers just, I don't know how you do it, but you, you have a tendency just to, to guess exactly right what uh, tends to happen. Whereas we sit here, and even when we try, with all of the statistics at our hands, these teams go and uh, completely just, well, they make us throw our stats books out of the window because they mean nothing at the end of the day. It's uh, it's very unfair. We try our hardest, DK. We try our hardest, yet we just can't. We can't do it here. At this level, these teams, they, they know how to surprise us day in, day out, and <laughs> this MEA championship has been no exception. But hey, looking at the zone towards that northwestern side, uh, any potential locations that you're going to be keeping an eye out, uh, especially maybe a, a potential zone shift that you would really like to see? Uh, nothing particular with the zone. I am, however, going to be looking towards the Falcons to see what their read on the zone will be because we currently have them situated towards that, uh, that western bridge right on the outskirts of Ruins. But there's not a lot of contention currently held within that region we do see sly xenon and of course uh, virtual gaming squad positioned up into trifecta but the falcons just a slight smidge a little bit more towards that western side and once the falcons start to push forward on towards the northwestern island they are going to find themselves at the mercy of r8 oh this is like we were alluding to r8 in position when they can overthrow the top four Maybe just narrowly getting themselves into a PMGC slot. So it could happen. If we give R8 the perfect win conditions, they might to just take this day out from under all of the teams. But Sly Machine on the rise in that previous matchup, now potentially having to face off against the likes of Xenon, taking a nice split approach. We can see Marshall now as the scouting party trying to be a flank. However, their position has been caught. Where the Sly Machine will utilize that information and make the first move is going to be up to them. I tend to think they are just going to wait, lying in wait for that opportunity. Great open, a double. Now, as we see, Ooh. Xenon immediately reduced down to two. I mean, this is a, a very, very unfortunate play here for the side of Xenon. It's almost like the top four is just being dangled in front of their noses on a stick. And the Sly Machine is just like, ha, you like that? How about no? Right, we are going to be looking to play the upset. And now it is all down to Lazy Lion as attacker. And Steezy starts to push on forward. Ooh, but that hit could potentially be stolen as we still have Chica on the opposite end. And they can hear all the noise being made. But so far, Lazy Lion not going to be looking to back down just yet. They are going to be looking to mount as much of an aggression here as they can. And a potential save coming through from Virtual Gaming Squad. I can't even even believe what I'm watching anymore. But here we go. A slime machine, just a big step up from them. Now, unfortunately, can they do it for a second run in a row? No time to breathe, no time to relax. Virtual gaming up on the rise. 
And let's take a look at that. That zone rotation is going to once again provide us a few more potential competitors. GK reaching in, finding one at least for the time being, taking the, the decision away here from virtual gaming and a lot of attention. Lazy Lion out in the open. Oh, Hope nearly getting that confirmation out immediately. Well, I, I don't think that... Uh... That Lazy Lion has been in a situation similar to this many, many times before. But it is what it is. The inevitable has happened. Xenon are out of here. And fortunately, unfortunately rather, I mean, not having a single point to show for it. As they just got battered and bruised. And uh, that was it. Now, Virtual Gaming Squad, they're going to be sitting here with two eliminations already secured. We got Twisted also sitting on two. Sly with four. But this is what we have now cooking up in Trifecta. I mean, GK, this is a golden opportunity for them to also now try and get a bit of a push in on the Virtual Gaming Squad. Well, let's see what happens here. Hulk obviously down. Uh, return for ooh, Virtual Gaming and all oh, the nades are just so good. Ragnar finding an opportunity over towards Mostar, which, as we know, has been a clutch player for Virtual Gaming in the past. But they don't have the luxury of just full, full on rushing the likes of Virtual Gaming. Unfortunately, they're... Attention will be split here between Twisted Minds and, of course, we still have to consider Slime Machine in the area still a threat. Well, it's been a minute since we've seen all this fighting up in Trifecta. So let's see who's going to be the one to follow through. Santa with a beautiful nade. This could be exactly what they need to get the jump in onto Amjid. Amjid trying to preemptively lay down a few of the mollies. But this now opens up the opportunity onto Fares and Hulk. As Santa could definitely look to play every possible position. But it's going to be Amjid now forced outside. The hits are there. It is S12K to the face. One down, a few more to go. This could be a beautiful resurgence coming through from GK. Definitely. I mean, really bringing in a lot more aggression, which is what we love to see. Massive step up for them. Looking for as many points as they possibly can to, to, to really climb those overall standings. Ragnar now up, trying to get a bit of a better angle into the situation. Slime Machine, in the meantime, have gone silent, as they love to do. Leave it up to Virtual Gaming and GK to take one another out, and then they can come through for the cleanup. But this is going to be all down to timing. Very difficult situation here as the split comes through. A couple of, a couple of bullets, no connections just yet. GK. Ultimately, for them, they would love to be the ones to make this aggressive push. They have all four of their members up, so they have the advantage. But are they going to be able to utilize that advantage? That is going to be the big, big question here. I mean, GK, they've been trying a few different approaches. Oh, you got to watch out. You don't run in front of a door with something in your hand, but it is Ooh. going to be a quick change over there for Hope as they do get the spray. That is Fares out of here. Virtual Gaming Squad getting sent back with two Elams. Now Sly Machine having a little bit of reality set in. They're like, you know what? Maybe, maybe, just maybe, we need to try and get into a different position here. And now also Twisted, they got to be looking to step up to the plate as well. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. The World of Battle. I mean, just third party after third party after third party. What is typical? What is more typical of Sanok? Just try and name a better duo than Sanok and third parties. I can tell you now, you won't find one. As you take a look at this GK, a little bit of a return as they would love to get themselves back on up to all three members standing. And R8, ooh, finding brute force. Now, this is a story building here, DK. If Once again, the more we get of the top four teams being eliminated early, the more there is a chance for everyone else, everyone we've highlighted before, like R8, like, like of course, the likes of Enigma Galaxy, to actually steal away a slot. Well, let's see if they can, uh, well, pull that steal off. I mean... It's going to be a very, very tall order. Not the easiest thing to accomplish here. Not the easiest play to make. So uh, let's see whether or not that is going to range through. In the meanwhile, R8 focusing their efforts into the side here of the Broody Fruities as Brute Force now start to climb the hill. And I think this position here alongside NASA could maybe be a little bit more of a favorable play, but they're still going to have to watch their back, right? Because NASA, the moment that they find the angle, find the opportunity... It is going to be absolute go time. Yep. We'll wait and see. All eyes on our top four teams right now as it's up to them to defend their titles, up to them to defend their positions. 
from the incredible efforts that we've seen so far from Nigma, from R8, even from Virtual Gaming and Road to Glory, there is definitely something brewing in the air and it is spelling some disaster, potentially. Brute Force now up only with two members, cautiously going up these uh, ridge lines, trying to find a safe haven. Although we know Sandhawk. Chaos just around the corner and all of these teams will be finding themselves on the outskirts waiting for some safety, waiting for an opportunity to get to the eye of the storm. Falcons White already spotting out the likes of Nygma Galaxy, making a bit of a rolling rotation in the form of Lord and Freak, but they're keeping to the coastline. Nice drift, nice drift. They're keeping themselves here. And now they push on out. They've actually managed to isolate one member here from Falcons White, so all of a sudden this could be a disastrous play. It could be, but as we know, Falcons, one of those teams that uh, aren't going to be feeling too pressured if they've been reduced down to a three-piece. But of course, it is going to be Nigma now looking to contest, so it could swing either which way. We could also even see R8 reaching across the way, coming through with a little bit of a sneaky contribution. But there we have it, Lord gets the opener in on towards Axa. Now it is down towards Teague and Puncher to see if they can hold up at least on the front line. We got the T6, not quite sure exactly where T6 is. Oh, there we go, just on the back <laughs> end there. But now comes the play. These numbers, these colors all blending together up in the luscious jungle that we are looking at. But Raouf, ooh, sneaky ooh. play through the window. And so far, so good. But will they be able to follow through and get the plays? Like we said, this is just the start for Nygma Galaxy. They are in such a close contention to get themselves into that top four slot. As you mentioned, they don't need the PMGC slot, but they would definitely love to get an extra share of the prize pool and make it also more the difficult opportunity here for the surrounding teams. Now going up against Falcons, a 2v1 as Punch King is the last member standing, that blue zone just idly coming through and apply that extra bit of damage and that extra bit of pressure. They step on out, the nade goes through, Punch King has to back on off, they can't get knocked. Oh, Rauf though can. You can see that uh, HP bar taking a very quick dip. Now this could be the one to lend a bit of a helping hand. And that is exactly what they needed as Lord secures the play. Nigma with a very successful push onto the side of Falcons. They did not lose a single player. Now of course, while well, they can continue with the momentum, turn their focus onto the side of the world of battle. But in the meanwhile, it is going to be Quest now just alleviating the side of Twisted Minds. We love to see it. All action. Everywhere you turn, there is another team looking to surprise us. Quest Esports this time around, at least, uh, well, nothing's really changed. They're still just down to two members, and it's both, once again, uh, Al Hajj and uh, Easy, I believe, that uh, took a knock there. So, not quite sure how that happened, but we can look and see how they can turn this one into a winning formula. Very difficult rotation, a lot of water in this next phase, so it is going to cut down the potential placements to only a mere oh, handful. Oh, look at this freak now jumping in, trying to get into the bridge line. Just narrowly escaping an opportunity to do something more, but Vision with the reach across will at least make sure that, well, Rove hmm. gets taken out by the World of Battle. It's, yeah, no, no opportunity here for Nygma Galaxy. Well, the team's now starting to drop like flies in pretty close succession here. But as you can see, the Brute Force squad, they've now looked to get themselves established up in towards that center zone positioning. Again, not one of the most set up, one of the most favorable setups you could look to play. As, uh, well, there are still quite a few teams that could play an easy angle down onto them. It's, well, of course, I'm going to be looking at NASA to do that. R8. Squeezing their way on through now, trying their efforts down onto Krona and the rest of the world of battle. But the zone does give a bit of a shift now, and this is where Brute Force are going to be feeding a lot of the heat, specifically coming through from GK Sly, the world of battle, as well as Rook Esports. It's going to be a very interesting rotation. I, I do like the position that we're going to see from uh, NASA, especially as RTG coming through from that coastal line. They could spell some disaster for the likes of Vision and Quest, but again. This is going to be heavily dependent on how Rook is going to take a rotation in. As we know, just behind that sideline there from RTG, they could make this incredibly difficult. Same could be said for GK, same could be said there for Sly Machine. And of course, we cannot leave the World of Battle out of the conversation. R8, once again, pushing up to the northern side. They would love to take this position away from NASA. And it would be a very interesting split because NASA only have three members up. 
Oh, let's see if they can make magic happen with only three. R8, definitely going to be looking to replicate those efforts from game two and three. This could be a beautiful opportunity, but you got to watch out for that nade from Spec. In the meanwhile, it's going to be J7 to get picked up. One down, two more to go. R8. Ooh, beautiful approach. They do find a little bit of damage up into the side of the spec. So now it is a, a 2v4, at least in favor now of R8. But again, right, they might have to play it a little bit more cautiously. Because as we can see, the rest of the lobby is over on towards that eastern side. And they have nearly a good line of sight up this hill. Yeah, all right. We've seen this now in the previous matchup as well as they were trying to take on the likes of Falcons. They weren't nearly this aggressive, however. So now you can see the confidence reigning in for R8 as they continually push on in to NASA, continually push them out of position as they try and take a hold of this northern reach or this northwestern uh, reach of the zone before focusing on the rest of the uh, surrounding teams. NASA, of course, relegated down now to only two members still up and Adam. Their focus still split here between the surrounding teams rotating on in. Ida, beautiful spray down over towards Muhammad. The World Up battle starting to drop a few members, just trying to get themselves into safety. Oof. Well, let's see how this play is going to unravel, right? Free pod, not the best spot to find yourself in. The World of Battle looking to play a very, very tough position now as they still need to get themselves situated, but of course being forced to the edge, trying to get their reses secured. And with Corona now back on their feet, Arthur can start focusing back onto R8. And there's definitely that opportunity here, but R8 just looking at this elevation, they've got the numbers, they've got the guns, they've got the resources, they've got pretty much everything just going for them. The only thing that is still a bit of a question mark is how that zone will shift on out. As you can see, both R8 and Nassar have unfortunately been out ousted from the zone, rotating a little bit, centering up towards Vision and, of course, uh, Quest Esports. So they will have to get down. Oh, they will have to apparently uh, drift down uh, the hilltop uh, now with a bit of a reverse <laughs> skill as well. Uh, and yeah, this driving is uh, not helping the situation, but somehow at least Ida managed to get down that hilltop. Oh. Ragnarok will be unfortunately staying behind, and this is not the rotation R8 were looking for. Oh, but it's the rotation that they have, and with that now the vehicles are going to be popped on through. Prepot sneaking in a very quickie trade, and it is now reliant on Ida to see if they can potentially pull through. Also in the meanwhile, RTG taking their approach on towards Rook, also who's now fighting with GK, having a little bit of a pool party out on the edge there. But again, no one having any clear indication of how this is going to unfold in the world of battle now, trying to take a piece of action all over the place. Uh, GK East was doing well with their nine eliminations. Even the world of battle up with five. It's been a very sort of showing here for the teams as we would love to see on Sandhawk. A bit of opportunity for teams to get some eliminations. Not the likes of RTG though, going out in ninth with only one to their name. But Fahi Dunn from Quest steps on in. Starting to get into the conversation, it is Quest Esports. Oh, look at this, GK isolating the last member of Rook Esports to try and ensure they have no shot of getting any more points here into the Sanok match. Well, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Right down to the final six. Freepart not letting it go just yet. Trying quite relentlessly to see if they can maybe do something with Ida. But Ida... Still having to get themselves situated. And I think a big saving grace here for Prepod is this warehouse that they find themselves in. Allowing them beautiful uh, maneuverability, good angles to try and utilize. But again, you're going to have to be very, very watchful. Oh, as Ooh. Ida secures the finishing blow. That is Brute Force out in sixth place. Now it is going to be Vision and NASA looking to pick up the pace as they do find their oh. sights targeted down onto each other. But NASA is super low on these HP bars. Brute Force, R8, so we are just, and even Quest, all having such a tough time into the Sanok matchup. Once again, we, we start to talk about the, the storyline building here for the top four, not having the most dominating matches. Whether or not the few points that they are able to accrue are going to be enough for them to keep their positioning is yet to be seen. Quest, oh, Kante just trying their absolute best to stay in the conversation. Only three eliminations up. That Molly is the final hit. Now it's all down to the last few stretches. Vision look like they could maybe still bag it up as it's now 
Santa left to the side of GK. But Vision know that they have control. They know that they have the hardcover they need. But do they have the angles to ensure their victory? Because, I mean, it's all going to come down to what Starch and Santa will be bringing through. As you can see, Starch already coming through with a beautiful spray. Now, Santa could help alleviate a little bit of that pressure as they are going to be hoping to make something happen here. But the blue zone is going to force their hand Starch in a very, very similar position. Vision, all they need to do is just wait. Just sit back, relax, and then pick up Starch. To secure themselves the winner with a chicken dinner, but Starch ain't gonna go down without a fight. As you can see Discrim now getting traded, and a slight divide and conquer approach coming through. NASA could still steal the show, but the Pok hanging back, waiting to see if the blue is gonna be giving them a bit of a save here. Oh, this is the final push. Starch now feeling all the pressure riding on their shoulders. This could be exactly what NASA needs to secure their positioning within these standings. But are they going to be able to follow through a quick cheeky nade getting let loose? But so far, Starch not having any luck. Starch, if they could pull this one off, this Ooh. would be the consistency we have never seen before. This would be the steal of a oh. lifetime and a jump comes through as the pop goes to the floor. Somehow, some way, they managed to make it happen. NASA has been the most consistent team from our top four thus so far and now <laughs> i can't even believe that it's still that would have been a chicken dinner it's such a beautiful 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 clutch i mean if you'd asked me beforehand between these two who's gonna take it definitely i would have been like convinced that it was gonna be the side of vision they had the numbers they had the hard cover they had everything leaning in their favor but starch i mean they just decided you know what Let's risk it. Let's see if we can get our hands on that winner winner chicken dinner. And they did an absolutely amazing job. Absolutely. We can take a look at that match report. My goodness gracious, so much to break down into this final few moments. Uh, again, a massive shout out to GK Esports for stepping up. A very good showing from them. It, it does seem that they just get that energy towards the second half of the day, similar to what we saw from Twisted Minds. And uh, it nearly did go a very different way. Also, Slime Machine starting off with that altercation against the likes of Xenon and then obviously Virtual Gaming jumping in. But it was just a strange, strange situation. For R8 specifically, that one rotation up until that point, it was looking like it was once again going to be an R8 match. And then one single travel down the hilltop meant absolute disaster for the entire team. And they were relegated down to one. And in a blink of an eye, we said goodbye to them and their chances of getting another potential win. Well, as we said, right, it is going to boil down to the very last match of the day to see exactly who are going to be our top performing teams, right? Those teams granted the opportunity to get themselves the BMGC slots. But looking at the damage here, you can see GK, they've been doing a tremendous amount of work coming through with 12 eliminations. And I mean, we have to remember eight of those eliminations were from Satan just bringing in a wild, wild performance. It's so incredible, incredible work. Uh, 2.2 thousand damage in one single Sandhawk matchup. I, it's not really too much of a surprise because it was such a violent Sandhawk, but my goodness gracious, what a, a beautiful, beautiful showing. And again, coming through in third place with 12 eliminations, awarding them those 17 points. Nassar, as we mentioned, the most consistent team that we've seen so far in the previous mm -hmm. matches, are consistently getting themselves into a top placement, has proven to, to showcase that they might be able to take Brute Force down for the count, especially considering Brute Force's uh, performance in this previous matchup. Yeah, I mean, it's been essentially the consistency of the day has, has boiled down to R8 and NASA, right? Those are the yeah. two teams that have been performing um, like absolute legends. As we know, R8, yes, they've been able to convert a few winner winner chicken dinners out of it. NASA, they've not yet had that luxury, but they are holding within the top two, top three for the day so far. I mean, Falcon's also sitting there, but a big helping hand has come through from that winner winner chicken dinner contribution that they've been able to find. I mean, even looking at how things have gone through this match itself, again, it does prove to be somewhat challenging because, again, you're not necessarily guaranteed any potential positions. You're going to have to just grind your butt off to get there. I mean, after this last matchup, basically, e even though we've had a back-to-back -back win from R8, the only point separating uh, Nassau and R8 in terms of what they've been able to achieve today is three points. 
you wouldn't think so compared to the matches we've been watching. And Nassau have just been so quietly and dil uh, diligently going through every single map, picking up as many points as they can and staying consistent with it, which is always what we are looking for in a team that is gunning for the top. And with all of what they've done now, the question poses itself, will they be able to take a slot away from Brute Force? Well, we'll find out very, very soon. In the meanwhile, we are going to be hopping into a quick break. So be sure to stay tuned and we'll see you guys back in a short few moments. It's time to upgrade your PUBG Mobile outfits. Join free daily cups for solo, duo or squads. Win face it points. Exchange for PUBG Mobile UC. To customize your account, join face it today and earn rewards. Try for free at faceit.com forward slash PUBG Mobile. What's up guys, welcome back. We're getting ready to move into our next match. Of course, well, it is going to be our final Erangel that is about to make its way on through. It has now all boiled down to these next two matches to see who will be allowed into PMGC. And I can tell you the competition is hella, hella close. There's not a lot separating our teams. And of course, well, let's take a look at a few stats before we get into the match. Absolutely. So, I mean, uh, jumping into that last matchup, we started talking about the consistency that's coming through from NASA as they have just been <laughs> silently dominating. It's the best way that we can explain it. it, it we, we keep watching matches, we keep praising teams like Falcons and R8 and even Sly Machine, but it has been NASA that has been putting in the work. You can see just in terms of the average eliminations this team has been able to bring in, the damage that they've been dealing out as well. It has been so incredibly consistent and in bringing so a, a very, very good showing for NASA. Only three points, as you mentioned, behind R8 in terms of their today's overall performance. And as we know, they current they you know jumped in today sitting in third place just behind brute force who has not had the easiest day so if there is a potential i i would say maybe nasa could potentially still steal it away from brute force if they can lock it down in these next two matches 
It is gonna it is gonna require at least 18 points. Of course, let's take a look at the overall rankings to see exactly what the situation is here. As we know, NASA trailing by 18 points behind that of uh well brute force so there is a bit of an opportunity but as we can also then see r8 they've now moved up ahead of nigma solid solidifying their position up in towards that fifth place again 10 points away from rook it is all going to come down to the way it is all going to come down to these last two matches to decide who the top four will be and when we talk about crowning our MEA championship, just look how close it is between Quest Esports and Brute Force. That comparison we were drawing to this morning, they still are bringing through an incredible showing. I, again, 189 to 183. It is a map, it is a, a one split decision, as what we saw with R8, that could make the difference between saying Quest Esports is the championship in the full split, or maybe it could be Brute Force still. So a lot of work still to be done and moving into this next matchup, we know that uh, we have a few teams that tend to do much better than others. Whether or not that statistic will reign true on our last Erangel of the day is going to be the question. Yeah, it is going to be a pretty, pretty tough one. As you can see, Brute Force still going to be holding on to a, a statistical dominance here. So it, it's all going to come down to how they play these last few games or at least, well, just this last match. To see if they can just lock it in but i mean brute force nasa r8 both teams or all three of these teams sitting with two winner winner chicken dinners each on the map of erangel that is insane i mean Ooh. the top three with two chickens a piece the top three with regards to stats yeah in terms of erangel uh, performances and it's it's just it's a fun comparison because we're talking about brute force as uh, one of the teams that does the best on a wrangle uh, as we know they're fighting to potentially get themselves to the championship we're talking then about the other two teams being nasa and r8 nasa fighting potentially to take the second place finish r8 potentially trying to take a pmgc slot away from our top four now that team obviously being in danger would be rook esports who currently are sitting above with 146 points just 10 away is R8 and we we have literally seen R8 get just 10 in eliminations alone in a single matchup so when we talk about possibilities this is a very real scenario and reality that uh, unfortunately Rook Esports are gonna have to face they're gonna have to make you know their peace with it so if Rook feel that they have an appropriate response to that they're gonna have to bring it in in these two following games because if they slide if they slip just the slightest it's done because 10 points that's not a tough tally to to accomplish i mean and as we've seen uh, r8 they they've got a little bit of a you know magic sauce that they've been able to just just perform absolutely phenomenally with but another interesting thing that i've also seen or that i've noticed is that all five of our top teams sit with three chickens apiece right it seems like there is one heck of a trend starting to develop there. And I'm curious to see, you know, how that is going to look to play out. Because we do have a bit of a gap now being created here. We've got, what, 26 points between 4th uh, place and 7th place. So for Virtual Gaming Squad, if they are going to be looking to, you know, potentially contest for 4th, they're going to have to play an absolute beast mode game. But you could extend that all the way down to Xenon still. Xenon still in a potential position to try and contest for the top four but they're gonna have to play beautifully because yes sure they are holding on to a 30 point gap between themselves and fourth it's not gonna be easy but whoever is able to play that consistent game in both the two remaining matches that could be the ticket for them to move up if they are not yet secured within the top four if Xenon do manage to, to have something happen here, it would be an incredible showing for them. And talk about a, a Dark Horse story, because as in terms of today's performances, they are currently sitting as the 15th uh, team in terms of performance. They only have accrued around nine points in today's matches. And we're moving into two of our last matches, two maps in which they, as you mentioned, would have to pick up at least 30 plus points if they want to get themselves back into the standings where we saw them at the beginning of yesterday that is a very tall order to put down it, it's not impossible like we said we yeah. have seen we have seen crazier comebacks before this this whole comeback story of r8 is something none of us uh, none of us i repeat that none of us were talking about until r8 just diligently said no we're gonna do this you, you just have to deal with it and accept the, yeah. the reality so 
I would love to see Zenom make it happen. It is possible, as you said. I mean, even GK Esports uh, with a vision as well, they're sitting about 133 points away from getting to that position. So any of these teams can make it happen is what we want to see. Anyone in that top 12 could still steal a slot. They could, but it's uh, going to become increasingly more and more challenging. I mean, even just, you know, uh, a team like R8, mm. 10 points, not that much, but you again have no guarantee of, you know, the option to lock and secure those those points. Based on the pacing that they've been bringing so far today, I mean, I believe it's, it's going to be a possibility. But back onto the Zenon, to Zenon topic, right? Um, we were saying a very similar thing about R8. Right, they were sitting with not a lot of points that they've been able to secure based on that first match. And then, right, they hit the NOS button. They said, you know what, thank you so much for coming. Whoop, we'll just yeah. do it and we'll just see where we're going to end up. So they have the capability, right? Anyone within the to within that, you know, first to 10th place has the capability to change up the top four easily. But as we said, it is going to take a lot of hard work and determination to accomplish. Yes, I mean, 146 points, that is the cutoff here at the moment in time to get into the top four placements. So teams who are sitting 30 plus points away from it, uh, they, do, they do have to understand that it's possible. I mean, like you mentioned, R8, not a team we were expecting, picked up 50 points so far for the day. NASA has been consistent picking up 47 points so far in the day, and we've only had four matches. So that you can do the quick math. On average, there is still mm. definitely a possibility moving into these last two matches that mm. something something crazy could occur. But it definitely would throw both you and I off of our seats onto the grounds. So we would eat all of our words and we would be very happy with the outcome. Yeah, I'm also pretty curious as to, uh, I think you've touched on this already, Quest and Brute Force, who's mm. going to be the one looking to, to settle the pole position. I mean, you just can't fault to the, the approach coming through from Quest. They have the most placement points, they've got the most eliminations, but Brute Force is very close second to that. So there's not a lot to currently separating them. So, yeah, I wanted to, want to see whether or not there's going to be any contention for that pole position. As we know, it's also a difference of uh, quite a bit of money, right? Uh, I believe it's worth like $4,000, $5,000 difference between first and second place. So there's quite a bit to play for, but Let's take a look at the comparison here between the Brute Force from yesterday and the Brute Force from today. As we know, Quest has been on the rise, but they've had their own challenges. So going up against the likes of Brute Force, we can see for them, it's also been a bit of a, a different story. They've definitely stepped on up to ensure that they will hopefully pick up as many points as they possibly can. But is it going to be enough is going to be mm. the question. Well, we're going to find out pretty, pretty soon. Of course, now we are going to be heading straight on down. And it does seem like this time around, we are going to be starting with a, uh, uh, an approach a little bit further up north as opposed to those uh, previous southern approaches that we've been taking. But again, the zone can still take us in any which direction. So I guess to see exactly where we are going to be popping off. But, you know, a big majority of the teams here are going to be pretty relieved with this flight path. Hey, already up towards that northern side, ending over towards Lepovka. So, a bit of a different reach across. We even see Twisted Minds in earlier rotation already over towards Zaki. So, some few changes that we would be expecting. Brute Force, on the other hand, naturally easy access over towards Yosna Poliana. So, likely won't be seeing changes there. Virtual Gaming, uh, quick shout out to them. Uh, Rook Esports, of course, we know love to, to really sit down in Saverni. And they will this time be joined by the likes of Virtual. So, as we keep talking about this danger that Rook are facing this reality, this could either be the best opportunity or the worst possible chance they have of holding on to their current position because now they immediately get a hot drop on the, on the, the second last map. Talk about bad luck. Well, let's see. Maybe the bad luck is not going to be all too bad. Oh, never mind. Uh, we are going to be looking at a southern zone. And this is going to be a pretty brutal final wrangle to play. The teams, they need to be preemptive here because, uh, as you can see, there is going to be a lot of traveling that needs to be done. So I'm curious as to how this will play out, right? Are we going to be having a few teams immediately committing to the Southern Island and, and the rest of the lobby maybe just hanging back? Or could we see a, a slow but maybe steady bit of a, you know, uh, migration of teams Approaching that zone. Well, 
Well, either which way, we'll find out pretty soon. As it Absolutely. does here. There we go. All right. Mm. You you forgot the mute button. <laughs> yeah, I I I started off the conversation and then I realized I was talking to myself. Um, oh. So, mm. moving on, as I wanted to say, <laughs> as we keep posing these questions, keep uh you know posing. Well, what about this? What about that? What about this? We start to get into a conundrum of uh we absolutely don't know. Firstly, what's going to happen? Nor do we see a reality where anything is set in stone at this moment in time. And we were, we're into our second last matchup. We have four teams who have been absolutely dominating. The safest, I would say, we could potentially, you know, ha hazard a guess at is that Quest Esports or Brute Force will likely be in the top two. Even that reality just means that all that NASA have to do to completely make me eat my words is have a match where they get more than 19 points and then ensure that the next matchup they just stay consistent. Mm. And with Brute Force and Quest Esports having a tough last few matches, that still makes it a uh, reality. So for Rook right now, the focus I just want them to have is on where they're currently placed. What is the goal? The goal being to get themselves into PFGC. That goal right now is being threatened by the likes of Virtual Gaming and they should not and cannot allow that to happen so a great opening over towards amjeet now just hold on keep this momentum going yeah because this is where where Ruch can't let anything get to them right they're gonna have to just maintain all the focus that they can that they can have here but again you gotta you gotta expect that virtual gaming squad are gonna be looking to play a little bit of an upset right because they can almost smell that top four they are just 26 points away from knocking on the door here of Ruch, and I mean, knocking they definitely are. As you can see, virtual. This is this is an intentional drop, right? Not like something that they they yeah yeah you know maybe let's try it out. No, this was intentional. So, if virtual gaming wants to survive this, they're gonna have to really step it up and be you know quite a bit of a trouble for the side of Ruch. Otherwise, Ruch, I think they're gonna deal with them. Let's see how this one could potentially pan out. Once again, <laughs> it's like the, what is it, the third, fourth match in a row. First member from, uh, unfortunately, Quest Esports to get knocked is easy. And there's the confirmation almost immediately. They have just been hit by a constant reality. Again, I don't know if someone put a target on the likes of Quest Esports, but whoever it is, they they are reaping in the benefits here. al Haji down with HP as well. They have had a very tough day compared to the dominating performance we saw from them just yesterday, it has hampered the progress that we've been seeing from the likes of Quest Esports. Whether or not it will be the end or be a repeat is going to be up to the likes of R8. So I don't know how these teams keep finding each other, but they're just building onto our story. I mean, great minds think alike, right? And I think that is essentially <laughs> the story that they're trying to build on and maybe take a, you know, a few steps further. But speaking about taking things, uh, things a few steps further, we do see GK now having a few visitors pull up to them as Nigma does seem to try and make a bit of a, a bit of a presence here. It is going to be Coops now just trying to strafe all around the way. Oh, beautiful nade onto Hope though. And so far, Lord, absolute pinpoint accurate with those utilities yet again. So if GK don't watch it, Nigma are really going to wipe the floor with them right here. Absolutely. Nigma Galaxy. Nice little bit of a rotation, an opportunity here to climb those standings. Once again, GK, as we know, had a beautiful showing in that last matchup. They were so aggressive and they were rewarded for it in those eliminations. Just falling short of that winner winner chicken dinner. Now, however, it is all on the shoulders of Gaith and Ragnar to make sure that their last wrangle is worth something a bit more. Coops, though, on the hunt. Neymar Galaxy, they are tired of getting crossfire. They are tired of getting taken out. They want these eliminations. But unfortunately, they don't have much of a say in that as we do have Ragnar getting dropped as well. Gaith, the Lone Star Survivor, trying to make their way out of here. I mean, no surprise to see Nigma do this because as we know, and you've said it as well, right? Nigma, they're going to try and apply themselves to get much, much closer towards that top four. I mean, they're only six points behind R8, so it makes sense that Nigma are going to be getting a lot more aggressive in this match. Well, they have to. They absolutely have to. And I mean, moving into today's matches so far, ooh, for Nigma, Lord has definitely been stepping up. I mean, they picked up eight eliminations so far. They've been dealing the damage. 
and the whole of Nigma could definitely stand up to that category. Now we can see their vision here. Because they would love this final hit onto the world of battle. Shots raining true. Oh, Zig and Zag somehow, some way, I don't know how, but Krona still just barely alive, finding a bit of safe haven, finding a little bit of cover. When we take a look at this botation from Falcons, the military base island, once again, a focus here for the last match of a wrangle in this MEA championship. I feel like it's quite fitting. Yeah, I think it is quite fitting indeed. And now, speaking of fitting, everyone is going to try and get themselves situated towards that southern island. But again, we don't have any guarantee that this is where the island is going to go decisively so. So it's all going to depend on what will come through in the next few moments as the blue is going to be approaching. We've got about 20 seconds until we find out where these teams will have to try and get themselves situated. Ruch, brute force, they're just going to be chilling. No major rush. They know regardless of what the zone does, they will still be able to get themselves situated as it will only be phase number two. Meanwhile, uh, Virtual Gaming Squad and Xenon locking heads right there up towards the northern edge. But the zone does take us all the way down towards the southern edge. And now, Quest R8 beautifully positioned already. Oh, I love to see this. A very, a very stark reminder of uh, some of the previous zones we've had before. And now all of a sudden... Well, the teams are going to have to make a very tough decision in terms of rotations. Falcons, thankfully, with that rotation, will find themselves towards the southern reaches of the coastline. So they are sitting pretty as we take a little bit of a recap look at what to the world of battle at the hands of clear vision. A one wonderfully aggressive push coming through from then rewarding them in terms of those eliminations. And hopefully it will give them the spacing they need for this last wrangle. Let's see if spacing is going to be available now. Saif still looking for a bit of an opportunity. I mean, for Vision, this is a great setup towards the bridge. They're going to have to really defend it as best they can. But I think at this point in time, setting up for bridge camp, I don't really see the benefit in it because, I mean, there's still quite a bit of a vast ground to cover to get yourself situated all the way over towards the western side of the map. So maybe relinquishing the, you know, the... Eastern Bridge contention. I think that would be the, the bigger play to make, but of course the teams are going to do it whichever way they like. In the meanwhile, Nigma just helping the side of GK find their way back as they will get sent off in 16th and unfortunately not a single point to the name. Oof. Very tough, tough standings here. Vision Esports, they've had a very interesting showing so far in terms of the, the matches today specifically. Uh, I mean, They've been one of our, our consistent, uh, you know, players in terms of being able to pick up 20 points just ahead or just tied actually with Nigma Galaxy, which again, we have them to you wouldn't necessarily highlight as those those standout players, those standout teams that they have just been diligently working behind the scenes to ensure they're picking up as many points as they possibly can. So I like the hard work that they've been putting in. And I would love to see them at least just be able to climb a few, few uh, spots on the overall standings. Let's see what will happen here. Get a little bit of that blue zone playment. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't I don't know what Vision is 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 uh trying to do. I understand what NASA is doing because they heard Vision and they're trying to camp it out, trying to see if they can maybe sneak in a few of those cheeky hits. But I I think NASA might be feeling comfortable, uh, resting in the fact that uh, rookie esports. Trading by 19 points behind them. So they're not going to be all too concerned about whether or not Rook is going to be catching them. But still, you want to see NASA playing for position within the zone. Because we know out in the blue, this far removed from the current zone, it is going to become increasingly challenging. And especially now with Brute Force, Xenon, all of the teams are on that far eastern side yet to move on in. But, of course, well, we are going to be, in the meantime, hopping over towards something a little bit more closer to center zone. As we've got Twisted, RTG, fighting for possession of the loot crate, and, ah, it is not relenting over on this bridge. I know. Anytime soon, we won't be seeing any sort of a break, any sort of opportunity or space to breathe for these teams. The zone is going to be constricting, and, I mean, towards the position we're going to, obviously, it's not going to be an easy fight. You can take a look here as this rotation between Xenon, Vision, and NASA, a very, very tight and close uh, sprint to the zone. I mean, just looking at those HP bars, the zone just chunking away 
and making this all the more painful. Nice car, nice car. I uh, I approve. It's almost it's almost as good as the blubber ducky, but for different reasons. There's the blubber ducky. <laughs> so uh, yeah, five points for blubber duck. In the meanwhile, twisted dummy coming through with a beautiful hit. Quickly disposing there of Reva. But are they going to be able to follow through again? I mean, this entire position here is just so, so jam-packed. But Rio holding nice and steadily on the edge, taking quite a bit of chunk of their HP down. And Tristan managing to deal the blows they needed. A quick explosion does bring in quite a bit of a helping hand. Meanwhile, out in the drink is going to be the pool party here between Rook and Nigma Galaxy. Oh, this, this is a bit of an awkward situation. Looks like they... Uh... Unfortunately, I had to jump into the drink. Uh, again, for for Rook, any points are going to be so, so vital. Only 10 points separating them right now from R8. And if we take a look at the current performance that we have been seeing so far from R8 and Rook, they definitely have been showcasing that Rook want to hold on to that slot as much as humanly possible. At least already picking up two eliminations. Oh, but speaking about altercations, Vision and Virtual Gaming. Hello, knock knock. Who's here? Ooh, there we go. So far, it seems like Virtual Gaming Squad have the upper hand with regards to these angles. It's now down to Saif to see if they can hold on. But up comes the push. The blue is about to tickle them as well. And Fada is with the finishing blow. DBS now seal their fate. Vision, only one point to their name. So not the, not the greatest finish coming through for Vision. But, well, they, we can still wait for the last match to see if anything can happen there for them. In the meanwhile, now, it is going to be a Virtual Gaming Squad having the opportunity to get themselves relocated back into the safety of the zone. NASA, though, just slowly trickling through the blue, looking to get themselves situated. Well, here we go. Zone constricting once again. Nigma Galaxy, somehow, some way, still alive as they are slowly swimming to that land. Hopefully, they will be able to find a little bit of safety, but we can see Quest Esports might be greeting them as soon as they reach the coastal line. Zone now favoring towards the land, finally. Thank you. Let's get away from the water. And right in the middle of it, of course, we've got a few potential favorites in terms of locations. I say that, though, but the, the spacing we have and the compounds in terms of the cover, it's not great. It really is not great. So teams will be fighting it out, duking it out in the next few moments just to try and find some safe real estate. And there's not going to be a lot to work with currently within the zone. And it's going to be a pretty, pretty crazy play with so many teams situated both on the east and on the west. But in the meanwhile, the fights will continue from the southern side as Axa finds the push up onto Crypto. One down, a few more to go. Not quite sure whether or not uh, Dami will be able to survive for very much longer. I think at this point, we could see a little bit of a change up going through then from Twisted. They do have four eliminations up, but I think they could be opting for a little bit of that survivability play. Meanwhile, Brute Force also just getting themselves situated, moving into Ooh. safety. And well, unfortunately, it's not going to be the safest position to pull into. Like I said, for Brute Force, they are trying to get themselves back into pole position, trying to be, at least get the crown of the MEA champion. But, oh, NASA once again back with that consistency. Look at this. It is all down to mine. Quest Esports, if they could see who's going down right now, they would be rejoicing. Ooh. They have an opportunity now to build up that gap to get themselves a solidified first place finish in the MEA championship. Now with Brute Force back into the lobby. I mean, that is very, very unfortunate. So Brute Force not going to be able to close the gap just yet. They are still sitting on six points behind Quest. So this is the opportunity for Quest either to try and widen that gap. Or, uh, well, first, in order to do that, they need to get themselves on dry land properly. Right, and get a good position to hold on to. Ooh, opportunity presents itself there. On towards Rauf. A vehicle sunken into the terrain. Good luck paying for parking on that one. But in the meanwhile, Rook also still trying to find a bit of a position. I mean, slowly trickling up onto dry land. But how the heck are they going to get themselves back up onto that plateau? Mm, not easily. We can say that for sure. Right now, Dami is going to be holding on. Oh, Al Haji, no! He's supposed to be fighting for that potential MVP opportunity and they will once again be feeling the brunt of the action. They have just been going down 
match after match, it has been the exact same pattern. First easy, then Al Hajj, then the rest of Quest. What is happening? I mean, uh, chaos, maybe? <laughs> Maybe a little bit of chaos that is going to be coming through. No, it's going to be up to Rami to see if they can hold on. It is going to be Fahi done. Just now trying to see how they will get their way through this. But Rook, again, such a difficult spot that they decided to rotate onto. As they do find the play on Sikante though. So things not looking all too bad. But in the meanwhile, it is going to be Al Hajje. And the Fahi down now, just trying to get the heck out of dodge. And they, again, don't have a lot of options. Not a lot of space to rotate forward. Difficult location here for teams now to make rotations. Oh, my goodness. This is... Uh, my stress levels are on a new record high, DK, because every single one of our teams in the top four are having a problem right now, barring NASA, who are just left to their own devices. Quest Esports... Don't have a chance today. I don't know how this is happening. Again, I don't know who put a target on their back, but Al Hajje, now the only member still standing, holding the hopes and dreams here for Quest Esports to maintain that championship position. This was going to be the map that they had as an advantage to build that gap to get themselves some safety moving into the last Miramar matchup of the day. But R8 Ooh. just here to break the dreams and hopes. Could they do it? Al Hajj going in to find one, but can't get the second. Yeah, but there was no contest there. Al Hajj already didn't have any HP to work with. So, you know, might as well go down with a fight. And that is exactly what we saw come through. So, strong attempt there from the side of Quest. Only two points up. So, that widens the gap onto about, what, eight points? Uh, but now it is down to the rest of the lobby to see what they can bring forward. And uh, R8... I think the only team currently still within this lobby alongside Rook Esports that could definitely look to play quite a bit of an upset. Absolutely. Twist now oof, holding on to the side here of this wonderful, wonderful opportunity to keep Rook from getting any more points. But Sabiske definitely looking to get a bit of a distraction and maybe they want to get the points away from Rook instead. They definitely are gunning to try and make this top four placement for anyone as difficult as humanly possible. But it's actually going to be Falcons to reach in and get that final hit onto Dami. Now, Rook, all of a sudden, you know, they would think, well, this might be the saving grace. But no, they are still in the same problem. It's just a different team that is bringing the pain. Well, let's see. Let's see whether or not that sneaky approach from Nigma could start to pay off. In the meanwhile, it's going to be Fares and the rest of Virtual Gaming Squad looking to play all the way from the edge of that zone. Uh, an interesting quick uh, retreat there, or a quick relocation coming through from Virtual. Not quite sure why they've decided to pull back out of zone. Maybe they have, uh, you know, seen something that they want to try and utilize. But of course, it does seem like they are going to be looking to maybe push in alongside Clear Vision, NASA and Xenon. You know, DK, we spent a lot of time talking about the top four teams, and uh, barring NASA, they've all had a bit of trouble today. So I wonder if, mm -hmm. um, I wonder if we did that thing that casters sometimes do, and if we did, but, but breathe. I'm very sorry. We do that often. We breathe all the time. No, no, it it's, it starts <laughs> either with the J or with the C, and it it makes it very difficult for these teams to do what they do best. And oh. right now, that's the only thing I can shock you as to why it has not been going well for either Quest or Brute Force. And now, of course, for Rook. Oh, coffee and jello. Those are the, those are the things you're talking you know, about. I mean, I've only had coffee today, so yeah. But we'll go with that one. In the meanwhile, it is going to be R8 now looking to get a little bit aggressive here. Pushing forward, but Mostar says no. And, well, down they go as R8 pick up yet another elimination. But they have two players now that got knocked. One got finished as we do say goodbye to Kra. And this could still provide quite a bit of an opportunity for the remainder of R8, but they're going to have to contest against the side of NASA and Xenon. So this might be a, a little bit of a short-lived play coming through from R8 now. This is, again, this is not what you should be doing. R8 with an opportunity just 10 points away right now from Rook, and they might be relegated down to only a single member. And if we take a look at those eliminations, only one elimination splitting up between Rook and R8, which means R8 have so much more work to do if they want to get themselves a slot here. Come on, let us get back into the action here. But meanwhile, NASA might be that distraction. Xenon 
Focusing all of their efforts, but ooh, a good opening there from Starch. Oh, come on, jump shots coming in. Lazy Lion needs to watch this one. Oh, the Molly instead backfires, and that is Lazy Lion getting wrapped up. Gary Boy and Senke have to try and pick up the last few pieces, but again, it's not going to be the easy one. Starch really showing that they are an absolute menace as they find yet another one. Senke has been dropped. Gary Boy about to be met with a bit of utility, but it is a tennis match, and Starch gets taken down. Gary Boy carries the name of Zenon forward into this lobby. He can't even script it. Oh my goodness, what is happening now? Rook down only to push up, as R8 have been relegated down to only one. So this couldn't be closer between the likes of Rook and R8 for that top four finish. But in the meantime, Nick the Galaxy, of course, we know, looking to start stir some chaos, looking to make it as humanly impossible to get into the top four finish, even turning the attention here now to P6, poor P6, just trying to run up into safety. As we can see, Nick the Galaxy really applying that pressure. And, and meanwhile, uh, just to, to, to point it out, every time we don't talk about them, they manage mm. to get themselves into the top six. Slime Machine alive and well within the zone. Like we said before, right, it's the moment that you don't look at them, that's when they start to do things. So, uh, let's maybe look at the rest of the teams, at least for now. Ruch, still caught in a very, very tough spot. Nigma also not having the best setup here, but it's going to be Xenon and Falcons now fighting relentlessly. And it's going to be the Falcons to swoop on in and send them out. Down to the final five teams we go, and again, such a big hurdle yet to be crossed. Let's take a look at this one now. Massive, massive opportunity. Falcons, of course, holding on strong, but it is Sly Machine up with a full squad into this matchup. They have not yet started a fight with anyone at all. Rook <laughs> in the same place that they have been since the beginning of this military base shift. Unfortunately, still not finding a way to get up, and HP bars not looking good. No resources to work with. Biscay just needing that one little pixel to find the final hit into the nail, and then we could be saying goodbye to Rook Esports. Yeah, but this is quite risky for Biscay on the edge. The nade finding the damage. They are both now in a very similar position. Pusher and Biscay both trying to survive. But it doesn't seem like uh, Pusher has much HP, much meds left. And now it's all going to come down to the final play. Pusher, they know there's no way to get out of this hole. But, of course, they aren't going to be looking to go down without a fight. One well-placed nade could, at least for the time being, alleviate quite a bit of pressure. But Pusher not necessarily landing the hits. Now, how will Ruch get themselves out of this? Well, defying gravity as they start to climb on through. Still got to watch out for Kroops. So Enigma not quite done with Ruch just yet. Oh, you cannot script it. This is, the oh, yeah, the end. Unfortunately, of Rook Esports, it, it literally has been the toughest position out of all of this placement here to try and hold on to. And Rook has been stuck in that position for so long. It's almost impossible to get yourself out of that position. And now we turn our attentions here to R8. Ragnarok, the only member still alive. As we know, moving into this final few moments, Rook Esports, they have managed to at least pick up a few, and I do say that, a few points. Six to be exact, R8 up with four eliminations. So they need all the placements they can possibly get, and that oh. starts by surviving the onslaught here from Sly Machine. Wow, what a play, what a play. Down goes R8. They will not be picking up yet another winner, winner, chicken dinner, at least not right now. Biscay also getting spotted, and down they go. So this is now a very, very tough spot to be Enigma out with eight eliminations. It is now between Sly and the Falcons in a very similar position to what we've had before. But let's see how this one is going to unravel. Who will be the one to reign supreme? Is it going to be our silent attackers coming through here? Or could it potentially be the Falcons looking to get yet another play? Now, this could be a phenomenal strategy for Sly. They've done quite a bit of work with regards to getting themselves positioned up into this late game. But Falcons, they've just been ripping into the lobby already, sitting with nine eliminations up. Now looking for the final two to add to their tally, even maybe looking to get four. But here we have it. P6 trying to draw the attention while Puncher sneaks in to play the surprise angle. Beautiful showcase that we've seen from Falcons so far today.
Sly Machine, they have nothing to lose but everything to gain in this final few moments. Four up against the two of Falcons. As long as they ensure that they isolate these eliminations and that they get trades wherever possible, be a very clean sweep. You can see the spacing. A very, very, very brave uh, position you can see here from Puncher King. P6 now slowly but surely edging up, trying to back up their teammates. As at a moment's notice, everything can go downhill and everything will be done. Oh, oh, upset, upset, being played. The silent assassins step on up. They claim they wanna win a chicken dinner, doing an absolutely stand up job. And of course, this is their first winner with a chicken dinner for this entire championship. Absolutely. So congratulations to Sly Machine. We haven't had an opportunity to sing their praises so far, but they finally made it happen here on the last day. Oh, they lost to Wrangle as well. So maybe they were just waiting to, to get their last word in. But hopefully that would have uh, at least awarded them a few jumps on the overall standings. As we know, that does come with an extra bit of ka -ching. And uh, we would hope to see that they have been rewarded uh, accordingly. Well, speaking about uh, being awarded, we are going to be looking at Fares and Puncher doing the most with the eliminations and the damage as well. But again, just such a challenging game that we saw being played here. I mean, Virtual Gaming Squad, uh, they were also trying to, you know, play a few surprise angles. And I mean, Fada is definitely being able to capitalize on that opportunity. But as we know, at the end of the day, that's not exactly the way it went, right? Puncher, Axa, and the rest of the crew locking in quite a bit of damage. But it's surprising to see nobody from Slime Machine on this match report. As mentioned, seeing them into those final few moments, even though they had all of four of their members alive, well, rather, let me say, because we could see that they had all four of their members alive, they, they really had not picked a fight with anyone into those final few moments. Rather, it was the likes of Falcons White, as we saw relegated down to two players who picked up elimination after elimination, sitting on with nine. Also, massive shout out to Negma Galaxy up until that point being very aggressive as well. R8, the story between them and Rook continues. Eight to six points strategically is not going to necessarily give them that opportunity in this map specifically to overthrow Rook Esports, but still one more map poised and ready to potentially be the one. Ooh, uh, this is this is absolutely nerve-wracking. I mean, and we're just watching. We're not even participating in the game here. And I mean, mad respect going to everything that we've already been witness to as these teams just continue to find ways to play upsets from all potential angles, even the angles that we would never have even thought to imagine. But it's not going to stop anytime soon, right? It is literally going to come down to the wire to see who will be the teams allowed to move on forward. I mean, R8, uh, they tried a bit of a thing coming through this match, looking to see if they can maybe replicate some of the efforts. Unfortunately, they were only granted four eliminations. And of course, they got taken out uh, just ahead of making it into the top three. So unfortunate finish on that end. But still, such a valiant effort on either end. But of course, as we continue on with our highlights, can see just how much how much has been happening all over the place looking at the damage markers even coming through i mean falcons nigma very balanced in their approach almost head to head with regards to the amount of eliminations that they were able to secure in this game xenon holding true coming through with 1100 damage alongside the hundred or the thousand rather coming in in from the side of Rook. but as a result of the challenging shift coming through with this match the teams continue to just try and play anything they can. Specifically looking at where the zone went. I mean, the teams were presented with an opportunity to just try and hit as many hits as they possibly could. But of course, as we know, we have one more match to go. The final decisive play is yet to be made. So be sure to stay tuned and we'll be right back with you after the break.
Hello guys and welcome back. We're getting ready for our very last match in the MEA Championship for Fall 2023. So much has happened, but of course, well, we're not done just yet, right? We need to take a look at a few comparisons in preparation for our final match of the day. Absolutely. Moving into this last match, the question on everyone's mind is who's going to be the MEA Fall Championship. Uh, champion and of course that is going to be up between brute force or quest esports based on what we've just seen in that last matchup both teams have had a fairly rough start to today a, a, rep, uh, a rough continuance of today as they are still only split apart by a, a mere few points and it could be anyone's game moving into Murmur. depending on which team really has a dominating performance we can pretty much just give it up to them because then we know Moving on into the rest of our top four, of course, NASA, Rook, they equally have had a very challenging day. NASA, I would say, has pretty much solidified themselves into the top four slot. The only question mark we still have is, of course, what is going to happen to Rook Esports. Right now, of course, they have the likes of R8 and Nick the Galaxy in a position to take that slot away from them. We know, of course, obviously, Nick the Galaxy have already qualified, so for them, it's not about the slot, it's about a little bit more fun. But it is going to be a very tough challenge as well as another question. One more map, one more opportunity to get an idea of who our MVP for the day and for the tournament, obviously, is going to be. Oh, I mean, I think it's between two, right? Mm. I think the, the MVP is going to go to two potential players. Um, it's either going to be one of these two, right? Either <laughs> Alhaje or Alo, because so they've been doing so, so much work. Absolutely. And in terms of damage, these are the two players that have been dealing the most damage with Alhaje looking at around 10.6 thousand damage and Edo looking at about 9.4 thousand damage. So whether or not uh, Edo can steal it at the last possible moment, I'm not too sure. In terms of eliminations, though, we can see just based on the averages as well, Alhaje has nearly doubled exactly what Edo has been able to pick up. Where We're looking at Alhaje currently sitting up with 58 eliminations so it is an incredibly tough opponent to try and face off but for some reason as we've seen uh alhaje just has a target on their back every single map so far we haven't seen alhaje had an, an, an even opportunity to try and get an elimination barring that last wrangle where they were looking at the barrel of a 1v3 situation I mean, it's just the way it is, right? And I, it's going to be a pretty tough call to make as to which one of those two are going to be the ones to get it. Because as you said, al has a little bit of a target on their head, but we've not yet seen it, an, enough of a consistent play come through from Edo today, right? Yes, they've been working hard, but today has been proving to be quite a challenging day. No, it has. It has been an incredibly challenging day for both of those teams. And as we know, only one Miramar standing in the way of us and having all the answers. Moving into this last matchup, all eyes on Quest Esports, Brute Force, NASA, and Rook into this Miramar matchup. Of course, Quest and Rook, as we know, statistically have had a much better experience over towards Miramar. Mm. So we would, you know, rather gather an idea that they should be the teams having the field day. But today has just been statistically the most upside down day of all. Yeah, I mean, like, we, we don't really know what to make of an upside down day because, as we've discussed many, many times already here, it's, we've got all these statistics and the teams still decide to play however it is they wish to go. But I think the important part to look at at this point is going to be a, a bit of an opportunity between R8 looking to catch up. They, they are the only team that can now remove Rook Esports from their position in that top four. Right, that is that is where it is. I mean, Nigma Galaxy can also do it, but what's the point? Because if they if they remove Rook Esports from it and they don't move them down far enough, they are still going to get a slot. So you know, there's there's always that extra catch, that extra bit to think of. So I think R8, we could potentially see them try and you know mount a bit of a mount a bit of a play against the side there of Rook because there's only eight points currently separating these two teams. Very, very difficult opportunity and a bit of a return of a zone favorite for you and I, though we never normally get what we want from the zone. It's it's nice to at least see that there's always an opportunity. Oasis all the way to the top there. Maybe one day, DK. Maybe one day. Maybe today. 
but uh, I'm not going to get my hopes up because the zone does not like us. But at least we'll be heading towards water treatment, Hacienda del Patron, even a little bit of love over towards Cruz del Far and Dora Ahumada. Uh, moving on from that western side, El Pazo, definitely going to be seeing some action here from the likes of Brute Force as before they want to move on into that zone, we have a few potential congestive points as we know. Also, that west and southern side of the zone is going to be very busy. Yeah, but an interesting drop actually coming through there from the side of Vision. Pulling in alongside Ruch Esports. Uh, we've got Quest there as well. This is going to be a, a very risky and uh, slightly a very bumpy play that we are about to experience here. But it seems like Ruch are not going to be feeling all too phased. Instead, they are just dropping down, grabbing vehicles, and then we'll see them scoot all the way back of in towards the uh, Torre Ahumada and the surrounding area. And of course, Quest, right? They are going to be looking to get themselves all the way back up in towards Al Azhar. So Vision, not really having to stress all too much just yet. I think if they were looking at the map that we can see, it might have been a completely different situation, right? They might have gone like, oh my goodness, what is about to happen? We've got two teams hard dropping right on top of us, but it is Miramar. Objects appear much closer than they actually are. <laughs> Nice, nice, a little bit of a warning. I like it. Plus ten points. We've had, uh, we haven't had enough uh, DK puns for the day, so at least you're still dropping some dad jokes along the way. Yeah, I'm I, sure I mean, you are gonna be very happy. I gotta starve. I gotta, you know, like I gotta starve you at some point. I can't just continuously keep getting, giving it because you're not gonna appreciate them as much, right? So I gotta play quite sparingly <laughs> with it. You know, create the bond. <laughs> create the bond. That's the way it works. <laughs> Ah, uh, moving into this last matchup of the day. Oh, there, there's a lot of storylines to follow into the situation. I mean, just looking at the the highlight points, of course, Rook moving over towards Torre Ahumada, a team we know having to defend that fourth place finish, having to defend the last PMGC slot up for grabs, and having to do so at the very least with, I would say, 10 points to make sure that they are going to be safe into this next phase. Otherwise, the current current competitors, that being, of course, R8, Nigma Galaxy, they have that opportunity to jump in. They only need around eight to nine points, and bam, it could be the end of Rook Esports. So an opportunity now to hopefully get themselves a bit of safety, and it, it, it's unfortunate that it has to come down to the last map. It's great for us, though, because mm. it keeps us interested <laughs> into the last very moment, as we'll be guessing who's going to be taking this win. Yeah, I, that, I think that also adds to the tension that these players on teams are experiencing. But, I mean, looking at the drops that we've had come through here, definitely a, a, a very uh, varying approach. I mean, R8, you can see them getting quite mobilized, looking for a little bit of something, something along the way. Ruch, we did see them drop alongside Vision, but then just, you know, hopping in those vehicles, boom, all the way back in towards Tore Ahumada. And I think that is where Ruch is... Okay, maybe gonna be staying for a little while, just trying to you know assess the zone because that is essentially the strategy that we've been seeing come through from Ruch on a very consistent basis, right? They're not one of those teams that like to rotate up into the zone very early on. They like to you know essentially try and ride the blue as it closes in, see if they can maybe swoop in at exactly the right moment, and in doing so, it awards them a little bit of a different approach, a little bit, a little bit of a different play. Uh, Falcons playing a very similar game, but they just take the approach coming through from the southern side as opposed to the north for Ruch. Mm. Very varying approaches here moving into the last Miramar of the day. And hopefully they, they have a little bit of something extra stocked in the tank that they can bring out and surprise the rest of the competitors because whatever they, they could bring out here is definitely going to be needed. It is so close and contentious that even between Brute Force and, of course, Quest Esports, you know, we thought moving into today, especially after the first match, it was going to be a very close map after map finish. But they have just been so, so unlucky, uh, dominated, whatever you want to call it. And it has not been easy for both of those teams who are currently sitting in first and second position. And at least for the previous days, they have worked hard enough to give themselves that uh, small safety net to secure themselves into the top two, but we still need an answer as to who's going to be our champion, and we would like them to do so in a dominating fashion, at least on the last map. Well, it's going to be a tough play, because again, nothing is secured, and 
you know, all we can do is hope at this point in time that, that things go somewhat according to plan. Something that's definitely not going according to plan, at least for Ruch, is this intentional push going through from Vision. I mean, this is as intentional as you can get it, but let's see whether or not Ruch are going to be falling for this bait as Rami now steps up to defend, dealing two absolutely devastating blows into the side of Vision. It has now gone from a 1v4 into a 1v9, right? That's it. Eugene Ooh. and Rami just took down the entirety of Vision. Well, like I said, this is what Rook needed. Any points that they get here, as long as it's more than R8 and Enigma Galaxy, they will be safe. They will have an opportunity and a slot in PMGC. So a fantastic start there to pick up those four early eliminations. Vision, unfortunately, will, that will be the last we have seen from them in the MEA Championship. So we'll have to wait till the overall rankings to see where they end on up. Meanwhile... Focus there over towards a brute force as well, still out in the zone alongside Quest, uh, who is also taking a much more easy approach within the zone, nice and relaxed. And Al Hajj and Easy are still alive, so that is progress. Yeah, as you can see, the teams that know what's at stake with regards to their positions in the rankings, right? The, the defenders, they are taking a slightly different approach. I mean, R8. This might look like a, an aggressive rotation coming through from them, but as we've seen a lot of times, the teams don't necessarily commit to center zone, especially not in this region. But now, ooh, R8 might have to rethink their positioning because uh, now that they are smacked up center zone yet again, I can definitely see a few teams liking to prioritize those hills that they find themselves on and potentially even up in towards water treatment. So... Either they're going to have to mount an absolute insane defensive positioning, or they're going to have to uh, get quite aggressive. Absolutely. We'll wait and see. Hopefully some aggression will be on the on the cards here, especially for the likes of R8. It would be such a comeback story to ensure that in a single day of play... I mean, again, if we, if we go back... At the beginning of the day, we, we had our top four. We were going through all the stats. We were like, okay, look, we, we have a great idea how exactly these players should be should be uh, holding on to their slots today. But lo and behold, R8, who at that time was sitting in 10th position, has climbed and climbed and climbed to get themselves into a potential 4th to 5th place finish, depending on how this match goes. Mm. Well, let's see whether or not they'll be able to... Find the result they need, as we've got quite a bit still to work through. I mean, it's still early days in this phase, but as we know, anything Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and everything Ooh. can change at the drop of the hat. It is now going to be virtual, finding the opportunity onto the side of NASA. I mean, essentially, NASA, one of those teams, you know, coming uh, into a very similar position like this, but yesterday found themselves within the top four absolutely and they they were fourth so the work that they've done today to at least secure themselves the top three finish and they're sitting pretty comfortably in that top three finish at one point we were obviously talking about them potentially taking second place unfortunately now though relegated down to only one member it will be a bit tough to do that but spec who knows maybe uh as a surprising rabbit that they can pull out of a hat or a hat out of a rabbit as DK wants to see one day for some reason. But they'll have to do so up against Virtual Gaming who are on hot on their heels now looking for this final con. Woo! Ooh, nice nade. Nice nade. But now Spec ooh, has to try and fend it off. And right. so far they do succeed. Fares is down. Now it's oh, up to Amjeet. Oh. And there we have it. Mosa coming through with a beautiful S12K hit. Down they go. And NASA. Well, doing everything they can. So, I mean, for Ruch, there's a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel because they have an opportunity here, right? They are, or they were, trading by 20 points coming into this match. They've already made up four, so they only now need at least uh, 16 more points, potentially 17, just for, just for, you know, for giggles. Why not? And that could actually place them just above NASA if they do succeed in accomplishing that. The other option is, of course, for Ruch, as you've said, just to ensure that they accrue enough points to stay ahead of R8 and Enigma. Ooh, okay. I mean, it, it, 
It's possible. It it definitely is possible. We've seen Rook Esports put down some some very very nasty uh, games before, and especially towards the end of the day, like you said, it, it seems like GK Rook uh, and of course uh, Twisted Minds just at the end and the last match they get this different kind of energy. Maybe they can bring this one up. So we'll see. Twenty points, or well, at least uh, less than twenty points to to get to the third place finish. That would be a story, especially since they've been so in danger now, thanks to the likes of R8 and Enigma Galaxy, but we'll wait and see. NASA are going to be kicking themselves for going out early on and leaving this up to chance, but hopefully all the work that they've done up until this point would be enough. Meanwhile, Clear Vision and Xenon, a little bit of a stalemate yet towards that western side. Ooh, but a great opening onto Vito. This could be the send for Xenon now coming on through. Well, let's see, let's see, let's see. Zenon, 29 points away. Are they going to be able to catch up? It is all going to rely on this Ooh. engagement. As you can see, Focus trying to focus in that shoddy and M4 spray down. But up comes Marshall with a quick spray for jump shot. And that is it. Clear vision getting dropped. And it is done. Off they go. One Elam. But Zenon now sitting with four eliminations up. Now they need 25 more points. Oh, 25 more points to bring in home virtual gaming oh nice little bit of a slide on by do you love what we're seeing here from uh, these teams so far they definitely have been bringing up a whole different kind of energy even for slime machine i mean that winner winner chicken dinner was right out of left field in the previous matchup but we were all there for it i mean we love to see these surprising moments in mea champs there's always at least one team that we mm. don't talk about at least and this mm. time there's two. At least one team in the last day that just picks up a winner winner chicken dinner and we're like, okay, but why couldn't you do this from day number one? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. It is just one of those things. And I mean, some teams play with a completely different strategy. As we know, this is a marathon. This is not a race. Ooh. And so far, you know, things have been, have been going in different directions with varying levels of uh, success. But... This is the opportunity, the chance for the teams now to try and get all the possible success that they can master, right? For Twisted, the opportunity is there to, you know, play the best possible PUBG that they can. See how far they can finish within this event itself. Because as we know, coming into this match, they were, start, they were sat on uh, 85 total points. And definitely want to see them get pretty close to potentially maybe even breaking a century. Potential right around the corner. MG nade in hand. Mohammed in the similar situation. Ooh. He's gonna have to drop that one just for the moment here. The world of battle still up with four. But this split, it's gonna be up to Mohammed to stale mate away to get their teammates in a position where they can rotate in. Arthur thankfully making it now. This is an even footed match. It's a 2v2. Mohammed down to a sliver of HP as Arthur tries to flank on around. Oh, and there we go. They do get the hit in. Amjid follows through. Now, where is this one going to go next? Because, I mean, surely Amjid is going to get this res up into Mosta. But will we then see Virtual Gaming Squad mount a full-on aggressive show trying to get the jump in on the World of Battle? At least for now, it seems like that is going to be suppressed. As we do have Hazem on Overwatch looking to just apply a little bit of the pressure while the rest of the team gets their footing. Up comes the nades. This could be the bounce to end it here for Mosta. Doesn't really reach quite just yet, but Arthur... Gonna instead push on Ooh. forward. There we go. The head is in. The first one, the second shot is about Ooh. to land. And I'm G about to get ended. But will it happen? Yes, it does. The world of battle. Take down the side of Virtual Gaming Squad. Man, if ever you were going to talk about an individual or at least a duo of individuals that could have clutched it out there for virtual gaming, it definitely would have been those two right there. We've seen them do something crazy before, including Mosta with that 1v3 clutch on Miramar specifically, but unfortunately, not this time around as we say goodbye to virtual gaming. For the last time, we turn our attention here towards this chaos on the southern portion. Falcons, the world of battle, an RTG right alongside R8. Come on, guys. This is a very, very rough one, one to one to one to one battle here. In all this, in all the the time that we've seen these Miramar matches, we haven't yet seen something this congested. Unlike that one match where we saw Xenon unfortunately getting taken out by Rook. Well, it could be, it could be. <laughs> Let's see now whether or not R8 have what it, they need to bring to the battlefield here to potentially play that upset. As we know, they need only 8 points to catch up to Rook Esports. 
Based on the gun facing that we have here, R8. We still have uh, quite a long way to go. We've not yet necessarily seen a whole lot of eliminations come their way. Falcons, I mean, they're 20 points away from catching up, but they don't need to catch up. As we know, they already have that invite straight into the PMGC itself. But it's all going to rely on what the rest of the lobby will bring on through. Brute Force now starting to make their way up towards the north. They've got Rook potentially in their sights. It's going to be Twisted and Negma now fighting for possession of the eastern side. But of course, it is going to be Sly and Quest also now just pushing in. You can see Biscay waiting very patiently on the edge. But, I mean, Sly might spot them. Ooh, and Sly already on that momentum there from the previous matchup. They would not mind getting a bit of a repeat, but Twisted Minds in a similar fashion. We've seen what they can do on these Miramar matches before. They have literally stolen winner winner chicken dinners without even barely lifting a finger in terms of eliminations. But here it is, the final challenge. Negma Galaxy holding strong. Oh, beautiful opening nade there from Coops onto Danny. Could be the, the crack in the defense right now for Twisted Ooh. Minds. Well, Biske coming through with a follow-through as well. This is go time now for Nygma. As you can see them starting to rush on forward Coops. Or Crypto, rather. They're going to be trying to suppress any advances. But so far, it is not necessarily going the way that they would have wanted. A quick cheeky jump shot coming in from Coops. Down goes Lord. Oh, absolute carnage. Coops could still try and save the day. But it's going to be up to Evo Station to get the contest. And Coops drops the first. And that is it. Twisted Minds go out in 11s with only three eliminations to their name. Nigma Galaxy down to only one remaining hopeful. And it's going to be Sly Machine now looking to capitalize on a very vulnerable Coops. Got to give it up to Twisted Minds there for holding on strong in such a difficult position. And now Coops to finally showcase what they can do. But they're going to be doing so on fire and not quite in the fashion they were looking for. They want to hold on to this one. It is up against a full team. And there is a reach in from GK Esports. Ragnar will say thank you very much for that one. Into the tally. So unfortunately, Enigma Galaxy, no opportunity for them to further bolster their opportunities here on the overall standings. But... They have applied pressure to R8, as we know. Moving into this matchup, they were only one, about one point away, I believe it is, from R8's current position. Now picking up four eliminations, it's up to R8 to keep up this momentum. Not only if they want to keep their fifth place finished, but also if they want to try and take a position away from Rook. Yeah, because, I mean, R8, they just need those eight points. That is all they need, but they are yet to find the first few eliminations to help get the ball rolling. In the meanwhile... The rest of the lobby are going to be looking to double down. Rook, they are very reluctant from pushing into the zones. You can see them now just hovering around towards those northern edges. Meanwhile, it is going to be brute force ducking down, digging deep as they start to go toe-to-toe -to -toe here with the Falcons. As you can see, Axa quickly managing to get themselves properly and decently patched up. But brute force, they still have all four players in this match. Let's see where this play is going to be going next. Now, Falcons Ooh. holding steady, looking to apply all the pressure, but Ado locks it in, gets yet another elimination. We have to keep in mind, of course, also the fight for the champion. It's going to be Brute Force now trying to chase along where Quest have left themselves currently. A few points uh, separating them in their current position. We also saw R8 starting to pick up points. As we said, they need to now not only take into account the, the eliminations that Rook have already picked up, but also the eliminations that Nygma have picked up. So at least 13 points Oof. in either elims or placements is going to be necessary. As we say, unfortunately, goodbye to Falcons, who have been so, so, so good. They picked up that pacing today, but it unfortunately was not enough. As R8 now, they have tasted one. They've tasted a little bit of success. Can they find anything else? I mean, it's now solely down to R8 and Rook Esports to decide who will be allowed up into the top four. I mean, the two other contenders, right? Nigma and Falcons. Both have already been dealt with. Both have already been sent away. The same can be said there for Virtual Gaming Squad. So this now opens up the opportunity for R8 to just do what is required. They're going to have to try, as you said, get themselves those extra few additional points, taking into account uh, the amount of eliminations that we've already seen come through then from Ruch. So it puts them on, uh, well, yeah, about 12, 13 points that they need. So they definitely need to start to find a few of those eliminations. And this is where things could get quite risky because we see GK up on the ridge line. Yes, it is a solo, but from that position, 
they could still definitely cause quite a bit of a problem down here in towards water treatment. Brute Force into this one. Eight points could solidify them the championship as long as Quest Esports is not allowed to continue getting anything further. A very challenging last few positions that we could see here. Rookie Esports coming through from that northern side as Quest has just crossed across uh, the, the threshold here of water treatment from that southwestern, southeastern side rather, alongside Slime Machine. Very interesting few positions as Rook is trying to find some safety. Potentials around the corner. Xenon also reaching in now, as we've seen, with only two members apiece. Rook have a very good line of sight onto Xenon's current position, but the, unfortunately the terrain just allows enough cover for Xenon to potentially stalemate it out, to just hide enough until that next zone shift really forces them into a corner. That could be their win condition. That could keep them safe from Rook's clutches, but we'll wait and see how that zone is going to shift. We also have Gaith. <laughs> right in the center <laughs> just as a solo hoping no one notices them yeah and i mean it's a tough play because i mean looking at the points right xenon they needed 24 or 29 points rather to catch up to the tally that Ruch currently hold but they are sat with only four eliminations and only two players up so that is going to be a pretty pretty tall order i'm not quite convinced as to the capability of Xenon pulling a move like this out of the hat, especially not with Brute Force encroaching on their position and Rook Esports position up on the elevation, right? The high ground. That, mm. This is going to be a very sticky spot for Xenon to try and contest. That's what I said. Uh, it, we, we just don't see how... How much longer they can actually hold on to this, especially now considering Brute Force is moving into their territory. Rook has a perfect line of sight. Again, there's a few... few points in this terrain that could provide enough cover for them to hide out but that's only going to be dependent on how the zones can move on forward at some point or other they will be exposed with that rotation and that is exactly when rook will be striking either towards xenon either towards brute force or potentially even to r8 who have now just moved in and again the r8 to rook battle is continuously going to keep building they might even take each other out but right now we see r8 focusing their Ooh. attention here towards rtg finding at least one knock Looking for a bit more as Gaith in the center is feeling a little bit nervous. Yeah, I think the best approach here for R8 would be to try and uh, just clear up the edge, right? Don't get distracted by that center zone chaos. Instead, try and play the edge, try and move around, right? Maybe in the direction of, like they've been doing now, uh, onto the side of RTG. Maybe looking mm. to make a bit of a play on towards Quest. Ooh. But again, Ooh. utilizing the terrain because... If the terrain continues to maintain this difficult angle, it's not going to look all too hopeful. In the meanwhile, we do also see the play there from RTG getting packed up and shipped out. Ruch now starting to descend the hill. And, I mean, Xenon feeling all the heat being applied to them. Got to drop a little bit of respect on the, the name of Gate, the helping hand in ensuring that RTG has been sent back into the lobby, even as a solo right in the middle of the chaos. But here it is, uh, that zone continuing to praise Gate as they are blessed with another shift. And Rook Esports turn their attention here towards these stragglers. They still have some elevation to work with. Slime Machine applying some pressure. But as we were alluding to, Xenon unfortunately being exposed with that zone shift and a bit of a helping Ooh. hand with Brute Force. Ooh, Slime Machine! Maybe helping R8 out here as they turn their attention, apply that pressure over towards Rook. Oh, come on. This is absolute nail-biting stuff. I mean, R8, they don't need 8 eliminations, right? They don't need 14 eliminations. They, all they need to do is get that total amount of points. However they get it, it doesn't matter. But they are now within placement point territory. So, ooh, ooh the further ooh. they make it, the more the points will be. And it's now going to be Eugene. Looking to lay into the side here of Slime Machine as DZ tries to defend. They get the first successful hit, but down they will go as well. Now Slime Machine attacker to land the finishing hit into the side of Rook Esports. And Rook finish <laughs> their run with seven down goes as well. And this is now absolute mayhem erupting all over the place.
your heart wants to break for Rook Esports. I mean, and even Eugene, towards those final moments, trying everything in their arsenal to ensure that Rook Esports is still alive into these final moments. But unfortunately, it doesn't quite go the way. Slime Machine have picked up some confidence here. And unfortunately for them, it is down to Al Hadje who's coming through for the MVP. Ooh. And they're going to do so on the graves of Sly Machine. Now, R8 Quest Esports, the two teams fighting for positions in the top slots. And R8, they have their work cut out for them. Before Rook Esports went down, they obviously picked up those seven eliminations. It might have been enough, but let's see. Well, it is going to be a pretty, pretty tough play. As we know, Rook, they were able to add a few additional points to their tally as well. So that just increases the pressure now available here for the side of R8. They're going to have to play a damn near perfect match if they want to get the necessary points. And of course, we aren't going to know until we get right into those standings to see exactly where these teams find themselves. Now, Quest going to be a, quite a bit of a trouble here onto the side of Brute Force. Brute Force again, right? As, they, as we know, Brute Force, they need eight points to catch up to Quest. That was coming into this match. Quest, in the meanwhile, they've added a few additional points. So we are looking at the fight for first and second, as well as a play now coming through for R8 to ensure that they could maybe sneak their way forward up into that top four. It is absolutely insane. So many fights happening and so much contention available right here on this battlefield right now. It's ridiculous consider R8 if they want to have a chance of getting themselves a PMGC slot they're going to have to take out the first and second best teams in the MEA championship and I say both because they need as many points as they can only up with our three eliminations we know that unfortunately for them Rook went down with nine points already in their tally and look at this a push comes through Kante already holding on to the angle oh big oops I think that is a big, big oops now for, here for the side of R8. Yeah, they've put themselves, instead of opposing the two teams, they find themselves right smack dab in the middle of them. And that is going to be the end for R8. Brute Force, Quest now left to the side. Who will be sitting at the top of the leaderboard? And of course, these elimination tallies continue to climb. Quest coming all the way up onto eight now. The shots continue to fly on through. Brute Force feels the brunt of the pressure. And Woo! Quest will reign supreme as they step up. They finish strong and they get themselves yet another winner, winner, chicken dinner, number four to be precise. We said that moving into this matchup, depending on who was going to be doing better in this last Miramar of the day, who was going to have a better performance between Quest Esports and Brute Force, who are going to solidify themselves as the champions of the MEA full split. But we'll leave it up to the overall rankings to decide who that was exactly, because thankfully we don't have to do any math in this situation. But R8, my heart is going to be breaking for them. I don't think it was quite enough to overtake the likes of Rook Esports as we can see they're finishing off yeah with just one point less than rook esports and as we knew they went into this match with a deficit they needed to get at least another eight on top of what they garnered in order to take that slot yeah i i think i think there could be a few conclusions that will already be drawn right here of course let's hop straight into the overall rankings why worry about the math if we can instead just look right at what it is supposed to be the world of battle they are going to be ending their run there with 81 points. Very good uh, uh, push coming through from them. Unfortunate for Xenon though. I mean, their first MEA for 2023. And unfortunately, it is going to be only going to be awarding them a ninth place finish. But such a strong push. Uh, you got to give this respect up to them. And of course, as we can see, the top four. Well, it starts Ooh. with Ruch Esports and just nine points ahead. Incredible showing here from R8 Esports. We have to give it up to them. At the start of the day, they were in 10th place on the overall standings. Obviously, now Sly Machine taking that spot. And there it is. Quest Esports are your MEA champions for the fall 2023 split. An absolutely dominating performance with those 80 placement points and an average damage that was just uh, screaming that you need to be running away from this team moving into the next few phases. I mean, Quest, they were on a mission, right? They they came in with one objective and one objective only to win the season of the MEA Championship and a job well freaking done. Absolutely amazing play. I mean, a very strong representation, right? They showed their dominance with regards to Murmur. They showed their dominance with regards to Sanok. 
Heck, they even came close to dominating Erangel as well. So, Quest, I think they were the big beast in this season of MEA Championship. Absolutely. But of course, we have one more question we need to answer. At the beginning of the day, we were talking about Edo versus El Haje. Who was going to be taking that MVP slot for the tournament? Who was going to be the final player standing on top of everyone else? And now we finally get to see who the tournament MVP is. And it's, I can tell you now, it was going to have been very, very close. But it has to go up to El Haje for their dominating performance. I mean... Uh Big congratulations. I mean, words, words can't express how, how amazing and impressive this is coming through from Alhaj. Absolute goat, right? I mean, 11,000 11, damage being secured, just 300 shy of hitting 12,000 and doing so with 64 eliminations. I mean, that is absolutely tremendous, right? If you, if, if you want to put that into perspective, like a big majority, nearly half of the eliminations that quest secured as a team in these past 24 games was contributed by Al Haji. Nearly half of the team's eliminations came through from just that individual that we saw there. It's insane. Stop. <laughs> Stop. It's 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 an insane amount. And like you said, moving into that matchup, they had 10,600 damage. So picking up another easy thousand damage, picking up another six eliminations. Mm -hmm. It just seems like nothing to a lot, Jay. So absolutely, congratulations. And that extra $2,000 will obviously be going in their pockets. A very well-deserved title. Yeah, there's no arguing with that as well. And of course, let's take a look at a bit of a, a stat breakdown, right? I mean, R8, they've been having an absolutely phenomenal day. We did see them coming through with a back-to-back -back winner, winner, chicken dinner. They reserved a lot of this insane performance for the very last day. I mean, what a... What a beautiful story it would have been had they been able to just clutch it out all the way through, right? Get themselves mm. three winner winner chicken dinners. I mean, that would have been such an insane story coming in on their end. Absolutely. I mean, they, they definitely stepped on up where we asked them to. And uh, even though they did fall short of that uh, top four place of that PMGC slot, I feel like they did prove how an incredible team they really are. I mean, picking up 68 po 66 points in a single day on the last day of a championship, that that is no small feat. And that takes a lot of confidence. That takes a lot of prep as well to be able to go up against these uh, sort of level of players and still still say that you have a chance and you're going to be dominating in a single day i mean that's just that's just it's crazy it's crazy but of course speaking about crazy we did have a few other crazy teams right falcons white uh, for instance a very very strong team that we've been seeing play their way through especially within the respective Oof. bnpls i mean for this this season so far this championship i mean not necessarily the 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 most aggressive push that they've made because they already qualified for PMGC, right? They were just here, mm. uh, you know, enjoying everything that uh, the championship could bring their way. But they still finished on a very strong performance. I mean, 54 points for this very last day. You know, between Falcons White and I would say Enigma Galaxy as well, we started off the day questioning where this performance from them has been. And just in the last day, in the last two days as well, if you're looking at the case of Enigma Galaxy, they definitely have stepped up in a phenomenal fashion. Both of these teams have brought through the performance that we had been expecting, the performance that uh, has garnered them the positions they currently hold. The PMG slot is uh, no small feat. And again, it deserves to be celebrated, which is why we also want to take a look at how Enigma have been breaking things down because they have been stepping up and they have had some troubles of their own, but they have ensured to take it into their strides. So moving into the next phase, hopefully this is just the start of what they could be showcasing. Mm. Well, let's, let's hope that that is exactly what it is going to be. And of course, you were mentioning those Nygma Galaxy stats. So let's take a bit of a look and see exactly what they've been able to bring to the battlefield. Of course, the Arabian Kings as they were crowned, right? Uh, but here we have it, a very, very exceptional performance from their end as well. Uh, the day, a good day. 37 total points, um, 30 eliminations, just three shy of what R8 was able to accrue for the day so a very exceptional performance but one thing that i did notice now also taking a bit of a look at the leaderboards right so we got our top four and then we've got nigma and falcons sat in six and seven positions respectively right r8 i mean they tried so so hard 
right? They're the only team within the top seven that is not going to be going to the PMGC based on, you know, qualification slots and things. I mean, it's unfortunate, but my heart goes out to them. They performed exceptionally, exceptionally well. I mean, had we seen R8 perform like this from yesterday, moving into today, I mean, I think it would have been a completely different story, but still just taking into consideration the capability of pulling off a move like that on the last day. I mean, mad respect. It's like, there's there's nothing I can falter on that. So yeah, big congratulations. Going out to the very strong efforts of R8 as well. Absolutely. So, I mean, we've broken down these stories time in and time out, but it's finally the end of it. And we would love to hear what your thoughts have been on this incredible journey that we have been with you. It's It has been such a, a tough roller coaster of emotions for these teams. As we said, our hearts go to the teams who couldn't make it into the PMGC. But hopefully when they come back into the next tournament, they will showcase uh, a lot more in, in terms of what they can be capable of. And so please let us know with the hashtag PMPLMEA champ, your last final thoughts, what you've witnessed, what were your favorite moments, what were your favorite teams, and uh, hopefully who you think will be taking the title in PMGC. Oof. Yeah, I mean, there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot, a lot to look forward to. Of course, that is gonna be the next stop for our qualified teams. They are gonna be heading over into PMGC, and PMGC is gonna be starting on on November second. So not a lot of time left until we will be able to see exactly what these teams are gonna be capable of and how they're gonna be just grinding their way through the group stages to get themselves even closer to those PMG finals. We know a few of the teams that we have in the lobby yeah, have had that opportunity, but I'm curious to see whether or not we could potentially maybe have even more more teams now being presented with the chance. It, of course, is going to require quite a bit of hard work and determination, but we know that the teams will try their best to accomplish that goal. Now, is any final words that we want to say? Uh, I mean, it's the, the same story that I've been talking about. I am in, in incredibly impressed in the, with these teams. The fact that we have had such a competitive final day, the, the fact that we've had a, such a competitive uh, last couple of days in this MPA, MEA championship really starts to showcase how the comparison between the Middle East and Africa regions is starting to build. We had six teams from Africa coming through. We had the 10 coming through, of course, from uh, the PNPL Arabia. And they have showcased uh, an incredible amount of talent. All of the teams deserve to be proud of this the teams deserve to be proud of their performances yes for some they wished they would have started with this dominating performance earlier but it's a story to learn and it's a skill that they will definitely take with them into the next championship so please be proud be kind to yourself and a round of you are incredible and uh, the incredible teams that have brought through this performance yeah, we definitely got to give a big applause going out to all our players, absolute legends, and we wish them all the best uh, representing the region moving forward into the global championships. But of course, I think we can also you take this opportunity to extend a big thank you to all our viewers that have tuned in, uh, not only in these, just these past four days, but also the entire season that we've been having, all the way back where we started with the spring split. Right, just grinding through PUBG action, PUBG action upon PUBG action, week in, week out, BMPL all over the place. Well, a very, very satisfying result that we've got from our teams here. And of course, I'm pretty sure the viewers are going to be quite happy about that as well. But of course, on that one, a big thank you goes out to our production team. Thank you so much for that. And of course, I'm pretty sure we can thank uh, Monster as well. I think it's probably one of those opportunities. Uh, we got to give a big shout out going out to Monster Energy, our official energy drink partner for the PUBG Mobile Pro Leagues and the Championship. So thank you for everything that you helped bring to these events. And of course, on that one, well, as we know, next up, PMGC. So uh, best of luck to all our teams and we look forward to those performances. So until the next one then, it is going to be the end for us right here. So stay fresh, stay frosty, and we'll see you all later.